looks like it's panel time. Here we go. It's that they can't get their ethno state and Israel has theirs. So it's like, God damn it. Dude, I know like that was my thing. I kept noticing like all those arguments over and over and over again. They're like, why can't we just do what Israel does? And then like lefties were like, uh, you know, like Israel is an ethno oh, state and they have strong borders and they're, and kick, they're assholes and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh man, these, these arguments like, they like intersect. Oh, it was, it was a really interesting about. discovery. Yeah. I feel like oh, I man. stumbled in. Oh, CTV got those glasses on. You think he's drinking again? God. I just have like, I have like back and neck problems, but I wish I could just get blitzed out of my mind and wear sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is going to be so good. All right. Uh, we have a few people. Uh, oh my God. On. This is going to um, be good. I can already tell. Some will be here a little later. Some will be here. Um, and it's already getting minutes. spicy. Um, so I guess we're just, uh, Oh my on. God. Wild. Yeah. Chat. Anything interesting happening here? Oof. Uh, Oof. 5240. Oh, okay. So, uh, I'm being told that, um, uh, um, Amy Coney Barrett has just been, uh, Confirmed. Yes, I am trans. Oh, yes, then thanks it, for yeah. asking. She her pronouns, um, please. Yes. Yeah, yeah um, this is a debate show today. Yep. We're just maybe getting not. into it. Hold on. Be more. What are you trying to tell me? Why is this vote keep changing? Oh, I see what you're saying. <laughs> but it doesn't matter if it's only 52, then she's in. Yeah, it doesn't matter. If she got 52 votes, she's in. Yeah. Yeah, uh, she's good. Oh. Yeah, I guess she's in. Damn. But well, this that was sucks. Not unexpected. We all we all saw this coming. Yeah, it's a debate show. You'll get to see some spicy takes right. here in a second. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think it's because he's funny. Or coming in very soon. Uh, that's and very accurate. That, we will get started. Very accurate. That's a very accurate descriptor of CTV. CTV um <laughs> is the irate gamer edition of Angry Joe. But about politics instead. Right. Yep, it's just me and Dario today. Dario, it's good to see you. Long time no see. Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? <laughs> hey. Yeah, it's all good. How you been? Um, I've been okay. <sighs> I like just your new room. Doing. Thanks. Doing real life stuff, moving to a new place. I guess this is how it looks. Oh, it's nice. Um, yeah, yeah, it looks nice. Uh, got a, I find working CTV on lighting, fine. I see. It's yeah. good. Work, working on some lighting, working on some internet, which has been having some issues, to say the least. But uh, hopefully it works tonight. It means Let's don't see. be a jerk. A lot of people come that in and blue ask light that. That blue lighting is really chilling me the fuck out. Very, I just actually, I actually just heard. I, I listened to a video on YouTube um, earlier today saying that actually, if you have blue light or or light on the like a violet blue scale, um, it actually keeps you more awake um, mm. because of like the huh. the, yeah. the light waves or whatever. Yeah, that's why your doctor always tells you like you know don't bring your phone to bed because the blue light does that, and it can also like yeah. cause serious eye like damage. And I'm general. a person who likes to pull a shit ton of all-nighters so i have blue like glasses and i wear them in case i need to like stay up all night or like i'm only gonna get four hours of sleep and not it's all like better to just not get sleep rather than just four hours in my humble opinion so yeah it's never bothered me not i don't once. use flux as much um, because i stream so much one or blue light or wearing about any of that um not even once i imagine it does for other people but uh not once for me um, how old are you now guy uh, I don't talk about my age or my personal <laughs> details in general. Um, gotcha. But yeah, I've fair. never. Um, Very fair. It's never been an issue for me. Yeah. Well, I hit a brick wall when I was 26, <laughs> mm. and everything fell apart. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> happens to it happens to everyone eventually. It's just what happens. Uh, when did you get married? Me? Yeah. Um, 
when I was 27. <laughs> oh, right. oh. So, hold on. It, was so, it, it wasn't meeting your wife that was the uh, the brick wall, was it? No, <laughs> no I, 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 I hooked her in when wife. she still thought I was a, a youth. And then I was like, joke's on you. Everything's broken. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fair oh, enough. that was, uh, yeah, that was Dario. <laughs> Pulled a sneaky on you. <laughs> it's a little bit of a sim simplification of his argument, but yes, more or less. All right, that was I guess uh, we'll get We've started, had fun with and Dario, everyone though. else who will, will be here will be here soon. All right, um, here we go. Let's get started. It's going to be fun. Okay, so uh, to all of you out there, thank you for joining us. Uh, there are three. Uh, really Taiwan, appreciate if you come uh, back um, to the channel. Trump um, to, on COVID. Uh, see yet another program, another podcast uh, we're presenting. So this is every uh, round table. Uh, BLM with regard uh, we got a nice of, people here, um, um, and we'll have a few more a little with regard later to on. the election. Um, but yeah, so we'll get started introducing people. So uh, we have counterpoints um, who we can see uh, and hasn't already dropped out of the uh, call. <laughs> uh, so things are looking up. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you for being here, friend. No, you're you're welcome, bud. I had such a blast last time. I'm I love these panel shows. Okay. Yeah, um, and uh, we love having you. We, you're a strong panelist, so uh, I don't know much about <laughs> we value them. <laughs> we value them like gold here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, thank you for being here. Uh, mm -hmm. Next, uh, Shadows, uh, back in it. Thank you for being here, Shadows. Really appreciate you coming through. Yeah, sure thing. I mean, the you know, first two find first two times were really fun. You know, I don't know why anything would change the third time. People do say third time's a charm, but I don't think that works the other way around. So. <laughs> I'm sure this will be fun. Well, now I have the gun for you. Yeah. <laughs> uh -oh. nah, yeah, I hope to uh, not uh, prove you wrong. But yeah, thanks for coming back. I really appreciate that. Uh, CTV, thanks for coming through. Um, nice to see you again. Uh, uh, what's going on? Yeah, I just heard it, Larry, but thanks anyway. Oh, not much. Uh, they just announced it on the panel. Always happy to be invited back. Hmm. Well, we're happy to have you here. I uh, hope you had a great weekend. Yeah, it uh, it was rather well. It rained down here in Florida on Saturday, but Sunday was sunny. So no, it's not. It was nice. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, bye bye. Next, Demon Mama. Thank you for uh coming through. Um, at the last minute, no doubt. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, you understand how these panel shows work. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, they're a pain in the ass. Uh. But thank you for coming in and helping us uh, out. Uh, we really appreciate you. We always happy to have you here. You always uh, come with, with interesting perspective. Thanks for being around. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, for anybody who wants to follow my stuff, uh, easiest way to do so is to pop over to my brand spanking new website, demonmama.com forward slash live. You can come hang out. You can sign in with your Twitch and everything. Super easy. A lot of emotes. Very fun. So if you want to hear more from me, you can come over and hang out with us over there. Yeah, so uh, you know what someone was just telling me about your uh, website um, the other day and was saying that I should get one myself. Um, it sounds like an interesting deal. It's I'd definitely worth talk... looking into, yeah. Yeah, I'll definitely love to talk to you about that a little later on. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, and last but certainly mm -hmm. not least, we have Dario. Dario, thank you for being here. Dario, uh, who's in Everyone's a new jelly place. On my site. That's um, what you got to do, guys. Uh, I gotta guess reach all out that and go for money it. is being put to get use. Uh, I, I, we know you're rolling in it uh, with uh, your uh, channel. Um, yes, so, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, thank last you for being around. Here. Yeah, no worries, man. Um, just uh, slowly getting back into uh, back into streaming. Um, also, if I suddenly drop out for whatever reason, it's probably my internet cutting out still. Um, oh. Apparently, when you move Poor to sleepy a new Dario. place. Internet is not guaranteed in any shape or form, even if they tell you it is. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Uh, I, I sounds, you got a different style. Sounds Harry's like you've uh, uh, switched providers with uh, Counter. I think it's his camera. Um, it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I hear, I, I hear in South Korea that uh, it actually is yeah. um, uh, guaranteed when you move in. Like, that's All like right. just like your any of your other utilities. It's guaranteed to, to be there waiting for you. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I even I even did my due diligence like a month before moving in. I did all the research. I contacted the provider. They said everything's going to be good. When I moved in, it wasn't. And now we're here. You got you to gotta tell them you're going to be there a week before. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then maybe, maybe they'll be there a maybe, day after yeah. you move in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so uh, hopefully uh, you stick around because um, uh, we've been wanting to have you back on the show. 
So yeah, we're excited to have you here. Thanks, Bob. Next, uh, now last and not least, we have our uh, last username. Last username. Um, are you gonna go back? Yeah, I knew it. You're gonna go back. You something up. <laughs> last username. Uh, thank you for for coming through, my friend. Um, uh, did you do something with your hair? Your hair looks different than uh, usual. Well, that's cool. I'm glad he does that at least. Uh, can he hear us at all? I don't know. We'll find out. Um, I don't oh, know the what cat that unplugged is. it. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, no, he got popped out of the... Uh, okay. I think it means the cat yeah. disconnected his... Uh... <laughs> there we go. There we go. Uh, I was just saying um, it was nice to see you uh, last year's name, but your hair looks a little different uh, than Praxis. previously. Did you do anything with it? It's just shower wet. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, right. That makes so sense. Um, yeah, sorry for the delay. No, 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 no problem. Uh, we we're just getting started. So you everybody's starting anything. a little late today. Yeah, we really appreciate you coming through as goes. always, my friend. Thank you for being here. All That's right. Funny. Yeah. So uh, we got, we have a few more people who will come in, but they'll come in a little later. Uh, so we'll just get started now. Uh, we'll get started <laughs> with uh, topic two uh, first. Um, uh, this is the one that uh, we didn't get to uh, last time. Uh, so we'll try it this time. Uh, what should uh, the BLM movement do in response to either a Biden election or a Trump re-election? So uh, what would, what do you think, what's in your opinion, uh, the BLM movement, uh, what moves should they, should they perform um, under each, right? So uh, we can imagine uh, that they'll get a different response under a Biden uh, presidency, um, and things might change under a Trump, uh, a, a re-elected Trump. Um, his attitude towards BLM, I'm not saying it would be better, uh, might be worse, um, but under those two different conditions, uh, what are your thoughts? Um, all right, so we'll start with um, counterpoints. So uh, I, I was kind of sad we didn't get to this last week, and I'm going to shout myself out. I do have a YouTube channel called Counterpoints. So I'm a copy, uh, copy demon mama there. Um, but basically, I think what the, uh, the goal should be under uh, Biden uh, president's and potentially a, a blue wave, um, you know, coming up, is that you have to you have to leverage the political momentum of the Black Lives Matter into like genuine reforms. So we've kind of been talking about you know True. political wave. We've been talking about like you know what's going on, all the reforms we would like to see. Talk about the drug war. Talk about all that kind of shit. But if you don't actually say, hey, these are the specific policies that I think are realistic, pragmatic compromises that I can get a couple of conservatives or a couple of Republicans to sign off on, leverage into actual political change, then the Black Lives Matter movement isn't, you're not going to generate anything from that political momentum. So that's pretty much what uh, a Biden presidency needs to look like, because what Democrats com and progressives complain about is the fact that nothing gets done under Democrats. They just talk shit about all these social issues and don't actually get anything True. done. Um, with uh, a Republican uh, presidency, I think you're going to have to keep the pressure on. So rather than, um, you know, basically like you're probably not going to have the legislative opportunities that you would under a Biden presidency and anything that you do get through is probably going to get vetoed. Uh, so basically you have to keep the pressure on where you have to highlight specific incidents that show fucked up abuses by police. Uh, get those into people's minds, use that as political leverage. And then basically once you have the, the political yeah, uh, will, take. momentum, good and take. ability, I don't know much about um, then at that so. point, uh, you know, even if it's four years from now, then you leverage it into real change and real reforms. Okay. Uh, next, Steven Mama. Yeah. Um, so there's, you know, the sort of path forward in my mind um, for BLM is going to be very different depending on who gets elected. Um, one thing will not change, which is that the intensity um, cannot go away. We we need the reform. Uh, Joe Biden getting into office is not in and of itself um, a victory. It is just a sort of delaying of a, of a severe um, worsening of the conditions. Um, so let's start with what would need to be done under Trump. Um, with what we've seen with Trump is a continued devotion to an increase of police brutality, um, him going so far as to stand on a national stage and tell people that he wants the cops to be rougher with protesters, to throw them in a little bit harder, um, saying that he was okay with the fact that the U.S. Marshals, and these are his words, didn't want to arrest someone um, who was loosely involved in the pro BLM protests um, and instead decided to kill him. Um, this means that if Donald Trump is able to consolidate and regain power, that the BLM movement is going to have to devote itself towards um, an increase of internal security and a devotion to very, very, very safe um, but forceful um, 
demonstrations uh, in, like out on the streets. What this means is that there's going to have to be a focus in the organization on protecting its members from severe acts of violence. Um, whether this means showing up um, in less but more forceful numbers um, so that the police can't get away with things like, oh, you know, isolating people and beating them within an inch of their life or um, kettling people just so those tactics become impossible. Um, there's probably a lot of tactics on display. But the fact of the matter is going to have to be that it's going to become very forceful and it's going to uh, take a focus on actually protecting the lives of the activists involved, which Trump has no care for. As for Biden, um, the pressure needs to increase. And I would agree that um, there are certainly more electoral and reform solutions possible under Biden. Um, but as we know, that's going to, as we know, I live in a city where a Democrat, a Democrat um, mayor um, was unhelpful towards BLM completely. So we know that there's going to be a fight back. Um, what this will mean is that there's going to have to be a focus on getting local candidates who are um, actually progressives into office so that change can actually take place. Because right now, a lot of powerful positions are being sat on by establishment corporate Dems. So the focus is different, but the intensity needs to remain. Okay. Shadows. Um, so, hold on. I think that was a good start. Excuse me. Um, uh, so I think what counterpoints pointed out is very important and i think it matters in the context of it so like um I'll, well i guess i'll start with trump first i think generally when it comes to a trump re-election um oh, it was chat with Vosh. it oh. depends on how you define the blm one, no. movement i would say if we're talking about like should there be protests i would say no absolutely not i understand the reason why people would want to protest but unfortunately there are opportunists out there um, who will hijack the things. Obviously, of course, these are not the people who okay. actually care about the BLM movement. These are usually just white Antifa kids who just want to start shit. Um, so, but I think, you know, what? that sort of issue that has arisen in certain protests across the country, well, you know, probably best not to do any protests. Already, but if we talk about like, actual the activism, takes. then I think, yeah, of course, there should be activism um, for... Right. Um, pushing back against, you know, Republican policies and Republicans at the national level. But I would say if Biden This wins, is going to be fun, I um, can tell. Depending on what the Senate looks like, you can do change um, through that. Um, I think you can definitely either way push Nancy Pelosi to... Um, you can push Nancy Pelosi to bring bill to forward that has bipartisan support. No, nah, um, you're good. First bipartisan bill in Welcome. Um, almost 200 years. Happy to have you here. We got a, a lot of stuff going on today. Act, Big busy which night. Which was brought Tons forward by Justin content. Mash and Ayanna Presley. They have a bunch of Republican and Democrat co-sponsors. You know that should be brought forward. Um, I think you could push certain governors and mayors to you know get rid of police unions. Um, depending on what the Senate looks like, maybe. Tim Scott will try no, and bring says, his yes. police reform bill Shadows is a kid, before that new like session of but Senate okay. comes in or after, because maybe he'll get, it'll get more bipartisan support depending on the composition. But um, generally, I would say um, either you need to be pushed back and prevent as much as possible from, you know, Trump's populist side of the aisle doing their whole law and order shit. Or you can use the momentum of Biden and more uh, a more democratic Senate to bring forward actual policy, like getting rid of qualified immunity, getting rid of these police unions. No, that's and a Dario and stuff like that. Okay, he's actually out of uh, Dario. Um, sure. Uh, I I guess this might be a little bit of a cop out, but first I'll I'll just say I honestly like the the BLM movement or whatever you think of it. Um, I just cons at this point I just consider it like people out in the streets like protesting and stuff. Um, I really think like whatever is gonna be done either way should be with them in the focus, like the people actually out there protesting, because I think True. those are the people who care the most about it and are actually putting out like their lives on the line, like a lot of the time to actually pass some kind of reform um, or, or or do the things that they believe needs to be done. Um, and I mean, I I can't really say how their focus should shift one way or another um in terms of like what i think i mean generally like whenever people protest or think that there is a need for a protest of any kind i i support that i think it's very important in like a democracy it's like one of the most yeah, important tools I, I would say in a democracy to be able to protest and like make your voice heard when i mean you can't really go through the normal institutions to do so um and it's very obvious in this case that that is what's happening 
um, people don't feel like their voices have been heard. And true, I, I Dario. True. That. So, like, I, I think it's it's honestly the the tools and like what is being done is the exact same no matter who is president. Um, and yeah. Okay. Uh, CTV. <clears throat> Well, This'll you know, fine. I saw on the, well, on the internet, right? This crazy world we're in. I saw on the internet on a page uh, where the BLM movement was one of the largest movements that has come across the country, right, as far as, like, even bigger than the Tea Party. Hannah, right? thank you so, so for much me, for the raid. Holy moly. Welcome me, just the to everyone to to who's the, just joined in. Make sure you pop that follow button and consider rich. coming and hanging out on my right? website. Give me just a second here. Consider coming and hanging out on my official website. We have the on-screen chat over on demonmama.com forward slash live. Link right there. It's easy. You can sign in with Twitch and you can come use all of our emotes, our whole community emotes. We're on a panel right now. So thank you all for joining. We're going to have a lot of fun today. Get comfy be able to make its full Sorry. progression it's of, important new friends as far as it every be new friends. you know like maybe it's american lives matter right because police reform falls into line with federal government overreach to drug possession putting kid you know locking up a whole bunch of single you know, or a whole bunch of fathers across the nation yeah i heard right? that piece craft providing single mother homes for these uh, individuals to end up uh, essentially married to the system Right. See you later, China. See you soon. I wonder if maybe. Oh, it's a panel. The right minds coming together. If that message couldn't happen, it's going to be a spicy and panel. This movement can elevate itself to everybody. I think that with the right uh, leadership, that could happen. Interesting. Okay. Uh, last counterpoints. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'm not even sure if the BLM movement. You know, the question is, what should the BLM movement do? response to the election results I, I don't know if the movement can do anything i mean there's no there's no real leadership to this movement there's no even like clear um uh you know set of demands or or even a clear ideology or or, or a statement of what the problem is or exactly how you know so i, I mean what it what it does uh, is not yet, up to TV. every single person who goes out i will soon in the streets um and and says that they're part of the movement and that could be absolutely anything and does appear to be indeed a huge variety of different people with different agendas so i mean i, I don't know if i can give like a meaningful answer to this question like what should the blm movement do it's going to continue to do what it's been doing now which is just being this sort of vague umbrella term under which all sorts of people um uh try to use it for all different uh, all sorts of uh political agendas or social agendas or just personal uh um, exercising personal frustrations or personal, uh, or necessarily, necessarily frustration, maybe some people doing, doing productive things, but, but it's so poorly defined. So I don't know. I, I don't think, I don't think that the, the, there's like any kind of agency that the BLM movement has that I could say what, what it should do. It'll do what it does. Okay. Uh, open to the floor. I got a lot. <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I mean, if anybody else wants to jump, they can jump. But no, no. Um, you can go first. It's fine. Okay. So um, the okay. So I just want to push back on Demon Mama on just a couple of things, just uh, minor nitpicky details. But at the same time, I'm sure we agree on more than we disagree on. But we'll we'll find the contention. Um, so so basically, the uh, the this is a minor detail, but the I'm pretty sure the guy that the U.S. Marshals killed was the Antifa person who was accused of murder for uh, killing a militia member, um, and I'm pretty sure there's actually video footage of him, you know, murdering that guy. So while Trump basically, you know, celebrating the fact that he allegedly has, uh, you know, people that he can say, hey, don't take this guy into custody. Basically, go ahead and execute him if you have the excuse to. That's pretty fucked up. But I, I just wanted to clarify that I think it, you may, 
kind of made it sound like, you know, the guy didn't have a reason to be arrested and there, there was a reason for him to be arrested. Oh yeah. There's all kinds um, of reason so, for him to be arrested, just not um, summarily executed because the marshals didn't want to. Also um, we've reviewed the footage on my channel, like on numerous occasions, I get a number of fucking conspiracy theory got people who come in and say, Oh, he murdered this guy. Well, it's funny because uh, here in the United States, we have this, um, this principle that we follow called, uh, you know, innocent until proven guilty. And um, the video um, of the incident is incredibly blurry. You can't actually see anything that happens. All you can hear is the gunshot and you can see a cloud of um, what appears to be some sort of bear mace or, or something along those lines deployed. That's about all that you can see in the video. Um, uh, and while uh, it is certainly clear that someone was killed um, and it was probably this guy, um, he never had his day in court. He never had his day in court because he was shot uh, between 30 and 40 times um, without any sort of warning in advance. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's actually, um, worse than I originally even sold it as. Um, and that's what we're looking at under here. And, and yes, while he was quote unquote Antifa, and that means he expressed on social media, some interest in, um, anti-fascist principles, as we all know, I'm sure, I sure hope Antifa is not a single organization at all, not even close to it. Um, and they're, they're actually a, a sort of, um, loose conglomerate of various organizations. It is a belief system. Being anti-fascist is a belief system that has, of course, inspired many organizations, but there's no one single Antifa organization. And while he was perhaps, um, interested in anti-fascism, so are many people. In fact, I would argue most people in this panel, I, I hope, are, are in, interested in anti-fascism to some degree or another. So, um, yeah. But I thought you were, I thought you were one I? of the generals of Antifa. Yes, I am, uh, the general of Antifa. Um, <laughs> and I recognize that by, uh, jokingly saying this, there's a pretty good chance that in a few months I'll be killed by Donald Trump and his cronies. Um, specifically. Uh, I hope not. Yeah, yeah. Well, well I know, it's what we're looking at these days. Which, uh, can, but, uh, you know, can, I, this point, can I push back on something there? I think at this point though, it's fair to say that Clinton's probably got a higher body count. Ah, we're gonna, no, we're gonna break out know. that meme. Are I we doing conspiracy believe... theory off the off the gate? <laughs> no, I'm here for real. it. Let's do it. Let's be real. Epstein did not add to the Clinton body count. That was definitely the Trump body count. And I think they're probably here. We go. Okay. We're going to go to uh, shadows. Shadows. Uh, 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 C counterpoints. Um, we'll go to I, just shadows. Want... <laughs> I, I just wanted to push back. I don't think you know what it is. It is true. However, it is true though. I want to, you know, grant to you, it is obviously true that we do have something called innocent until proven guilty. And this is a legal system. However, we also have a, um, a, an amendment called the Fourth Amendment, which outlines unreasonable search and seizure. So if we have a colorable situation, which this footage you're refer referring to, we have a colorable situation where it is possible that we could presume that this person may have murdered someone, you know, if the officers are interacting with this person and believe this person uh, poses a threat to them, uh, their fellow officers or nearby he civilians, even know what he's talking about. you know, it technically does count as a, it could count as a reasonable seizure um, to, you know, kill this person. Obviously, 30 to 40 times is grossly fucking excessive. I 100% agree there that, you know, you kind of ruin the principle when you shoot someone 30 to 40 times same thing with laquan mcdonald if you shot him twice you know it would have been a very 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 different different situation in court yes uh, they are if it was eating dirt 16 they are. times because this is what happens every time you know, when you shoot a black man who literally only has a knife and you have a ranged weapon and you use that 16 times it's very different than just shooting twice and then backing away okay um, um but well, listen, I, I don't mean to interrupt is, you I don't mean to interrupt you, but it's very clear to me that you don't know anything about the situation you're talking about, like, like at all. The, the arrest happened days after the actual event itself. Um, Michael Reinowl was uh, literally sitting in his car um, eating gummy worms. Um, like quite literally this would, these gummy worms were found on the, on the, on the floor of his vehicle after he was shot 30 times, the police pulled up in, in unmarked cruisers, jumped out and shot him. This is not any sort of situation of a justified arrest. This is totally, totally in the wrong. And these were federal marshals, mind you. And also Donald Trump literally went on the national stage and said, yeah, they just didn't want to arrest him kind of playing their hand there. So yeah, um, with all due respect, like 
I, I would recommend before you like defend the actions of, of a state sanctioned execution that you actually know what you're talking about. Well, I was, I, I well, was going to go, hold on, I, hold I on. Well, hold, no, hold on. Cause I was actually going to go somewhere with that. Um, mm -hmm. I, I am more familiar with, you know, the initial situation than actually, you know, what happened with the federal marshals, but I was actually going to go somewhere with that and say, you know, it, it is a lot harder to prosecute these people when you have something called qualified immunity, because that situation you just described where you pull up in an Argmar cruiser and shoot someone 30 times, you know, with qualified immunity, you can be like, well, you know, you know, a situation like this hasn't really happened before where, you know, a police officer just comes up and shoots you in your vehicle. Okay, so it's harder to prosecute this and it's harder to know, okay. you know, if this is an unreasonable seizure, <laughs> which is like obviously total bullshit. And I hope we can agree on that. Like that, that is obviously... You know, that situation you're describing is an unreasonable seizure. Qualified immunity makes it harder to bring something like that to court. And also police unions make it harder to bring something like that to court. Um, they will use the city payers tax dollars rather than pulling out of their pension fund, um, which is what they really should be doing when, you know, you know, officers brought to court. They should be like using their benefits. They should be fired. You know, I, I police unions know obviously about. make that harder. I just harder, have one question, so. like just a sentence. Okay. Right. I really just wanted to know what flavor gummy worms there were. Bad damn CTV. Good one. Okay. I guess what I'm I glad to you know. decided. I mean, to... I, I sit there, you know, so, yeah, right wing ain't sending their best, I guess. Uh, I still just want to know. So, uh, uh, so no we'll angel. Go to, um, we'll go to Dario, uh, who's been waiting, yeah. um, and then we'll go to your counterpoints. Um, and, and before that, uh, GSU Camera, thank you for joining us. Really appreciate you being here, friend. Um, uh, that was. Uh, but, I don't uh, know what I'm doing with here. One thing to a shadow, uh, yeah. Um, Laquan McDonald uh, was shot as he was walking away. He had a knife. He was walking away from the police. The police lied about that um, until uh, Beetle Pitch was finally released. Um, uh, Rahm Emanuel, um, the Chica uh, Chicago mayor at the time, uh, held that uh, evidence for as long as he possibly could um, until finally it was released. And we saw that, yes, the police were lying. He was walking away uh, from the police when they shot him. Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm very familiar with the case. I actually personally know the journalist who actually successfully filed the FOIA and you know oh, talked okay. to a city uh, alderman about the situation. So, okay, um, senpai Chow. I don't know what that has to do with anything that I said. Can't hear us. I'm sure. Okay. Um, all right, uh, Dario. Hmm. Uh, I just yeah, wanted they to don't. ask We're doing for good. Like clarification. All of you. Is this the is this the case where? Um... Or like the guy just walked Welcome up. Welcome again. Like Don't forget to somebody, follow. Uh, like standing in the street. Like the was it like in the um, fuck, like like where the guy went on uh, like on a show before, like talking about how yes, yes, he was like in defense stuff. Yeah. He went yeah. on a show I, afterwards, and also he yeah, didn't. Yeah. There's no like again. Um, this is and said it was self defense, right? I mean, there's no. I don't know what it was. There's, there's no way. No, he said he said it was. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, and and we have no fucking clue because the video okay, is just. Can I? Can I just? Can yeah. I just finish? What sure, I was sure, saying? sure. I'm just okay, just okay, letting yeah, you. Know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I heard your perspective. Um. So yeah, I I watched that video like numerous times when it came out. From that video, to me at least, it seems pretty clear like what happened and like there were a bunch of claims by uh by like the guy who shot somebody in terms of like self-defense claiming it was self-defense claiming like the other person had a weapon that he didn't have as came up with forensic reports afterwards i mean it seems pretty clear that it was like a, i mean sure you might you might not want to call it like an execution or whatever but it was like it like I'm not justifying like him getting shot. Obviously, like no. Sounds like what you're shot. doing. Like he should get tried in court, but I mean it's it's pretty clear that like it, it, like it was like a, like like a motivated execution of some sorts. Like I don't I don't I don't think like casting doubt on that and saying like the footage is blurry or whatever. I mean I don't know if you review the footage, it seems pretty clear like what happened. Uh, I, 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 I don't, mean I, don't really I, I know firmly how you can say disagree. That. Based on what was said on the video, I mean I, I firmly disagree with you. And, wait, and, so and you, here, so wait, hold on. Let me just counter this a little bit because I had someone really funny. I had someone come on my show the other day and show me a picture of um, Jacob Blake who was shot in the back seven times by police. An incredibly blurry photo and. And they zoomed up real close what? and had a red circle around it and said, look, he was holding a knife. He was holding a knife. That means it's justified. See, that's the thing. Um, I don't really what? know what happened. And I never would claim you, to know what happened. Can you address what I said instead of bringing up something else? Wait, wait. Yeah, I'm trying to give you an example of how ridiculous okay. it is to to claim that like a well, I mean, extremely we don't really need wait, examples. Wait, wait, wait. A blurry we, we can just talk about nighttime this. 
a nighttime footage and then say use that you're saying okay well wait, maybe what are you, what are wait, you, wait 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 what are you, you gotta let me talk you Dario. i know you're like fucking fuck? i know you're fucking pissed it's like let demon mama just sure. make her point then you can respond to that demon <laughs> listen so the point is is that we don't when you don't have clear evidence of what's going on i have no clue what happened in that video i've i literally sure. said when i reviewed it it's very possible that he was in the wrong but what we have what the situation that we have is that we have this is unknown and it never saw its day in court because the marshals blew him blew him to hell that's why okay uh, so, so that's the so, problem the problem is that sure. no, it no, never no. saw no, its day in court and they sure. shot him for 30 to 40 times this is very clearly yeah. some sort of perceived and we don't even know if it was it's possible that he might not have even been the right guy not likely cool. it's very possible that it is so yeah <laughs> Okay, so so uh, so f to me the footage was pretty clear. So hey, if if you uh, if you're in doubt about something about the footage, you could just ask, and I, I can clarify, and we can talk about that. So what specifically uh, do you not think is clear from the footage? I mean, do you want to watch uh, the footage uh, again? Uh, like literally a hey, car guys, drive. I, I just watched it. A car drives I just in front. Interject real quick. No, can, can, what what is it? What is it about the footage that you think is unclear? And I maybe Wait. I can help you. Wait, like I don't understand what angle you're going at this with. Even if, no, even if, wait a question. second, hold on a second. Wait. Even if, let me just cut this like this like waste of time aside. Um, even if wait. the footage was clearer, even if that was the case, you it still is not okay that he was executed. And this is something that happened under no, Trump. No, I, Trump I said that. About. I said that. Yeah, but then what, what are you getting I'm, at? What's your point that you're actually trying to get at? No, I'm just because it I'm sounds like asking. what you're trying to do is you're trying to downplay how bad it was that well, he was executed no. by saying, "Oh, well, actually, Wait. he was a bad person. He's no angel." You know, you're I you're mean, literally do you, doing okay. The... So, cool. So, so when I initially said like nothing justifies his shooting and that he should have been tried in court, does that not matter to you? Are you just like pushing your own? Like, um, yeah, no, it doesn't matter if you say that, but then you immediately like your your motives and what you're also saying well, contradicts what you said. I just I just don't think there's well, any point you know, to like said, lying or like misrepresenting. Wait, 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 but who's misrepresenting and lying? You, okay. you are. Wait, wait, okay. how? Okay. Wait, 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 no, wait, this is just... We are misrepresenting the footage. I mean, you can very obviously see yeah, like, what's happening. I, okay. I super want to interject. Let's I feel show like it. I can it. Here, here it go. I, I Here's Washington what, Post doing an investigation. So, okay. I, 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 the I footage, part, like, like this, frame by frame. So, I want to go to counterpoints. Um, okay. Counterpoints. The so so I, I kind of want to I want to take this to the macro real quick okay this I want to take this to the macro because the 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 prompt and the question and we can go Love wherever it. we want we're free people we're allowed to discuss whatever we want to discuss but the prompt is what should the Biden and the Trump administration do during you know basically uh, with the Black Lives Matter movement and what should the Black Lives Matter do to influence these politicians in the next four years that's the question. So what I often see when we have these conversations is we kind of miss the forest for the though. tree. So we're often talking about very detailed, specific it. events where we get into the, the nuance of, of the nitty gritty of, uh, uh, you know, Kyle Rittenhouse, you know, shot three people or four people in self-defense or this Antifa super soldier uh, executed a militia member, you know, in cold blood. Uh, and what we're really spending our time and our political momentum arguing about is basically Please. Did he? Uh, did he cut off? All shit me. that does think that Black lives are not treated appropriately inside the United States of America. True. True. Most of us think that the system is set up in a fucked up way, and the drug war is fucking people over. Most of us think that the system should be changed or revolutionized, and there should be some points of contention that we can agree on in order forward, uh, in order to use the momentum of the Black Lives Matter movement in order to actually affect real political and systemic change. But what's going to fucking happen here instead, because we're all human and fallible and kind of retarded, is we're going to argue about tiny details. Oh, sorry, I use the R slur. I always do. My bad. <laughs> sorry, Demon Mama. <laughs> I'll try to refrain from it. Uh, but... Because Yikers. we're human and we're, we're flawed and we're fucked up and all that kind of stuff, we're going to find a nitty gritty detail in which to, uh, you know, basically, you know, show that we're the biggest brain in the room instead of focusing on the actually politically productive conversation. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, I, I last agree. question, did you want to uh, interject or something? Oh, I mean, it's not really important because I, I agree with counterpoints that, you know, that this is not really... We shouldn't really be arguing about specific. I agree. It's an Dario was bringing up an irrelevant detail. This, uh, you know, the larger qualified detail. immunity for one. Yes. And ending the war on drugs. If there's any one thing, like one really simple thing.
that would uh, do a huge amount to deal with uh, police violence, um, excessive use of police force, all sorts of issues with policing. That is like dirt simple and most people can get on board is and the war on drugs. Very simple. And, and, and I, I want to point you. out, I want to point out something because I'm watching the, uh, the whereby. So I literally saw last username, GSU Gambit, Demon Mama, I think Dario, Shadows and CTV all nod at the same time. And these are all representative people who are all from different political oh oh perspectives, out. energy and frustration out. that we all have and channel it into performing the war on drugs, then you would actually see some success. But instead, what's going to happen is, since I'm on you know, the right, quote unquote, and CTV is on the right, is we're going to argue whether or not Kyle Rittenhouse uh, was a, a, you know, a self-defense scenario. We're going to argue about whether or not this militia member was executed. We're going to argue about, you know, uh, fucking, you know, whether or not Laquan McDonald should have been shot two times or if he should have been shot 16 times. So, I mean, again, like, I, I hate... You forgot Jacob all Blake and the knife on the, street the floorboards. We're just saying legalized drugs. Like, that's all we were saying. <laughs> yeah, like, but then I, then I push how... back on legalize. I say decriminalize. So, I mean, there's an easy way that we can reach well, synthesis here between, but I don't know that the right's going to like the answer, which is that uh, Joe Biden, for for all his flaws, I will say Joe Biden was very explicit about what he wants to do with drugs, which is to make it no longer a criminal and instead a medical thing. He's very firm about that. And you don't hear any sure. of that coming out of the Donald Trump camp. So if we're talking yeah. about just on the matter of, um, on the matter of, uh, of, 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 how we move forward on the drug war and make some progress against this absolutely disastrous quote unquote war on our own people. The best way to do that would be to accept that Joe Biden will be better. Yeah. Jesus so, Christ. Dude. Can you stop the, the shilling for Joe Biden like, for just a so yeah. moment? Holy Sorry. I, can't. I, I love it. There's I so love many people. <laughs> so I want to push back. Nothing. on this. No, there's seriously, there isn't. Not when it comes to the world drugs, the guy's been in office for 47 years. He hasn't done shit. Wait, he's right. been president for 47 oh, years? Oh, look, my God. Dude, look, I've been quiet for a while, right? And you, and all you've... Uh, the rest right of the room is water. essentially now addressing what my opening statement was, right? Which is seeing this movement of the people elevate to a higher status to be able to end the world. on yeah, drugs. He's crying now, again. The rest of the room, I'm glad you finally caught up to the opening statement, right? So, now that we're here, Biden's not the guy. Are you kidding me? No, he's not. And honestly, Trump's not that guy either. True, that he right isn't. There's an essential problem. With I'm this happy country. you said that, CTV. Right? I'm so but, happy. But I'm still going to vote Trump because he does know Ooh. one thing that Biden doesn't, and that is about the economy. Right? Period. So that's it. But to be able to elevate this movement, right, to be able to end the war on drugs, Lol. that fight can start right now. Lol. Right? Instead of sitting here and snickering and making jokes and everything, right? You actually get the people together and you say, look, we want to be able to do this. We want to end the war on drugs. We start the movement here on Twitch, right? Talking to the people that we know. And we say, look, we got to get behind somebody. And the only thing that we are going to settle for is a complete and under surrender of the federal government's rights when it comes to the wages war on drugs. Right? We're not going to accept anything else. And that's what exactly what on, we do. So um, I wanted to, uh, I guess this is a uh, pushback against CTV and last year's name. Last year's name said much the same thing about like, oh, well, what, um, what would it look like if we were all out in the streets uh, chanting in the war on drugs? Okay. Not that that isn't a worthy cause. I'm 100% behind that. That would be fantastic. Um, but I don't think you can properly direct a organic movement in that way, right? Saying, oh, you should just simply be doing something that's most politically effective, right? When you have uh, uh, mothers- I'm not saying you or... can. I'm just saying it would be great if that's what people were doing. Okay. Well, I'll be directed in any way. Well, I, I mean, I'll, I just, would... I'll just say this, I'll just say this. But like when you have uh, mothers, right? Cradling the, their child, right? Watching them bleed to death because they were shot by a cop, right? Um, in that situation, those people are gonna be passionate about a single thing. Right, so they're going. They're, they're and energy. Lots of people passionate about you know over overzealous drug prohibition. You know, their energies or have their lives ruined. Because, by, I mean, their energies. Right hold on, hold on. But like, and, and hold on, and I also need to push back against that. This is simply a, a uh, um, situation about the war on drugs, right? Like these people aren't all stopped because of first some sort of a uh, uh, suspicion. No, no, I'm not saying it's all about the war on drugs. I, I know, saying, I know. 
That's I know, the I know. Thing, I, the know I know, I know, okay. I know. Hold on, okay. let, me finish, let me finish and then please respond. Um, they are, they're, they're not just uh, being stopped for that, right? Now, I get what you're saying is that, like, um, on a statistical level, um, then if you want to uh, help uh, tackle this, these things, that would help if um, the war on drugs was ended. And again, I agree with you. Um, but what these people are seeing is uh, certainly a lot more than that. They're seeing the police use, um, even before, let's be honest, even before the war on drugs, the police, the state, use violence against African Americans. This isn't a new yep. thing. This didn't happen uh, at the beginning of the Nixon administration or the Reagan why, administration. Why, these aren't, these it, aren't new why isn't it a so, new thing, Prime? Why isn't it a new thing? Because the civil rights movement acted in, went into effect in the '60s, right? And then there wasn't a stop because they initiated the war on drug war on drugs in 1970, right? That's why there hasn't been a fucking stop. Are you okay, my it. dude? I it just what? like, like look, the, you're the absolutely right that it is the fucking war on drugs. You wouldn't have the same it's, climate. It's not today. the only problem. They had not but put the other problems are more complicated, years ago. difficult to solve, right? Um, here's the thing. The war on drugs is not a single policy. It's not a, like a, an executive order that was put into place by a single president that one president can undo. In fact, I would argue that the war on drugs is more like an ideology. It's an ideology that, that sort of pervades many corners of the United States in the way that we approach policing, the way that we look at people who use drugs or who, ha who struggle with drugs, the way that we even consider um, uh, certain drugs as bad drugs and certain drugs as good drugs. For example, weed and alcohol, even though alcohol is significantly more harmful on every single metric than weed, we don't consider it particularly bad, but we consider weed um, damn near, it's illegal almost everywhere in the United States. It's still federally illegal. Um, so like like I'm saying, um, this, this, this idea that like the war on drugs is a single policy, it is an wait. ideology that needs to be combated for sure. Wait, I, 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 I remember, I, hold on, wait, 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 wait. hold on. Can, I, can we I, all say I, that the Controlled Substance Act should be thrown away and that's a large force behind the war on drugs? Yeah. You don't agree with that? No, no, absolutely. No, yeah. wait, I, like I, I don't have any, I, I'm not saying drugs. that, I'm not saying that there aren't yeah, individual policies. No, no, that need to be, no, okay. no you're, not, you're saying that there's not one policy that holds it all together. Yeah, there isn't. There absolutely Look, isn't. Yeah, prohibition is. I the mean, thing there is. is. No, yeah, there isn't. Well, there the isn't controls. Okay, so okay, hold so on. Mama, explain how uh, that doesn't hold everything together. The control substance that. Yeah, please. Um, okay, because even if there's a single law that um that that allows for certain types of punishment, um, there are like on a federal level, we have states, municipalities, we have even counties. Each one of those have sometimes local laws against these things so even if you get rid of the law on a federal level even if you're able to get rid of that law which would be good because it would stop you know the fbi from going after people for drugs um you have a problem that many local uh like states local municipalities and counties would continue to imprison people or jail people over um drug offenses the problem that we have is that we have a a um generations long ideological um approach to how we handle drugs in our and and addiction in our country how we handle policing in our country and these things do play together and i'm not saying that, wait hold on no, I, there's like 20 people coming at me you got to let me finish my sentences if you want me to if you have if y'all have a problem with what i have to say then you know you got to get yeah, demon mama finish your point and then we'll get ctv ctv we'll get you right after after demon mama uh, right after demon mama finish your point demon mama please yeah all i'm saying is that we need to recognize that this is bigger than any single politician or any single law that we have um, the criminalization of, of, of a health problem, addiction, um, and the criminalization of non-health problems, but substances um, that aren't even particularly problematic on a, on a countrywide level that affects states. And we need to approach this from a cultural level. And then we can recognize, hey, wait a minute, this approach is really bad. And unless we are able to propagate a better culture a better cultural approach towards these things we're never going to be able to solve all of them because there will still be places that are pers persecuting people r wrongly is what i'm saying okay. it's an ideological uh, problem we'll go to ctv and then shadows look you're look you have to go with this at the federal level and get rid of the controlled substance act otherwise sure. any of the states are going to look at the problem and go well why the hell should we bother doing it because it's still illegal federally 
right? So they're going to sit on their hands because they, they can then have a legitimate excuse as to why they shouldn't do it inside their state because it's still illegal federally. We have to attack this at the federal government so that that's one of those like trophy cascade situations where when you take out the very top of it, the rest of it is just going to go to shit until eventually it's just not even there, right? You have yes. to take, get rid of it because if yes. you don't attack it at the top, the fucking rest of the castle wasn't going to fall down. Well, so I mean, I don't, I don't disagree with you. I don't think that it's a bad idea to get rid of these these laws. What I'm saying is Wait, that there's more that we have to do than that. Can Consider I ask you a question, Demon Mama? So, uh, sure, sure, you, go no, for no, it. I just want to ask a small question. All sure. right. If you wanted to change the war on drugs and you wanted to get rid of it, what exactly would you attack before attacking the Controlled Substance Act? What, what thing are you saying has more value for us to change and this is legislation this is not let's change the hearts and minds of how people feel about drugs right what other facet of our political sphere would you attack before the controlled substance act i don't know i don't understand what you're asking me I don't, like, I don't like think because that, no because like i think you're misunderstanding you no i think you're misunderstanding yeah. what i'm saying i'm not no, saying it, i'm not arguing against no no i'm not misunderstanding i think i asked you a question i just wanted to answer but if you can't that's fine no, 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 but I think I think what I think what Demon Mom is trying to say is that um, I hate like, this. Absolutely attacking this or annoying. getting rid of the uh, this the that act. What is it? The uh, illicit substance control act, substance. Right? substance yeah, yeah, control I'm substance act. Um, is mean... absolutely correct, right? Like doing that yes. is absolutely correct. Like uh, in demolishing um, the war on drugs. I think what she Wait, is but saying. No, 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 no. The, the wrong, thing that the thing that, that Demon Mom said is that that wouldn't be the most effective thing to attack. Not first. No, 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 that's not what she said. That's not what she said. So what she's trying to say. Um, is that um, uh, that would be uh, uh, helpful, absolutely. But there's more to it than that, right? There's a whole infrastructure that's been built uh, since you. that act has been Thank passed. Thank you. Um, Thank since God. this entire war on drugs has, has uh, started, right? This entire infrastructure that also has to be demolished. And then on top of yeah. that, there's a mindset that goes along with it as to how we look at people who do the drugs. Is as there... how, as how, uh, all of it is based off the CSA. Right? Everything is... after it is based off the CSA. Is there, is right. there any, okay. Right. Wait, 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 Can I just bridge some communication? Just quickly. Okay. Is there... Bridget, I've, I've had my hand up for a can while. I... So yeah, I'm, I'm almost done talking. I don't know. Yeah, okay. It's um, mostly we'll go, like one. I'm getting tired. Talking. This is okay, the this shadows, is the everyone hates me show. Let the, the shadows go first. Shadows, please. Okay, so I actually wanted to get in on this and back up what Demon Mama was saying at first because I totally agree with the idea that it is an ideology, especially when you look at how it started. Um, it was started Churches. by Nixon, and then obviously Reagan ramped it up more, and we all know what Nixon started. He started something called the Southern Strategy. So. That's that was also an ideological shift in the Republican Party. It's okay. kind of funny how they go hand fine. in hand, except it's not funny. It's actually really sad. And it's kind exhausting, of dangerous. but I do it. But all I time. think you know the point of like just getting rid of the CSA. And I have Much the hugs. link copied here. I'm going to paste it in the Twitch chat if anyone wants to open it and read it. Um, it is from the DA, DEA.gov website. Um, that is obviously a big component. I would say a bigger component is the DEA itself. I think that we should abolish the DEA and uh, scheduling yeah. and the criminalization should be left up to states. Totally um, uh, and if not, then we should, you oh, know, no. decriminalize oh, it, at the so federal level. I think that would be better. But, you know, chances are we're going to get more bipartisan support if we make it for a state. <laughs> I don't know a ton of um, but that... I think there is a collection and why Demon Mom is pushing back on this idea of, you know, sure. just getting rid of the CSA is going to do it is because there's a culmination of so many different policies that has just created what is uh, homogeneously the war on drugs. Like a really good example is back in the 80s when you look at crack cocaine versus just regular cocaine, crack cocaine. Um, you you needed um, uh, 10 times less of crack cocaine to get the same sentence for cocaine. So if you have a kilo of just regular crack, um, if you have a tenth of a kilo of crack cocaine, that will get you the same sentence. And it was very obvious that, you know, crack cocaine was more common in black news. And we can go down the road on other policies that do this, that no, these all build up. And it's like a snowball rolling down a mountain. It gets more snow and more snow and more snow. And, and that's all these little policies and all these little executive actions in between that create this ginormous, like, boulder rolling down a mountain that is the war on drugs. Yes. Counterpoint. Hey, uh, so shout well, oh. I, I want to let Dario go because it so seemed like he had a response, but I call shotgun after Dario, and I really, really, really want it. Gotcha. All right, Dario, then. It's 
it's it's really frustrating that it seems like people are constantly like talking past each other so i just wanted to like clarify people's position it seems like shadow presented like a different opinion in terms of like he thought that there was uh like like there was something to be done before like um removing the csa in terms of like uh what should be done but it seems like everybody else shared the opinion that like removing the CSA or like uh, restructuring it or like in, in some capacity mm -hmm. would be the best first step. And then you could work towards like doing other things. I, I, uh, unless I'm wrong, it didn't seem like anybody held the position that just like only addressing the CSA would be enough. But if anybody did, I would love to hear that. No, I don't think so. Oh, no. Okay, cool. Yeah, so we, so people were just attacking a straw man for 15 minutes. Maybe this would be, like, useful just to clarify people's <laughs> position. Much. Yeah. And I mean, right. it's a good example. Like, yeah, like I know funny. that... It's like they all keep jumping on me no matter what I say. Be correct, but if you're thinking really about what kind, of, what kind of message to put out there that would encourage people, that would encourage a movement to, to focus on a particular thing, like saying, you know, oh, it's a big complicated thing and it has to, it has to be a whole huge cultural change. There's all these things that have to change. That's, it seems like that in a sense sabotages, sabotages the movement more. Whereas just saying, let's solve, let's fix this one thing, this one thing that we could change yeah. that would make a difference and just focus I actually, on that. I mean, that's a much yeah. better message to put out there, right? All there's, right, let me, let me, there's a lot of, just, just, just 30 seconds and then you can go. Thanks. Uh, there, there's a lot of evidence to, to what last username is saying. And the fact like that, this is the whole like slogan discussion we have all the time, oh right? Why are God, slogans effective? It's because they effectively like push one idea or like <sighs> one thing to the forefront. And when you have a big decentralized movement, it's, it's important to focus on like one simple thing in order to keep that on everybody's minds. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. The sure. build the wall, make America great again, yeah, all that yeah, yeah. bullshit. Keep it simple. I think more, more than a slogan, it's got to be like a clear idea, a clear action. Well, and this thing. is this is the thing. So Black Lives Matter, I yeah, think, I mean, is your slogan. I think that's the thing that people have all rallied around. I think that's the thing that has political ment momentum. The question is, what do you turn it into? And that's something that we can't really seem to agree with. And so far, abolish the CSA seems like a wholly politically unpragmatic solution that is basically, you know, it's it's not going to go anywhere. Boom. My parents are boomers. They're in their early 60s. Um, they're not going anywhere for another 20 or 30 years. Nancy Pelosi exhausting. and all the boomer politicians, they seem committed to dying in office. So the question is, what can we force boomers to do now to basically help out, good, you know, black lives? That's that's the question. So well, there's okay. there's what? Well, sorry. One, let me let me finish. Yeah. Um, so basically there, there's some things that I think even pro police people can agree to, which is universal and federally funded body cameras. I think there's, you know, basically use of force reform that could be, uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, everybody would support. I think there's, um, you know, basically better, better and more training for, uh, de-escalation and martial arts that way peak cops who are unfit and by unfit, I mean fat unfit and i mean incompetent True. and uh basically unfit meaning that every single time they get into a fight um, they reach for their gun they actually okay. feel more comfortable wrestling a uh non-compliant subject rather than just pulling their gun getting punched in the face once or twice and then shooting them in the head so there's real pragmatic reforms that we could take on that actually most people would probably agree to, although Akai probably doesn't. <laughs> and and uh, I'm I'm ready to hear his objections. I just well, think there's more I... to it than that, but I'll I'll, I'll save my 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 um, thoughts on that. Um, I want to get to um um uh, shadows and then um senpai chow. And they keep in are. mind, all of this um, is so, because I mean, they were I, determined I, to make I a straw man of them. I agree with what you're saying. I disagree, though, all the idea this. that just getting rid of the CSA is, um, you know, uh, not politically pragmatic. I mean, obviously, GSE was asking me in chat, like, why I wouldn't be in favor of getting rid of it. I think we can get rid of both in swift action. Like I said, I think if we make it more of a states issue, this should be left up to the states then I think you get bipartisan support because the thing is a lot of Republicans like the idea of federalism. And guess what? I agree. Federalism can be kind of based. And I think this is a very an issue where, you know, you utilize this idea of federalism of, hey, you know, this should be something left to the states. Like, you know, one through nine in amendments, they didn't mention jack shit about drugs. We might as well point to this one and say this should be a state's issue. And I think another area Sorry, where you can, do I'm is you can to keep look up with at um, Kim Scott's police reform bill, which was 
filibustered, obviously. Um, I think you can look at that bill, get rid of this stuff Who you know, cares? Democrats don't like, and they bring it up again. And, no, you know, you Breakfast Detective, the superior chat to, is the site uh, chat. Come forward and uh, present Website it together in the, the same way that one. Ayanna Presley and Justin Amash brought for qualified immunity, which has been sitting on Nancy Pelosi's desk and rotting for how many months now? Because, and I think this is something that, you know, Demon Mom would probably agree with me on, um, is that a lot of these establishment Dems care a lot more about virtue signaling than actually getting shit done. True. She literally True. knelt on like a floor and did nine million minutes in silence for Jacob Blake. But you know, when there was an actual bill, an actual idea that is getting rid of qualified immunity, she just let it sit on her desk and rock because she doesn't want to actually do that. She just wants to kneel on the floor, wear some African garb to virtue signal, oh, I care about black issues. Oh, I care about the lives of no, everyone he lost. Hey, Hunter Cruz. You're not actually doing it. anything to fucking fix it. There's a bill that these two people, a progressive and a libertarian, the first ever tripartisan bill in almost 200 years in the U.S. Um, it's fucking been pretty Congress. dumb so far, Windleby. And you're, we're having you're an not right doing time. anything to it. You're not even bringing it to a vote. Five, five seconds. Okay, hey, I, 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 got, I got referenced in that, so I just want to talk about All right. All right. Can, five, so, can, can I get five, five seconds? seconds? No, I think he referenced me. No, no. Yeah, but can, can I just do a five second? Okay, five yeah. All right. Okay. I, I want... So, the, this like is my counterpoint to that. 300 boomer House of Representatives are not going to agree to rip up the CSA. 51 boomer That's senators That's are not going to yeah, you know, basically agree to rip it's up the really CSA weird. in the next four years. They're We're failing. talking about what the can we do in the failing. next four years Mythic for the Biden boss. or Trump presidency. Seed the floor. Um, okay. All right. Uh, Gam, and then I want to go to Senpai Chow right after that. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of conservatives that think the Controlled Substance Act was like an overreach of the government somewhat. So I, don't, I would disagree with counterpoints a little bit. But um, yeah, so never back can. to what you were saying, Shadow, like this whole nonsense that the left does, and I'm not saying you're on the left, I'm not saying you're Democrat, but what people do is they say that there could be legislation that could be productive. But then we try to tack on like multitudes of things so that that legislation will never be passed. And as a black person in America, that type of stuff infuriates me, right? So if we want to actually see progress, don't try to couple 2 million things into the bill that won't get passed, right? So if we see, hey, we can abolish the CSA and then we can try to abolish the DEA because they'll be pretty much ineffective once the CSA is abolished. That's why you go for one thing and then you fight for the next later, right? And I want to see progress in this country. I'm not interested in, hey, let's throw our pie in the sky ideas out and just try to get everything at once. Like we have to start to incrementally make progress on these things. Yes, and me as are. a black person, I can see the damage that the CSA has done. Um, I feel like, hey, let's abolish that first and then let's work on other things next. That's why I'm against this whole idea of coupling them. Okay, Senpai Chow. Uh, we'll get to you. We'll get to all, the rest of you. Uh, senpai Chow, then Dario, um, and then we'll go to others. Go ahead, Senpai. Hey, friends. I have a question for counterpoints because uh, it, it concerns the the target demographic that are boomers. Uh, I don't know if there's any public opinion about uh, the CSA, if uh, boomers actually don't like it as much or if they like it. Yeah, I if, don't know what he um, plays. Maybe League? If that is the case, something? I would like to see it. If not, then I don't think it's justified for boomers to be that target demographic that we have to focus on if there's nothing to back up that they actually support it so overwhelmingly that it is affecting how Congress or government is going to be dealing with it, whether they want to mm. repeal it or not. Let me, let me fuck up all your guys' shit so fast. So Senpai Chow wants crack babies in America. Now, obviously you don't, but there, there's a utilitarian calculus that goes into what we're talking about. We're talking about reforming the United States of America to follow the drug what? war model of the Portuguese, uh, like the Portuguese uh, drug model instead of, you know, basically what we have right now with the war on drugs. But you can take visceral, emotive, simple, slogans simple ideas simple concepts and basically accuse your political opponents of like basically wanting horrific shit so what you guys are saying is you want the drug war to stop you know basically fucking over black lives you want the drug war to fu stop fucking over poor people you want uh you know drugs to be decriminalized you want I'm, uh basically uh us to invest in the social well-being this is what beings. happens when you These have are all complicated right subjects panel. that take a super long time for me to describe but all i have to do is say 
Congressman Chow, uh, you know, basically doesn't, you know, support black lives and then literally have like a video of, you know, a baby on a like a, a drug addict baby on a, you know, a ventilator. And then basically I have a punch against you. No political, no political person at this moment is going to take that kind of risk by coming out and publicly saying, I want to rip up the CSA. Okay. Um, wait, 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 hold, hold on, because I don't think that was an actual question, answer to my question. I'll try to answer your question. I, I want to know I if think you have are fried? anything I like data that suggests that boomers mm -hmm. support the CSA so much that your statements that targeted boomers, I want you to justify them. Sure. I'll, I'll start looking it up while everybody else responds to it. Okay. Uh, Dario. Um, and then uh, uh, I will go to um, uh, Demon Mama, then Shadows. All right, Dario. Sure. Um, first, I want to build on something that Counterpoint said uh, in terms of like um, when when you're trying to figure out what you can actually get past and like whether or not like some group of people is against something else, it's important to have sort of data or polling in mind or like ask questions to the public in terms of like what the public opinion is on certain things. And obviously, it's not the only Sorry, thing. Sorry, I know. Oftentimes. The sound levels are fucking annoying. I can't do like anything about it. Like what the public wants doesn't don't necessarily fucking get past. Balance their own goddamn but mics. We can talk about like how you can restructure the political there, system. I'll boost to him up a little better bit. Better adhere to like what the public wants. But regardless, what the public wants is extremely important. Sorry. And it has been important. There's nothing in, I can do the, about this. Like, Scuffed as in, in the times of, uh, of the BLM movement and like what they've actually managed to push, like the reforms that have actually been pushed in certain cities and certain municipalities and stuff, those have been very popular um, things that like most Americans have agreed with, like maybe 70 plus percent of Americans have agreed on like excessive use of violence, uh, chokeholds, all kinds of things. Um, but it is also true, like wh while it is true that you should, I guess, try and push for the things that most people agree with first, it's also true that people change their minds. And I think that's one of the big reasons why a protest like the BLM protests is very important. It, because, it is because it changes the public opinion on certain Thank things. You. And that has that's been at the, least true for point. the BLM movement. And I think that's like one of the most important things that it can actually still achieve. So, so while uh, like abolishing the CSA uh, in any of its form or whatever, even among boomers, um, even if it wasn't popular, it could be because of the protest, right? If they were structured such. Okay, uh, Demon Mom. Yeah, um, I feel like there's a couple of different, like, conversations that are going on here. And um, one of them is, like, what is an effective rallying point, which is not a conversation that I, like, was really um, talking about at all when I gave my statement that everyone had a problem with. Um, I was just addressing that, like, um, I think that there are a lot of factors that contribute to this phenomenon, this this thing that we call the drug war. And um, as it turns out, it's pretty hard a lot of times for us to um, pull off, like, really, really major... Um, like single point systemic change because there's a whole lot of restrictions that are inherent into our process you know what i mean like laws rarely ever are just do the thing there's always this law has to be litigated there's a whole bunch of process changes that come from that if you change a law it changes how the um handbooks of all the cops work there's like a million different tiny minutiae here so what i'm saying is we, we, you know based off the question what decisions should we make or what should BLM make going forward? Well, I mean, again, um, we're not getting any such things. There's there's no progress going to be made by someone like a Donald Trump. Donald Trump has indicated that the, the status quo is perfectly fine with him as far as police are concerned. And um, meanwhile, you have Biden and Harris. Again, don't mean to stand them too much, but I mean, they are advocating for the ending of private prisons. They're um, pushing for the um, moving to a model of decriminalizing drug addiction, um, which are both fantastic. So these are things that can be pushed for once we're talking you know, once we're past the election. Um, and I think they should be focused on. But again, not everything is going to boil, boil down to one single slogan ever. I mean, besides literally Black Lives Matter. But that what that means means a lot to a bunch of different people. Um, and how we influence what that is going to mean on the longer um, in the longer term is like what Dario said, is that people can change their minds. So 
and it is going to change. The focus of BLM is going to change depending on who gets elected. And I think that, unfortunately, if Donald Trump gets elected, the focus is going to have to be a lot more immediate in protecting the people who have been protesting, who have been standing up and using their um, First Amendment rights because he's shown he doesn't care about them. Okay. Um, Shadows? Um, so, uh, there's kind of a lot to respond to there, but, um, you know, I, 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 Sorry, my takes I are so big brain. That there are multiple conversations going on, but, you know, I don't want to go too far down this. My but brains I, are too I mean, big. I they can't handle my brains. I want to talk about this more with counterpoints. The effectiveness of Super doing certain brain. things. Like, obviously, GSU at, uh, was talking about the effectiveness of this stuff. Like, I agree. It would, you know, make more sense to... Just get rid of the CSA brains. and move more incrementally. Incrementalism is super important. I However, have the biggest you know, brains. There is that important response that I think Dario mentioned. You know, when you change the CSA, you change a lot about how cops work. You know, a I've lot got, of how, I'm how like cops the, and I'm federal like the, um, agents, you know, deal with this is me. drug on, issues. And that's why, like, this idea of swift action makes sense. This is why you end up with omni bill, omnibus bills in, you know, Congress. This is why you end up with bills who deal, that deal with a shit ton of different things. Because you have one central issue that's at the focus of it, but then you realize, oh shit, this actually affects so much. So, with this example of the CSA, if you have this a bill right that now. appeals to CSA... This is my brain. You might have to have um, me, a bunch of attachments about me right you know, now. major structural reform of the DEA or just ripping Demon it apart Mama, mistress and, and big brain takes. Agency. True! Um, or you, and you also have to deal with, like, you know, uh, st uh, standards for Much police love, and how Gina. that changes at the federal level, you know, if the federal level, like, has standards, which are going to be there um, much more uh, if Biden and Harris are, you know, elected, obviously, because they are very much in favor of that to get on the stand train with Demon Mama there. Um, so, um, yeah, I know. there's just like one, there's usually one central issue, but then it affects so much. No, I didn't and yet. This is something that's really Maybe important because we'll the there are a lot of people who complain about like, why are these bills that have to deal with so many different things? Well, there's usually one idea at the center, but then it has to affect all this other stuff. Just because of how intertwined yep. different agencies this, of the government Shadow's are. Shadow's actually right about this. Government yep. are. It's just a fact. It's just All right. A fact. Then um, it, I'd like the opportunity to just uh, come back One v to Mr. True. Chow. But the, yeah, so I mean, I think I think that's my thing is like. I'm fighting this all is of them the and my Chow. shadow self. <laughs> is, is, what, can, you, can you translate senpai for me? Uh, uh, senpai is more. He's basically a grandmaster. <laughs> okay. All right, so I, I'm I'm sorry for insulting you with the term Mister instead of Grandmaster. So Grandmaster Chow. So the the Pew Research studies that I could find, uh, you know, basically talking about drugs were mostly about marijuana, and it looks like up until 2009, uh, there was only about 32 percent uh, 32 percent popular support for uh, the legalization of marijuana. Um, so what I would issue to you, inferring from this, and now it's uh, at roughly 70 percent. So what I would infer to, or what I would infer from this information is that since most boomers were born between 40 and the 60s, they would be adults at that age. That a majority of boomers didn't want to, uh, a, a majority of boomers and a, a decent amount of, uh, you know, basically people. What is it? The greatest generation uh, probably didn't want to legalize marijuana. With the greatest de generation now passing on, and it just being boomers, some drippy hippies, and also kind of a, a liberalization in general amongst uh, Xers, millennials, and Zoomers. About? That ne that's part of the reason why you're saying marijuana being so. I think uh, everyone know, so except for me on this. I almost guarantee you, shit. like, so we're all politically minded individuals. We all pay attention to politics. We're you know nerds and like arguing on the internet on Monday nights, even though most of us have work and school tomorrow. Um, I almost guarantee you, if you change this to methamphetamine, cocaine, if you change this to uh, heroin, you're going to see these numbers plummet. So you might have an argument for everybody decriminalization, but you're not going to have a argument for legalization. Usually not and true. everybody can basically do the Mott and Bailey of marijuana, damn. or That's they can damning, do uh, you know, basically thing, the Lucas. Trojan horse of marijuana. Damn. Oh, it turns out Americans completely support reforming the drug war. But I almost guarantee you, as soon as you change to these harder substances, you're going to see... Uh, you know, basically support for drug reform, either crater Damn, or you're going to see awesome. extreme anxiety about what decriminalization or legalization means when it comes to the harder substances. But boomers have been fucking doing drugs for the whole lives. They've been stoned out of their gourds since the 60s. Fucking That's like... a stereotype. <laughs> mm. I, I, I think okay, well, I'm, I'm boomers glad are that uh, we could finally loads. Put, put it down. I got my answer question. And it, it led to, uh, okay, boomers aren't really the problem because current polling suggests that they do support something like 
making marijuana legal. At least what I look at in front of me in a Gallup poll, that seems to be the case, 61% <laughs> nice favor. Uh, there's still a gap between millennials, Gen X, and baby boomers. That's true, but, Soros. Um, I agree with you. That's, that Is seems the to CSA be the only about marijuana? <laughs> now, that's a... the thing, though. I was trying to look for something specific to the CSA, and Google was not helping me. So uh, we're yeah, I, I think it's important. I got a question. To, uh, so we're, we're going to be. T I just want to say that uh, uh, everything you said, counterpoints, is going to be tested actually next week um, in Oregon because Oregon has a referendum on uh, decriminalizing all drugs. Mm -hmm. um, that's up. So it that actually will be tested. Um, so I can be. You want to say something? Yeah. So do we all here agree with the like removal of scheduling for marijuana? Right. We all agree with that on this panel, right? Yep. Yep. Okay, so this will be my first step. I will see ground to uh, counterpoints and shadows. Uh, well, not necessarily shadows because we were talking about something different. But yeah, so that's what I would say. Hey, let's remove marijuana from being a scheduled drug, which reduces police encounters with black people. I'm shaking your hand through the webcam. I agree. Uh, I, and you don't want to know what? To, to, to just put the, light, the, the ending cap on this? Hand. We all know what's coming next. If you want that to happen, your best bet right now is to vote for Joe fucking Biden because for sure it's not happening under Hell Donald yeah, Trump. Oh yeah, baby. Jesus Christ, demon mama, the shilling. That's right. <laughs> That's right. A week before the election, baby. Vote I Joe Biden, you really motherfuckers. Really Joe. I would just like to add that as a neoliberal who is the ideology uh, most professional in shilling, that I just want to say as a neoliberal, I can certify that demon mama live is a very effective shill for the Biden-Harris 2020 campaign. So your shilling is neoliberal approved, and oh, it's harder to get a better. Uh, you know it. No, you know it. Well. Dario, did you have uh, a last yeah. answer? Yeah, I wanted She's to. Gonna I vote for Trump just, now. <laughs> I wanted to just comment on something that uh, that counterpoint said that I think is very interesting. Um, so, so you you basically nice. said that even even if we do get. Um, some kind of like uh, marijuana legislation passed that doesn't necessarily, um, I guess, build. It doesn't necessarily follow. Vote for Biden if you want to smoke weed. Past, like other things. Uh, and I think that that's very true, right? And like oftentimes people kid themselves into thinking that some things have more support than we think they actually do. Um, but but regardless of that, I think it's important to take the victories you can get that are or should be Very easy nice. victories for, for all like, intents and purposes. And then building upon those victories into other things, right? So yeah, I, he's I think lost. It, would, it would be much easier to pass other drug-related legislations once uh, those kinds of drugs have sort of their foot inside the door and you can sort of start referencing marijuana and saying, oh, well, remember when that was banned? Yeah, that was super bad. Now we can show like the clinical trials for drug X and so and so, so and so, right? And you can sort of build on those arguments. I think he's about on um, fucking Jupiter sort of at this build point. On that precedence. He hasn't I, said I anything that, except for to yell at Prime Guys. At least. And you can get over certain political hurdles. So, for instance, there's always going to be a pushback. So, for instance, in Colorado, when marijuana was legal uh, legalized, I know that everybody you know here is going to pretend that that had no secondary side effects. But there was a conservative campaign inside the state of Colorado. There was pushback on a national level, basically saying, "Oh, you know, uh, they're they're going to start putting uh, edibles into our kids' trick or treat, you know, uh, bags, and they're going to, you know, th there was like a few overdoses and anxiety attacks, and people started pooping in the streets and all that kind of bullshit." <laughs> Um, so, so basically, like there, you can you can hurdle those political issues by basically going incrementally. And I think that, like, while we can talk about like the things that we think will have, what, what we're really having KFC, about right now I'm is a good. fight between what will actually achieve the results that we believe that we want to achieve and what is politically uh, Same practical. Here, Lucas. I keep arguing what's politically practical. Other people keep arguing what would actually solve the problem. Um, I think we need to have these conversations uh, at the same time. I'm not, I'm not you sure. heard I'm not it here, folks. Matt, what we're gonna do, sorry, but we're gonna do our final statements. You gonna say you gonna say a joke, Johnny Mama? Oh yeah, I was just gonna say you heard it here, folks. If you if Joe Biden wins this election, you will get free edibles every Halloween, no cost. <laughs> <laughs> uh so uh shadows um i will go to you um and demon mom your camera uh, is like uh jittering so uh Aww. come out of the room and come back in we'll do um, yeah uh so we'll start with uh you shadows and let's uh, uh keep them short like let's keep them to like a minute or so long um so we can just keep the show moving so uh shadows hey what um, was the initial question prime just before everybody goes um well 
Uh, it was topic two. Um, these are the topics are pinned in the group DM. Um, and topic two is uh, what should the BLM movement do in response to either Biden election, uh, a, a Biden yeah. election or a, uh, Trump re-election. Um, but it kind of wandered away from that, um, which is fine. Um, I don't know why my camera's but, uh, like just, that. Um, Hopefully it's fixed. You can respond to anything that, that's, that's been said. So. Um, yeah, so for my closing statement, I was actually going to get into that and how this wandered into the area of drugs. And I think it's really good that we have the conversation and important because I do think the area of drugs and the drug war and just overall federal policy on drugs is probably one of the biggest issues that has affected Black Americans. I mean, as CTV pointed out in his opening statement, you know, you have the drug war removing um, fathers from houses, um, which, you know, leaves the woman in the house usually to have no other choice but to, you know, get married to the welfare state in our country. And, you know, you can't blame people like that for doing that because they really don't have much of a choice when your husband gets locked up for, you know, a simple drug charge. Um, so I think he's very true in that. Um, and I think, you know, I think this conversation on drugs was fairly productive. I mean, um, I think we seem to all agree. Um, and I think there is a way to actually bring this into the foray of pull a tube uh, real world uh -oh. politics and to, you know, frame it and, uh -oh. uh, you know, put it into a package that actually makes it digestible to the average American, um, to people who, on both sides and whatnot. Mm. Uh, Dario. Yeah. So, um, while I, while I think I, I think we did very well on like the final topic of drugs, uh, I just wanted to say like for for this panel and like for other panels that you participate on, uh, I think most people should practice sort of uh, understanding and articulating the arguments of the other people on the panel. I think we spend way too much time like talking past each other on things that I think we essentially agree on. And I think when we actually got to the meat of the argument where we had our agreements. Okay, that's too I many, that, Hunter Cruz. That's like a very good thing where we can actually discuss like the solution to these issues. And I think- You got two, he I'll give you the others later. And actually listen to what everybody else is saying on the panel and like discuss it and see where we agree, then we can't really expect the politicians to do so. Are um, there three demon so, yeah, mamas? Like practice that a little bit more. There's three? We'll oh, there are three. Oh shit! I didn't notice that. I agree. I 100% agree. Um, it can be That's very difficult sometimes because you get back into a corner, right? Like at least your ego does, and you know, yeah. you feel like you have to fight against um, whatever the other person is saying automatically exactly. without realizing that they're actually even agreeing with you. No, I totally yeah. uh, feel you. All right, um, we'll go to uh, uh, GSU Gambit. It's okay. Yeah. So um, my Good take morning. on this is kind of what I was saying in the middle. Exactly. Um, middle. I feel like BLM or whatever organized group that cares about black people should, uh, to use shadows word, fight for digestible laws being passed. Um, I'm long tired of the every four years the Democrats say we care about black people and then there's no legislation that's passed. Right. So I am perfectly fine with with the idea of incremental change and with our government slowly doing more and more things for black people. That's that's it. Aftershark, thanks so much for gifting the hot tier one sub to Dario. Thank um, you. Dario, Thank nice you, my friend. friend of the channel. Yeah, it's really kind of you. And Dario, welcome to the worst generation. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, so uh, next person, CTV. Um, yeah, so in the beginning, I felt like that if we kept the momentum in this particular group and it was able to transform into a fight against this war on drugs that that would be like one of the uh, best things for it to choose to attack right obviously you're going to have to start at the federal government's level and then work your way down through the states because the states still do have uh, the ability to be able to conduct a drug war but I would be arguing from the complete stance that the overreach is unconstitutional, right? And we have the examples of the 18th and 21st Amendment to uh, point to as far as the federal yeah, government's he's ability not. to yeah, that's prohibit 100 true, a substance. Now, I continue to argue every time I see Pisco this, and we're uh, so far deep down into Article 6 now from him <laughs> trying to justify that he's, he's, on, he's on the ropes. So... Pisco, whatever uh, you're ready, buddy, I am ready to continue this uh, march to prove how Mariner, this I'm gonna, is I'm gonna drop that is one down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop that one in the chat. Why uh, Amy Coney Barrett, who was just accepted to the uh, Supreme Court, should have a, be willing to have a sit-down 
uh, and listen yeah, to do. the points of CTV. Uh, wow. Okay. So I, I, th- I imagine uh, Pisco, so I'll, I'll speak for him, um, that he completely disagrees that he's on the ropes with you. Um, I think he would definitely look at this differently. Um, mm, okay. I think he would also have choice words for you uh, explaining the law to ACB, but okay. That's fine. That's A OK, CTV. I really appreciate you being here. Um, all right. So we'll go to um, uh, uh, Senpai Chow uh, next. Uh, two cool things. Before we here. do that, on one uh, to you counterpoints, um, uh, Senpai does not mean Grandmaster, ignore Dario. Um, it's Japanese <laughs> for like a senior within an organization, whatever that organization may be. So let's say you just started at a company and had been there for like a year before, right? I'd be your Senpai, right? Like I'd be your senior within that company because I was there before you. Um, um, also, to men- clarify, will you accept act- Mentor Chow? Uh, so actually, to clarify, uh, as someone who took Japanese for two years, senpai is um, a hierarchical term. So it's senpai and kohai. So senpai is someone who is above you on the hierarchy, and kohai is someone who is below you on the hierarchy. We as a shit. person who took Japanese for three years, I will say he's correct. Anyway. Uh, Destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, and finally, senpai, what were you dancing to before you, <laughs> you were dancing to something Cringe. just now? <laughs> no. I, I was just cringing. Guys, as a person who's been a weeb for I don't know how long, I just want to weeb out, okay? It's nothing <laughs> to do yeah. with the Japanese language or culture. I am... <laughs> Guys, Hell come on. Yeah. All right. I am uh, so cringing For my right closing on this topic, I came in late. I wasn't able to give my opening, so that's what I'm going to be doing. I don't think the response of BLM should be any different to a Biden election or a Trump election. Although it is obvious that one presidency would support BLM more than the oh other, BLM should continue to advocate for solutions and raise awareness to issues such as police brutality. Neither presidency will inherently turn solutions into policy and result in the disappearance of police brutality. For the reasons that I support BLM, I would like to see BLM continue to grow and potentially become a powerful interest group and would apply pressure on governments both national and local. A lot of this is going to be a rehash of what Dima Mama said, I agree a lot. As Thank such, you. it could support candidates for office that favor BLM-backed policies or even run their own candidates. To everyone, not just BLM, concerned about politics, yeah, no. attention should be directed to the 2022 midterm elections. There will be elections for all of House of Reps, one-third of the Senate, and hundreds, if not thousands, of state and local elections. True. And for reasons, for evidence that I have seen, there I is like a budget. positive correlation between public opinion support of a policy and that policy being adopted by government. So um, I just wanted to be really clear on that because I've heard it multiple times and it's just not true. Okay. Public opinion does matter. Yes, it does. Absolutely. It does matter. Uh, last... To say that it doesn't is to go against the very principles of democratic theory. Based. True. Last year's name. Um, <clears throat> I think that if everyone uh it's a shame that so many um so much energy has been spent um you know protesting uh and uh and the message of that protest has been um basically a slogan that no one even knows what it means and if you can ask what it means uh you get a million different answers and you get an argument about about what it means uh and you get ar- arguments about you know what uh, the movement really is. Well, this Marxist? is perfect. This gives me my uh, my closing. All this ridiculous kind of uh, kind of discussions. Um, if they were, if the slogan what they were shouting was um, you know end the drug war, end drug prohibition. Not only would those arguments be point, like who cares if they're Marxist if that's what they're saying because what they're saying would be clear. Um, that would be uh, amazing. And even if. Um, even if uh, there wasn't the, you know, it wasn't politically feasible to completely end the war on drugs, Watch to this. tear up the CSA, Watch this. Um, at least the direction uh, that you that, watch, uh, I'll the, always take care of you. That the protesters wanted to move in would be clear, and so it would be fairly straightforward to this. see where the compromise might be. Okay, we can't legalize all drugs. What about legalizing some drugs? What about uh, reducing the penalties and so on? You know, like it's it's clear how you could compromise on that, even if they don't want to go all the way. Um, would that completely uh you know end all uh you watch all, you watch. all the entire drug war overnight probably not i think you might still have some states that make it legal uh keep it illegal um but then you would have states that don't and 
then they would have to compete with each other. And the states that tried to continue with the drug war would um, turn into shitholes and, and people would flee those states for the, for the states uh, that, that didn't Just have drug corruption. Just and I, I think if you, you did something at the federal level, that would set the wheels in motion and the rest would kind of kind of take care of itself. So, hey, thanks I mean, for the follow, Marcy. Happy to have you. The next time you want to start a movement or you want to contribute to a movement, try to focus it on something. One simple, actionable, clear message so uh, about what to do so that the this, debates can be about how do we do that? How do we get that thing done? Rather than what the hell is this movement all oh, about? What does it mean? What are its secret motivations? Blah, blah, blah. Okay? That's I wish we could talk more about speaking of stuff movement next thursday um so i'll keep that in mind uh thank you last year's being helpful with all this um last uh, we'll go to our uh, counterpoints um uh so uh before counterpoints uh goes i, I will say uh, one thing counterpoints um uh said something previously and then um wanted to know my thoughts and so i'll give you my thoughts so you can react to that and anything else you'd like um so uh you were saying that part of the problem was like overweight cops cops who aren't fit um, and so uh, what they do is like they're, they're afraid to tussle with a, um, a suspect um, that they're uh, they're more likely to pull out their guns because of that. I think it's so much more uh, than that, though. I, I imagine that's a contributing factor. Um, I think part of it is uh, gun, mindset gun, that gun. says black bodies are always a threat and they are a justified target of violence and that uh, the state will always back up a cop who um, uh, commits that violence against a black body. Right, True. like understanding that um, it's a uh, very, very long black and brown bodies um, uh, that have been um, spitting facts. Uh, uh, said that these people are coming, are out to get you, um, and um, that the state is here to protect you from them. And uh, there is a lot of uh, infrastructure um, and policies around all of that. So I think it's a lot more than simply like these officers are out of weight and like, uh, well, that's why they're pulling their guns because they're afraid of a fight. Um, I think I uh, what's going on uh, in chat right they now. understand that I they don't have all. to take that fight one way or the other, um, because if they uh, simply uh, escalate to the force, nothing will happen. Um, in fact, they'll get a medal for it. Uh, so uh, counterpoints can respond to that and anything else. Yeah. So um, part of the reason why I enjoy talking to uh, lefties and I think they're constantly surprised by my uh, points of compromise or how left or liberal my policies actually are um uh it is partially because of this because i was a cop and a marine and i have my apologies for the american empire and i have my apologies for law enforcement um I i'm not saying that there aren't racist cops but i know for a fact that uh you know killing somebody uh regardless of their skin color is not something that almost any cop looks forward to on a day-to-day -day basis and there's not a uh you know like, like i never I never thought to myself, oh, if I, uh, you know, if I if I kill a black or brown person today, then I'm just going to get away with it because that's what the state wants. And I, I think we need to have a even if that's a straw man, I think we need to have a broader conversation. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably you and me sometime, um, maybe not in a live stream format, but um, I hope to bridge that communicative gap um, and cultural gap because I, I think there's a lot there. Um, just to just to uh, address the, uh, the the subject, basically. I know that I kind of seemed like I was pushing against, um, you know, decriminalization or drugs. It, it's not that. And it's it's a question of tactics. I know that's kind of boring to argue about tactics, but I'm going to see if I can help out while pointing out the problems. So I actually disagree with last username. Um, I think Black Lives Matter is a phenomenal, um, a phenomenal uh, slogan because what it does, it's a simple statement. If you attack it, you're an asshole. It makes people ask questions, which is the whole reason why Black Lives Matter didn't fizzle out. I mean, this movement started all the way back with like Trayvon Martin, I want to say, and Eric Garner probably five or six years ago. Mm -hmm. The reason why it hasn't gone away is because it's a simple statement. Uh, people are still confused about it, but like they're Clark very quickly uh, looking for answers on it. It's a national good. level conversation. And sometimes that's what you need. You need to throw a stick of dynamite into the room in, in order to get everybody's attention. Um, so I think Black Lives Matter does that. Um, but I also think that we need to simplify the sloganeering of what we want to achieve, because I will also agree with last username that unless we codify and simplify the goals that we want to achieve, we're not actually going to we're not actually going to accomplish anything. So I brought up some simple solutions that nobody gives a fuck about, like, you know, universal body cams and all that kind of shit. But I think that's what you can achieve. A lot of people but just to bring that. it to the drug conversation, black lives uh, for slogans, black lives matter and the drug war 
abolish the CSA. And those are all simple conversation starters where, of course, you're probably not going to end with abolishing the CSA, but even having a conversation about what the CSA is with normies, talking to them about what you want to achieve, talking about marijuana decriminalization, talking about drug uh, decriminalization, talking about Portugal, all that kind of shit. Simple slogans yeah, start complex that. conversations. Actually, True. Uh, and we'll end uh, with Demon Mama. Yeah. Um, God, there's a lot to say. Um, there's this thing because on one hand, um, I really, really, really uh, back um, people tackling the drug war. The drug war is an atrocity. Um, and I, I, I uh, think it's really important that we fix it. But it always is a little bit weird to me when we start talking about Black Lives Matter and the only thing that gets discussed is the drug war because it starts to give me this feeling that maybe the only thing that these people care about is the drugs and not the fact that there's an incredible amount of um, racial disparity and violence in our country. And um, I appreciate that um, CounterPoints was on the right able to recognize that Black Lives Matter um, not only sells well, but also is quite good because... As it turns out, black lives do matter, and that shouldn't be a controver that shouldn't be a controversial statement to anyone. Um, but it is, and uh, even if individual cops or whatever aren't racist, um, the fact of the matter is that discrimination um, is built into a lot of angles of our system, and that can allow for um, for seemingly small forms of, of of bias to leak through and cause incredible harm. So I do think it's very important that we take time to address the racial justice portions of this because otherwise we can never really hope for a, um, a truly just system. If you think that ending the drug war is going to somehow end um, the unfair bias uh, against um, black people. Well, no, the, the drug war is just one tool, one tool that a, a sort of white supremacist ideology that has pervaded our country since slavery um, it uses to sub subjugate a minority of people. So I think addressing these things are actually incredibly important. Um, and I, I wish that I wish that certain members of the right would recognize um, the absolute facts of, uh, of of racial injustice in our country and not only um, pivot towards discussions of drugs. Although I think they're important for sure. It just it's regrettable that we can't um, talk about both because they are actually both incredibly important. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, thank you for all that. We're going to move Damn. on to our next topic. I think I did good there. Hey, and everyone, uh, if you haven't followed me yet, please give me a follow. If you haven't subbed to me yet, you don't have to currently sub. Hey, hey, please, intensive uh, porpoises, happy to have you. And uh, use the donation button below if you can to help uh, um, support um, this content uh, that I bring you six days a week. All right, thank you. Um, so we're going to go to our next topic. Thank you, um, Cash I'll Crash. introduce it. And I'm going Thank to you, put you guys in a timer because that was like way over a minute. So I, I will interrupt you if you go over a minute, um, everyone. So be aware of that. All right. So we're going to have introductions and I will interrupt you if it's over a minute. All right. So uh, topic one, um, which we had skipped previously. Uh, for decades, uh, China has insisted ah, that, the Taiwan, uh, that Taiwan, an independent uh, country, is actually part of, of the so Chinese much. territory. Uh, the U.S. has countered this policy by selling military arms to Taiwan and sailing its navy through Taiwanese waters that China claims. Um, but the U.S. would never accept another country trying to contest a claim to one of its territories. So uh, should the U.S. Uh, respect China's claim to Taiwan? Um, now I'll paste this um, in the um, uh, chat. It's a long one, so I'll paste it here so you guys can take a look at it. All right, um, we'll start with uh, counterpoints. And I am uh, timing you, so uh, go ahead, counterpoints. Okay, uh, fuck the CCP um fuck china um and taiwan should absolutely remain independent um in order to understand this you have to understand basically the nationalist and communist break that happened roughly 60 or 70 years ago um i would be um i am fearful that the normalization of relations with china in 1976 was a mistake and that basically what we have allowed uh, to happen is China to slowly take over the world, basically because they do have 1.2 billion people, they do have a growing economy, they have normalized economic relations. Um, and basically what's going to happen over the course of history is that they're going to do oh whatever boy, the fuck they go. want because our, uh, our globalist economies are so intertwined that we're not going to call them out on, our on their bullshit. We're having a national level conversation about 
racial violence. We're having a national level conversation about the drug war. We're having a national level conversation about every single political thing that you want inside our, you know, relatively free country. Uh, inside the CCP, I mean, you can basically find a dude who was, uh, you know, locked inside a tiny steel cage and talked shit to by police because he was in a Reddit forum talking shit about how the police impounded his bike. Fuck the CCP. They're authoritarian dickheads. And uh, basically, you know, Taiwan and Hong Kong should remain free. Okay. Uh, Dario. Uh, sure. <clears throat> I, I think on, on first look, um, I, I think probably most people here would like agree, right? Like most people, I, I think online, especially in these places are very pro Taiwan. It's like one of those issues that like both the left and the right sort of come together around. Yeah. Um, Kind of. At least most of the time, at least. Um, what I'm, what I'm actually mostly interested yeah, in, because yeah. I, mean, I was like true. looking at this topic and I was like, what could be interesting to talk about here? And I think sort of the, I, I can't remember if it was in the original topic or not, but like, would you, would you accept if a similar situation arose in the U.S. and like, how would that be dealt with? I think that's like a very interesting conversation. I literally wrote like, that in the question. We, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, I, I think that's like the more important, like more interesting thing. And like, how would that potentially be dealt with? Because while I do uh, like agree with the situation with uh, like Taiwan and stuff, and I, I think for for many reasons. Um, I, I think that there could be like some arguments for like ha like handling that inconsistently in terms of like like how you would handle something in the U.S. Um, the the main question to me is like in terms of like the U.S. actually supporting Taiwan and such and like that giving Taiwan credibility. I don't think that's a good precedent uh, to set necessarily. I agree. I think it I should rather be Dario like some sort this. of international uh, organization okay. of like. Uh, a bunch of like different, yeah, sorry, a bunch of different states and so on. I don't think it should be U.S. unilaterally. That yeah, fair enough. Uh, Shadows. Um, so I'm glad you brought that up, Dario, and I know you had that in the question because this is actually, I think I bring a interesting perspective because obviously I'm a, uh, I got this flag. I, of course, I'm Twitch.tv's favorite uh, secular Zionist neolib over at Twitch.tv forward slash Shadows of Liberty. You can check me out if you want the sex Zionist takes. But, um, you know, I think it is um, it is important to think about this because, you know, States. obviously there are a lot of Western countries that do recognize the independence of Palestine. And the U.S. is the one that continuously doesn't. We're the ones that continuously don't vote in favor of U.N. resolutions that are like, hey, yes, he's Israel, you're doing Zionist. something illegal. Please stop. Like, you shouldn't do that. And like, we won't even give him the, the, the finger wag. Um so, but I actually think the story of Taiwan is fairly similar to the story of Israel because, you know, they set up a British Palestine, uh, the UK did, because, you know, a Holocaust just happened. Nine out of 10 Jews in Europe died in the Holocaust. And the Jews were like, fuck this shit, we're out. We've been oppressed here since the year fucking 200. You know, we deserve our right to, um, you know, self-preservation and self-determination and the UK was like, hey, I think that's a great idea. We'll give you your own state. Oh, cringe. Um, I'm gonna cringe. And so that's basically what Taiwan was. Taiwan was a refuge for the nationals who lost cringe. the Chinese Civil War. Mm, um, so, yeah, I, I, I support Taiwan, and I agree with Dylan Burns on this issue, and I can get into that after. Oh, okay. Oh, man. God, I, I really I love it. I would love to argue with you. Oh, man. I love it so much. Um, all right. Uh, <laughs> uh, Gambit. Yeah. <laughs> I think I agree with Dario on this one. I think that, you know, there should be some sort of international organization that's heading this up. Uh, I think it's perfectly fine for the U.S. to fight for other people's freedom. Um, I'm not interested in a war with China in any way, but... Um, I do think that we should fight for those people freedom. And I think using some sort of international conglomerate to do that would be beneficial. Yes. Okay. Uh, CTV. Well, <clears throat> you know, counterpoints brought up the history, man. I always, I like usually talking about the history, so we'll probably get into that here in just a minute. Okay. But, uh, okay. As far as Taiwan and how to really approach this issue, uh, from a global stage, <laughs> right? Busy. It certainly seems to me that we have a vested interest in the area, and the United States is definitely uh, intertwined itself, you know, with uh, regard to selling arms to Taiwan. 
so there's 23 million people that constitute uh taiwan and they're definitely going to need support uh if they're ever going to hope to get out from chinese uh homogeny right they do most of their trade with china right so they're going to need a lot of help and support from i that. think he's asking so for a war with china maybe uh, either we do one of two things. We either A, recognize Taiwan as the only legitimate government of China, or two, we accept Taiwan as a state. <laughs> and uh, yeah. that's within a minute. Uh, it wasn't, but that's fine. Um, uh, uh, that, you it's, know, it's, it's it was okay. closer than anybody else. Damn it, it I tried. Close. It was no, mine was, was a minute. Mine was way less. His was less than a minute. Uh, GSU Gamble was actually less than I a don't minute. think he does. Okay, uh, next, um, we'll go to uh, Demon yeah, He's so fucking stupid. Yeah, um, uh, here's the thing. Um, when you have uh, a, a multipolar world with nuclear superpowers uh, yanking smaller nations back and forth, there are um, unfortunately going to be a lot of situations like this. The U.S. has a bunch of territories um, that are a part of it whether they want to or not. And my solution to that is fuck states. See, that's the problem. <laughs> the problem is, is that we have a whole bunch of imperial states um, that uh, are constantly looking to expand and take over other places. Um, the, at the end of the day, um, I think that, of course, we should recognize that uh, Taiwan has a, uh, the people of Taiwan specifically, um, have a right to self-determine. Um, and also that we have participated in removing the right of self-determination um, from a lot of other people um, in the past. Um, and yeah, that's the long and short of it. We need to recognize that and we should uh, use that to inform our policy. Now that seems a bit of a pipe dream, but nonetheless, that's what I believe. I believe we should use that to educate ourselves to better foreign policy. Almost exactly a minute. Nice work. Um, next, uh, last use your name. Um... <clears throat> Absolutely. I think that anyone who wants to defend Taiwan against um, uh, the CCP ruled China is entirely justified in doing so. Taiwan is a much uh, freer uh, nation than, than uh, Taiwan. Sorry, than uh, China. Um, and uh, so I think anyone's justified in, in standing up for them. Uh, I don't like See, saying I that uh, you know America should go to should go and defend them because I don't like the idea of telling other people what wars they should go off and fight. But I would not uh, criticize anyone for doing so. And as for the question of whether uh, what if something equivalent happened in America? Well, absolutely. If some part of America was uh, trying to fight for their um, independence yeah, and yeah, exactly. they were sign uh, a freer place. Um, than America in general, which is not hard to imagine, like say if they were an anarchist society, uh, then you would absolutely be justified True. in defending their in in defending their independence Fucking from America. Stealer. Sure. So yeah, it's entirely equivalent. I just don't don't know of any place in America that's that's currently um, having that fight, but maybe someday. Puerto Rico, beautiful way to Rico. Your ideology. I like it. All right. Uh, finally, Senpai Chow. I know it's okay, Gano. Yeah, I find we're it really funny it that for two times that I get invited onto the reverie, we there's a topic that I've actually already studied. So here's my hey, opening. It is my opinion welcome, that Sudafan. the U.S. should not respect China's claim over Taiwan and further argue that in the case that Taiwan is invaded by China, which I Yay. believe is incredibly unlikely to occur, the U.S. The ought to defend right against back. the evasion force. A Chinese invasion of Taiwan and its occupation would compromise peace and security in the region. From a humanitarian standpoint, such an event would result in a large-scale loss of life on both sides. Although it may seem as one-sided, the Taiwan state would not go down without a fight, and it is speculated that the Taiwan state either has the ability to produce a nuclear weapon, or it is already in possession of it. From a strategic standpoint, China controlling Taiwan would make it closer in proximity to the Ryuk Islands of Japan, a longtime U.S. ally. And that's it. Yeah. Uh, because I've studied this, uh, there's a lot of the responses uh, that I heard, or a lot of the openings that I've heard. There's uh, some things I don't want to, a lot of things I don't want to address, but leave that later. Uh, no, well, you were the last um, uh, opening statement, so you can address it now. I'm going to open to the floor. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So for to Dario and Gambit, uh, guys talked about, or uh, Gambit agreed with Dario that we ought to be leaving the situation between Taiwan and China when it comes to state sovereignty, independence, and whatnot up to an IGO, an international governmental organization. 
the one that really deals with statehood is the United Nations. And there's there's like no chance that it's going to happen because of what China does when it comes to relations with other countries. They often have to they they bring along the condition of, okay, we want you want to trade with us. You want to like have some relations with us of something diplomatic because China's the second largest economy in the world. It's really good for other countries to do that for their own interest. You can't talk to Taiwan. You can't recognize Taiwan. They do all sorts of things in order to make sure that Taiwan is delegitimized I'm in back. the United Nations I'm when it comes to the General Assembly. Got to go to the bathroom. When it comes to the delegitimization <clears throat> of their flag, there was a children's choir that sang for the Psy inauguration, and they were not allowed to go inside of China. That's how bad it is. They were. They can't participate in the IMF. They. They, they were really lucky in get, getting into it is a bit the of a swerve. WTO, the World That's Trade okay. Organization, uh, and we know the deal with the World Health Organization. It's, it's, it's just a mess. I, I really don't see how an IGO would solve the problems because so, of what China does. What's the deal with the World Health Organization? Oh. Quickly, I don't know. Could you answer that? I don't know what that is. I yeah. Mean, I know okay. Is, but I don't know why what happened to Taiwan. Okay, so there was a Taiwanese reporter talking to the one of the World Health Organization top officials, and the reporter asked, "Oh, like, will you reconsider or will you consider admission into a, a Taiwan admission into the World Health Organization?" And the dude hung up. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, uh, there was a dialogue oh. you want to answer, Andrew? Yeah, uh, I just wanted to like clarify what I was talking about, uh, and I, I appreciate your knowledge on the subject, uh, Senpai Chao. I was like, when I when I made my claim, I, I made it more as like a, a should claim. Uh, I th I think in in terms of like adding or addressing legitimacy in terms of like statehood or or even like making it a separate country or whatever. Uh, I'm very un like uh, on like a just in like a how do we envision these things happening in the future and even within the U.S. I I think there should be like some international body, the U.N. or whatever that sort of addresses these questions rather than like the U.S. acting like unilaterally. Yes. Now, thank you. In terms of like what is realistic and what is not, uh, I mean, there's a lot of uh, as you probably are aware of, like a lot of dangers of, of like both sides of this argument, like in, in just like a real political sense, right? I mean, like any any action by the U.S. to support Taiwan could break into like some kind of war. Um, and the question It'd is, like, terrible. what would that war look like and like what would be the consequences of, of those kinds of things? Um, so I definitely think there's like a lot of real political not issues in, my hair. in terms Damn. of like addressing any questions with with China in the center right now. And and honestly, there's there doesn't seem to be any good answers. Yeah, yeah. I'll be a little more blunt and then I'll let you respond. Um, if, <laughs> if it could potentially lead to war between the US and China, I support the people of Taiwan, but in, in I would give no, oh wow, my computer just did some wild stuff. Uh, I would give no energy to fighting China in a war. I don't think that's productive to our country. I think we have Lots of issues stateside that need to be addressed more so than Taiwan. And I know that that's a uh, selfish claim living in America. But um, yeah, if it could possibly lead to a war between yeah, America and China, I'm not interested in it whatsoever. Uh, counterpoints? Yeah. So the this is this is one of the things that I actually get a little a little frustrated with lefties on, and I would love to get a response from Team Mama kind of at the end of this. Um, there's, you know, ba basically like one of the studies that I, or one of the things that I feel like I've studied most of my life is, is, is power and violence. That's one of the things that I fought, like have followed the most closely. It's one of the things that I've studied the most. And basically what, what happens is there, there's, you know, vacuums. So the reason why we have a, a tripolar or quadpolar or quinpolar world is because there's powers that are aligned within the world that basically say, hey, here's an artificial border that we have created. And if you cross it, I'm a fuck you up. You know, now whether or not I fuck you up sure. economically or fuck you up militarily, it, it's kind of an open question, but that's kind of how international relations are solved at this point is basically there's power structures and there's other power structures that lean into each other. Some of those power structures collapse and then the other one consumes the other one and back and forth. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, anarchists and, you know, Demon Mama, I hope you can answer some of this stuff. Um, you know, they, they believe that this is just a fucked up way to live, that we shouldn't have these constant power 
structures that are leaning into each other. Mm -hmm. And at any point of collapse, there's death and misery and murder and war and all that kind of facts, bullshit. Literal but facts, what, yes. what I'm interested in is kind of like, it's almost like the paradox of tolerance, but it's like the paradox of power is just because you're willing to voluntarily cede your power. And just because you think you can like culturally, you know, con convince enough people to basically give up into like this an anarchist state, because I think anarchy literally means without rulers, right? Okay, I said anarchist state. I'm sorry, demon mama, please educate me. <laughs> so the, but but the, the point being that just because you're willing to cede power doesn't mean that other people are. So for instance, there are theocracies that believe that they're going to conquer the world. There are authoritarian regimes that believe that uh, communism or socialism, basically authoritarian communism, is the way to go. There are fascist uh, organizations, or there were fascist organizations 50 to 70 years ago that believed in a single ethnicity ruling the world. So how do you combat these people uh, if they don't sign on for anarchism? And I kind of direct that to Dima Mama. Yeah, um, I mean, that's an en absolutely enormous question. Um, but, but yeah, um, uh, like, I don't think there's one single answer to that question. But the way that I look at it is that um, when you have a world of uh, nation states, um, you are inevitably going to have a world uh, of inequality. And while a certain amount of that is, is currently absolutely, there's nothing we can change about that today. There's no way that we can snap our fingers and tomorrow have the world be a better place. However, what we should do, in my opinion, is we should aim towards a world in which uh, people are on as equal footing as possible. And that's something very far from where we're at right now. But we can take steps as existing states towards that. Um, one of the things that, uh, I mean, this came up, we had a huge discussion about nukes. I had like four discussions about this, but I discussed my beliefs on that. Um, and I believe that we should push uh, leaders in the world towards recognizing that as long as we refuse to um, ever give up, any, any sort of power, as long as we clutch to every single piece of power that we can possibly get out of fear of other human beings, we are inevitably building ourselves um, a, a prison. We're building ourselves a prison of war. And um, yeah, while uh, I think that this is certainly a long-term thing, I push for a world that challenges the idea that we need to have um, in like, like these, these sort of extremely hierarchical nation states that wield a ton of power and are able to exert imperial influence over their neighbors and we should instead work to empower communities so that they can self-determine themselves in one way or another now of course that's very very complicated and a long way away but that's something we should be working towards as a world and i do think that in this case um an international solution or an internationalist solution is one of the best ones, which is why I tend to agree with Dario on this. I think one of the best ways that we defuse a situation where there's two polar powers struggling and their individual opposing or seemingly opposing ideologies are at, at opposition with one another, backed up by nukes, one of the best way, we, ways we can do that is say, hey, let's all come together and assign ourselves a strong international force that can determine, hey, wait a minute, this is unjust, and these people have a right to live freely without the fear of being crushed or taken over um, by some sort of imperial entity. I have, uh, I have two smart ass rebuttals before I see the floor. Okay. <laughs> so I'll be very quick. So uh, one, what, what happens if we, uh, you know, basically uh, fulfill your, your hope for an anarchist world in which all people live uh, free from uh, threats and we don't have nations anymore and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then we get invaded by fascist aliens who have like literally extraterrestrials who have uh, like a, 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 a xenocidal uh, agenda to slaughter all of humanity and you have unilaterally disarmed humanity. Sick. Number I one. actually have a solution for that. I can answer that right away. Uh, there's uh, hold this... on. Hold on. Number two. Oh, okay, Smart okay. ass question. I'll, sick, I'll completely sick. let go to everybody else. Uh, second question. Uh, what, what does an anarchist United Nations look like? <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's no, now that one is going to be out of my particular area of expertise. And if you want to call that a gotcha, you got me. That is very hard to organize. Yes, no. However, I'm just fucking around. Yeah, I'm fucking around. Can I answer the first one? Because I can answer it real quick. Okay. Yeah, right, I, 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 I had this one come up like a hundred times last week because like four people came after me over nukes. Um, but you can create. Uh, presumably, we have 
you know, if we're able to get to this point, we would be able to put together a technology that allows for uh, us to have essentially a nuclear vault, a break open in case, Zenos you know, genocidal aliens invade, uh, which all of the leaders of the of the world can, all the people, the representatives of the people or whatever can put their thumbs on a thing and then it will unlock and allow us to shoot it at the aliens. Um, I think that that's a simple solution that like, it, you will never get everyone to agree to unlock it unless there's a genocidal threat coming towards us. And there you go. Then you get a vast majority of the world you can unlock the nukes and fire them at the aliens there you go gotcha. beautifully said all right um except that you need to maintenance those things all right uh dario <laughs> yeah sure uh, i wanted to address some of the questions uh that you had kind of points in terms of like anarchism or even like libertarianism like whatever you want to call it right mm -hmm. i i think mm -hmm. in terms of like um <clears throat> how does one achieve like world peace or like how does one like um basically communicate differences between like different groups of people or states or whatever i, I think Somebody's it sort of builds on real the, loud. uh econ like e basic economic principles or like basic uh, like real political solutions that currently exist in the world right like think about what what you will about the current like day society we live in obviously this isn't the case for everyone but to some degree we live in like unprecedented peace times um, and like, again, obviously this is the case yeah. for everywhere in the world that there is obviously very fucked up wars and things happening, but overall, in terms of like the world, uh, it, it is True. relatively, that peaceful. won't be too and hard intensive purposes why is because there is an economic interdependence, uh, like between the different states or the different groups of people that says rather than mutually assured destruction, we want mutually beneficial relationships. And I think what I knew what I would agree with Jario on this. anarchists propose is just like an extension of that principle and saying, well, if, if this can hold true for like the US and China right now in terms of like why we're not at war, because there is uh, mutual beneficial yep. things to gain for like the yep. populations, then why true. can't we break this down into like more decentralized groups of people and saying, well, if all people just have enough to gain from like self governance and like mutually um, uh, mutual beneficially uh, relationships, then why can't we try and structure the world in that way? Uh, I think, like in some ways, it's it's very complicated, but I think the principles are very simple, and the principles they are, are very simple in, at, like, the, at the basis. current like economic or like world political understandings and in terms of like how the un this is why or like how you know i enjoy talking with dario work. even if sometimes he annoys uh, me. generally like anarchism or like in like whatever form is like trying to get rid of like the concept of states but not necessarily the concept of like governance or like uh creating like exactly institutions that help uh either like um, i'm i'm pogging or help like bring solutions I'm uh, like right global now. levels so i i think it like it, it might be greatly I'm, I'm expanded pogging. and there might be like different levels of people bringing different informations up the chain uh to some degree um but it could definitely like still exist um uh, it, it could be i'm fucking pogging degree, right but now it could definitely exist I think. shadows Okay, so I mean, I haven't gotten to speak yet, and I think this is very interesting. Oh, but big obviously, discussion. the Tofu ideas Goblin, of welcome. anarchists and more libertarians in this area uh, tend to in so in foreign policy, there are two main schools: there's liberalism and realism, hey, happy, and a lot of you. anarchists and libertarians uh, fall into the more liberalism category. So, believe it or not, actually, some leftists you believe in some form of liberalism as much as you know that might scare you, depending on what kind of leftist you are, but. Uh, to get to the realism point, because I'm very much a realist when it comes to foreign policy, um, I wanted to clarify my point when I said um, I agree with Dylan Burns. I'm going to drop a link to this video, which is awesome, about the South China Sea. And there are issues with uh, freedom of navigation and freedom of waters. And they already Dylan have Burns you know, is a poggy. disputed claims That's a poggy for, um, me. for um, maritime territory with other nations like the Philippines, um, uh, Vietnam. Uh, Japan, uh, we have a lot of issues there in the South trying to see them creating artificial islands so they can extend their 100 nautical miles uh, border, which is just fucking insane. Um, and so we already have these problems. And I agree with Dylan with the point that, you know, if they do tr ever try and invade Taiwan, um, you know, yeah, that's about you got to you just really got to flex those muscles. You got to flex those muscles and you got to start, you know, 
uh, swinging your arms around a little bit. Obviously, uh, to use the analogy of your right to swing your fist um, stops at my nose, I would hope that the U.S. isn't swinging their, our fist anywhere near China's nose. But just to let them know that, hey, do not even think about fucking with Taiwan. Because I swear to God, if you do, you will regret it. You will regret ever getting near this. Um, and to also um, bring up what I was saying earlier, how, you know, as someone being a secular Zionist, I think I bring an interesting perspective. Believe it or not, being a Zionist just means that you are in favor of Jews getting the rights to self-determination and to get their own state. So in the same way that you can be a Zionist and actually be in favor of a two-state solution, um, because it's uh, I think it is um, possible That's why. To, That's why everyone um, looks so tired. You know, not be pro-U.S. Everyone's pro tired these days, especially content get a creators. Solution on Taiwan. It's true. I think you can get a solution. We've all been on grinding Taiwan really hard. That the news is tough these days. Either power. Everyone here is a politics streamer. Okay. So um, yeah. I'm I'm gonna be a little nerdy and just jump back on the anarchist thing real quick. Um, so what is the difference between governance and government, and then how so do you enforce? I, I don't want I don't want to I don't want to do this thing that I mean, I we can talk about this that. if you want, but I don't think this is a good. Oh, place. Like I've got a, all right. I want to get all back. Right, to we'll that. do it later. I'd love okay, to. We'll do it. Talk on if that's all right. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. What? Yeah. So what I said to begin what? with was either a. Right, the United States could recognize Taiwan as the only legitimate government of China, right? Which would be, uh, it's what any governments around the world, uh, whenever they're trying to get recognized, no. as what they do to be established as legitimate powers. They get other, you know, governments to recognize their authority, right? So you could either go that route, or we could go the route of seeing about include Taiwan as a state, right? Now they're. I would uh, actually argue that if we streamlined our federal God, government he's so dumb. for the things that Why is it CTV be so dumb? versus the things that he, it oh, should be doing. Oh, he has sunglasses on because he's blitzed out of American his mind. Our American system could That's actually why. be the system that could... Through, and when you get you know, high, your eyes get sensitive to the light. It, right, so he puts them on inside so his, uh, his screen doesn't hurt his eyes. include the world in the state process, and then eventually it would end up being like the United <sighs> States of the world, Right. I mean, we've got the military. Isn't this a one world government? What the fuck? <laughs> I'm just saying that it, with all of the forms of government that are out there, if we set up our, if we streamlined our federal government to where it didn't encroach on other nations and what they should be allowed to do inside their borders, which is essentially be states, right? Then they enter into this cooperatively. And then we're all working towards the same goals and considering, at least from the banking That's point, okay, Sudafon. Uh, You're not on a panel. It establishes the world reserve currency, right? So perhaps maybe in order for the American people to sell themselves the very best way possible so that maybe we can get a star in this corner and then have it start going up, right? Until we got all the rest of the nations in the world on our flag. And that's the World War flag, right? That'd be crazy. This just seems like American I mean, Empire. America! <laughs> fuck yeah! That's basically what you just did. It was American imperialism dressed up with a lot of sugar, and I could still taste the imperialism. In reality, Right, but I mean, CTV, I, I, I don't necessarily... I, are oh. the people that want to bring human rights to people right? wait, i've got a better one why don't we just do wait if in this mind why don't we just let why don't we just let china do it why not yeah. why, 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 okay, why we got a side on I, our side i might actually oh I, can i just quickly speak to what ctv said uh just like one second i i, I think why we're doing good I, psyche I, down. maybe i understand where you're getting at and i i, I Maybe we can agree. I say very scarily, but but I would just say if if you think the U.S. has the ability to do these things, they should probably first do them within their own borders. Like let let's see the U.S. actually become like a little, a little late, but like it's always it's never really too late. Society and then and then That's see like how that turns out. To streamline the federal government, right? We the American people need to actually set that example and streamline what our federal government should be allowed to do. Sure, sure. <laughs> Right? Sure. And if you if you if if you cool, never if you never promote inside that that federal system, so then I can get some of those other benefits because I can already see how it's working between these states, right? So I would just be joining that. So why not? Wait, wouldn't well, it just yeah, be sure. wait, wait, Wouldn't it be a shorter solution to just like not to like cut out the middleman of the American Empire and just say, hey, states and people should be able to self determine, and you don't have to like join into the like. <laughs> The voting American flag, or else. So well, I mean, uh, they would be voting to okay. join. 
Okay, okay, so we're not gonna get lost in this. Holy crap. Um, <laughs> so uh, we're gonna go to Senpai, uh, who's been waiting uh, kindly, but I will I will say this, um, uh, is that I would love the day where an American flag is waving over Amsterdam, um, and uh, I get these guys, they've been they've been uh, uh, having too much fun up there. I would feel we need to bring them into the uh, war on drugs, that'd be great. I'm sure they'd be excited for that. Um, so yes, uh, uh American flag over Amsterdam. All right, go ahead, um, Senpai. Yeah, so the, the flaw of CTV's I don't think he knows what he's talking uh, about. Dream, which I have to say that it's probably a meme. I don't know if he's being serious or not. Uh, is hey, actually you know really that. pointed out in what Demon Mama question was. Okay, then okay. why not have China do the same thing? This is the issue uh, when it comes with relations between states. Oh, I did. Is that they have very little trust with each other. And, There's a lot of ways to uh, do this that. Is battle of Kine. What is alluded to, what Shadow talk talked about when he mentioned to. something like realism. This is the problem of anarchy within the international system. But what Dario then brings up would be international liberalism. Is that yeah, we have put institutions, this on the question, the question third parties document. such as the United Nations I always do or some Q&As other after, intergovernmental so we'll organization after. that has no allegiance towards any state, be that middleman. So yep. like any sort of s- sovereign unilateral action being done by one state currently is it's extremely frowned upon. Remember, we always do Q&A and other fun stuff after. So stick at around. Least, like what is currently the system now. The whole world knows that some some really fishy corrupt stuff could be done with that when you only have one country spearheading something as far as, say, an intervention or uh, anything unilateral. It, we're always, we're right now, uh, having this norm of multilateral cooperation when it does come to intervention, when it does come to sending, say, like aid or uh, even things like development, et cetera, et cetera, in order to counter this problem. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> adopting but, but the UN, China, the UN adopting not... Taiwan what? as a, as like a United States. Like I thought when in oh. your opening you said like state as in like a state within the United Nations. No, you were talking about like. 50 plus one Taiwan, 51 United States. That's so. That's so what happens when the UN gets it wrong, right? Like the UN doesn't recognize Taiwan. We, we because they don't. Well, they're they are an observer state in the same way that Palestine is actually. To clarify, we'll start with uh, Canada. Canada will be the first place we absorb. Absolutely. Um, then we're going to the Dutch. Absolutely. Okay. Um, but I oh. think. Um, your next route i swear to god i think seriously so, no no, 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 no um, because uh, i think we've we've gone far away from the question and absorb me daddy um so what would happen what would happen if guam if if american samoa if puerto rico right if china was saying oh well Puerto Rico no longer wants to be part of the states, right? So we're going to sail a, a Chinese warship around uh, Puerto Rico, just so you know Good. Um, that you don't control these territory, uh, ter- territories in um, the United States. Like, what would happen then? So I, I hear a lot of people who have been saying that, okay, sure, um, we should be supporting Taiwan. But what well, well, the opposite happened? Um, uh, last week's name gave, gave an answer to his question, saying that, well, if Puerto Rico was... Um, uh, was fighting for freedom and had a more just system than the United States, then uh, that's fine. That's just the body lines. If you had a just system, okay, sure. Um, yeah, but, but to be uh, clear, Chi- like China would have to be defending them against the United States, not fair. trying to annex them. Not trying. To I don't think so. Them. Yeah, I'm not saying they're trying to even annex. You're saying you put on the monitor. But, uh, feature we are on his, defending uh, them from thing. the United States that you no longer have control. You don't have to wave your hand in front of the camera. Um, I, I, I see it. Uh, counterpoints. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we we do do this shit we do this shit all the time russia flies over alaska russia like you know basically tests our borders um i'm pretty sure you know the whole cuban missile crisis was basically about the soviet union testing our borders um you know we do this with europe with nato um we do this in in south korea north korea and i know that it's different because it's like territorial and it's national but we have international commitments that basically borderline like uh mouse traps for war um so for instance ju- just to use an example we have a whole bunch of uh forces in in south korea basically defending against north korea um and russia and china and when we fly across a demilitarized zone, so do they. They they basically like escort our fighters and our helicopters and all that kind of stuff. We're always like ten seconds away from war, and our our boundaries are tested. Now I know the the there's a in ideological difference between you know like 
NATO and Europe and, uh, you know, South Korea and, you know, Alaska. Um, but I would reiterate that Russia has tested us in the past. The Soviet Union did test us with Cuba. Um, and we responded the same way that they respond, where we, we activate military forces, we conduct military training, we basically show that we're capable of, uh, you know, deterring the threat. Um, and it's the same thing that they do in response to us. So th this isn't anything um, different or new. And the whole reason why we do this is because of World War II, where basically we, we realize that being isolationist, that staying out of geopolitics, that staying out of the, the world wars, all it does is guarantee that eventually we're going to be involved in another world war. So why not prevent it? Okay. Um... Um, yeah, I don't so, know. Uh, anyone else? Oh, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I've talked about that. I, I do. Okay, shadows. Um, so I, I mean, I want to respond a little bit to what you were saying about like the Cuban Missile Crisis and whatnot. And I think it does go to your point that we are like ten, in, uh, you know, seconds away from war constantly. Is that you know they moved their missiles there because we had missiles, we had ICBMs over in Turkey, and that's why we were able to end it so quickly. Because, you know, we went on the uh, phone call with um, the leader of the USSR and he's like, hey, you know, if you just pull your missiles out of Turkey, like, we'll get rid of all the ones in Cuba, right? And then Kennedy was like, really? Awesome. We'll just get rid of those and then it'll be hunky-dory. And then this is the issue we have is, like, this is just, like, a foreign policy, like, way of, like, edging, basically. We're always, we're always like, super close to, like, getting war in with another power. And, you know, it is really dangerous. And obviously, you know, we do do joint um, military tests with countries like South Korea and Japan because of things like North Korea and also uh, because of China. I mean, China is like our biggest um, enemy slash competitor um, in certain areas. Um, so it is obviously, you know, really important, you know, that, that we keep these relations um, and whatnot. But also, I just want to say, Senpai Chow, you you really know your shit on this area, and I think Dylan would love to talk to you if you haven't yet. Never been invited. Oh, we gotta change that. Change you know, Senpai is amazing. Senpai Chow, um, I'm a fan of his. Um, and yes, uh, D uh, Dylan Burns. Uh, I, maybe I should yell at him about that. Um, ah, yeah, the, uh, the, the great the filter theory. Um, okay. I will so, join uh, you in that effort. <clears throat> Prime, to what you're saying, though, right? If the United States doesn't do one of those two things, then it's going to end up uh, basically trying to Here we go. maybe do some type of conflict resolution like Vietnam. And we don't want to be in a situation like that, right? We need to make a real stance, either A, this is that we're going to recognize this is the government of Taiwan, or B, uh, we need to try and, and see about maybe including them into, into our fold, right? I disagree. Uh, because right now, and and the people on this island need to make this choice because Taiwan what they island. believe is that they are the legitimate government of China, right? Isn't Taiwan on a peninsula? Um, Full stop. Full right. stop. Is that not what they believe? Um, no, 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 no. Because when it they is not. when they left when they left the mainland China and they settled on Taiwan, right? They recognize themselves as the the legitimate government of Isn't China, an and that's what they believe, oh. and that's I thought where it was the like controversy really comes close. in between Taiwan I thought it was and like Beijing. Is that not could correct? be wrong? Okay, uh, it, it is. It was correct back then, but not oh, okay. now. Things have changed. I thought it was so connected. Right. I would like Since to go on a monologue. monologue. I would like to go on a monologue for some history. Since <laughs> in your opening, you have said you like it so much, so I think you would appreciate this. So like being everything he's been right saying now, so far, son, is not exactly not, what you want to do. I, I don't think I'm being. Con not, I don't you're think, being. I don't think I'm being again. I don't think I'm being condescending. But if if I was, I apologize. Like if, oh, if I hurt your feelings or something. Joke. I okay. <laughs> so, all right, you've got Yikers. things right when it comes to the. Uh, there was the civil war. Yikers. The nationalists fled to. Taiwan and ever since then things have been really shaky and since then it's been Taiwan Taipei been saying we're the real China oh yeah I guess and it then, is oh it is really uh, fucking close Beijing China is saying no we're the real China and then oh it's really close to Guangzhou international organizations United Nations oh, okay America de-recognizing I Taiwan see why I thought it was a China peninsula. over Beijing China and things like that then in 1992 there was a consensus the CCP and the KMT the Kuomintang which were the nationalists? See, I thought of, it was attached here. That fled to Taiwan from mainland China. 
Oh. This is the party of Chiang Kai Shek. They you met together and they're like, okay, we're going to agree. There's one China. Maybe I was thinking, maybe I was getting mixed and then, up with Hong Boom, Kong. that's it. The difference is that where where is the capital of China? Is it You're Taipei so or is it Beijing? So they both said that Taiwan and China are one, we're unified, but where's the actual leadership? Could Who be. actually it's a conspiracy. rules? Conspiracy. That, that's Can't that's be that I was where wrong. the agreement became the disagreement. But then all of a sudden, there was a change in party. No longer was the Kuomintang the ruling party of Taiwan. It turned into the the Progressive Democratic Party, or no, the Progressive Liberal, Progressive Liberal Party, whatever it is, the party of Tsai. And since then, Tsai has been saying, yeah, it may have been the 1992 consensus. That's BS. Actually, most people I in might have Taiwan been thinking right of now Island. don't have this. I mean, uh, Alden's Peninsula, uh, Taiwanese nationalism that is about thinking of. The old days where they ruled mainland China. Right now, most of the Taiwanese population w have this new Taiwanese Yay, nationalism. Welcome that Tofu is all Goblin. about Happy independence. That we're going to be growing Sight chat without, is the best. The, without like taking over China. That we're happy. We're happy with our economic growth, our prosperity, our happiness, our new identity, and things like Yay. that. So yeah, Taiwan doesn't want to reunify with China. At <laughs> least according to... The elections <laughs> with Sai and their hey, her party the continuously winning Lilith, elections. Lilith, consider uh, coming to the site. Okay, so uh, then right the here. Other counter to that is then you can get up on the screen too. Once Love to have you. Taiwan is a part of their. Oh really? Right? Did he? So Damn. I think there was a little where the communication was in the years, right? But I, I understood all that. So going forward from there, I would say nice that simps. If we don't, and this would be, you know, like a minute ago, either we're going to be in a police action trying to help Taiwan maintain if China decides to commit, right? So it's kind of one of those where, as the international community is looking at this, the rest of us are not really all that happy with sight, a lot chat, of the things sight, that chat, the, sight, the, chat. the Chinese Communist Party in Beijing has been doing, right? So what would be a way for us as the rest of the people around them to go, well, how can we get rid of these guys with the least amount of bloodshed and give them a moment of pause? And I kind of feel like that uh, recognizing them as the legitimate government of Taiwan might be a way to do that without Wait, but the, you know, going, having all of this other stuff build up and escalate. Because we already see what China's That's a bad in thing, China goofy sea, for Jesus. And what they're you know, building those islands and looking to expand their power and influence. I don't know. Okay. So uh, we'll go into our um, uh, final statements on this topic and move on to our final topic. Um, so uh, we'll start with our counter. With me? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So um, again, I just want to reiterate, uh, fuck the CCP. Um, fuck authoritarian communism in general. Um, I hope Taiwan stays independent forever. I don't want to Yay, annex them to uh, the because site. I think that would be an unnecessary escalation of tension. Um, but I do think that uh, maintaining relations, making sure that they have the military ability to defend Happy themselves to you, and make themselves an undigestible piece of territory to eat for mainland China um, is a good idea, uh, all things considering. And then I do think that uh, other yeah, foreign nations do aggress on our territory bullies. sometimes in ways that are comparable, um, whether that was 50 years ago or five years ago. Um, it does happen. Um, end of rant. Okay. Uh, Dario. Uh, sure. Yeah, I, I guess I will just reiterate my my opening statement just a little bit. Um, uh, I think while we all agree, or like most of us agree on like the issues, um, I, I think we need to come to terms with like what possible solutions could look like. I think uh, international cooperation of some kind uh, is inevitable, um, and even if it if it wasn't, it should be preferred. Uh, because I don't think the U.S. unilaterally can do much, and I think and most good solutions start and end with like yeah, international I think cooperation can around yeah. sanctions or like economic measures or trade agreements or stuff like that. But, but in terms there's of, like, no bold move China that can make that board that can guarantee that that could be without within starting its own a war. Interest while also being like within the interest of like the different nations that exist. Yes, he does a ton of literally uh, around China. Um, all right. All right. Uh, Shadows? Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think I made myself pretty clear at the beginning. And when I clarified my statement that, you know, 
China should not think of fucking with Taiwan. If they do, we will make them pay. You know, I've been, I think I made myself very clear about that. I think Dario makes a good point about, you know, when it involves international corporations and trade agreements, it 100% invo- involves that. Um, I think that, you know, we, there's, I think it's de- possible, you know, probably within the next decade or two to make sure that, you um, you know, watch this. Uh, we can respect the sovereignty of Taiwan, and so can China, and that doesn't involve any sanctions or blockades. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I see my time. Okay, uh, Gambit. Yeah. So yeah, my opinion hasn't been swayed. It's pretty much the same. I deeply sympathize with the Taiwanese. I have friends that I play Street Fighter with. Um, I deeply sympathize with it. Um, however, if it was ultimately to come down to a situation where there's like all out war with China, um, I don't think I vote for that type of war. That's it. Okay. Um, CTV. Well, <clears throat> all the issues around the world always usually end up involving the United States because we have the largest military in the world, right? Uh, and as counterpoints mentioned earlier, whenever there's a buildup of power and a certain amount of violence with that, right, whenever that starts dissipating, um, something usually ends up, comes up trying to replace it, right? So the only way I see as a world, especially when it comes to dealing with issues potentially here between Taiwan and China, is that we need to get to a point to where we start including the rest of That's the world, true, Eurus. right, in some kind of way, and I think statehood might be the best way to go about that as far as expanding our, what we consider here in the United States as I human can, rights, this. and this is so stupid. allowing the peoples of the lands that they occupy to be able to make the, you know, the same decisions that they should be able to make uh, with, you know, only being underneath the umbrella of the federal government, and that's why the American people need to figure out our federal government, and instead of trying to have so many problems solved lash. by it just trying to make it more of an institution for Puerto Rico you know, about. mitigating trade and and those types of things what it was meant to do oh, he's in just the original inception he's of just, it he's just right? drunk or something uh, without that type of solution all we are going to end up in uh, if China decided to continue its current courses of action would be <laughs> some type of America. Vietnam type conflict right and I don't want I don't think that is useful or helpful for for the world and um, I would do so everything that. possible to, to stop that. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, it's a metaphor. That's really kind of you. Uh, donating $49 to our channel. Thank you so much. Wow. Uh, that is a generous dono. From our October goal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for that. That support helps me um, grow, helps me keep this channel sustainable. Damn. Thank you. Thank you, uh, metaphor. Lucky Prime. For being so kind. Um, last <laughs> username. Um. So as an anarchist, I, I never say things like, I think this country should go to war with this other country or go fight this battle. Um, instead, I say things like, you know, in a, in a battle between Taiwan and China, the right side of that battle is Taiwan. And anyone who's fighting on the right side of that battle has my full support and admiration um, for what they're choosing to do. Um, but of course, what we really, what we would really prefer is for that battle to not happen. Um, for All right, fair. He kind of saved it a little bit. Leave Taiwan. Yeah, he's an alone, ANCAP, which it seems like they're mostly anarchist. doing now. Um, and ANCAP's it seems like not fucking anarchist. The way it's actually the hilarious. approach that other nations have taken in supporting that is basically not trying to not piss China off. Like, and you, you know, America has like military bases in Taiwan. They're obviously very protective of it, and yet they won't recognize it as uh, uh, you know a sovereign nation probably because what we that achieve other than just pissing china off and provoking them uh into into a conflict whereas if they just let china go you know like 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 blow hot air about how how uh you know taiwan how they control taiwan but not actually do anything about it like sure fine go ahead like like say anything you want as long as you keep your hands off it um and you know making taiwan uh, an american state would probably uh, we probably not uh, I agree. further that that objective. Right? Probably you nice. want to just like let you know don't 
say anything to piss China it off. It would just but be also make it clear that it wouldn't even dissolve. They actually it would just be act it. on you know if they actually lay a finger on Taiwan, then then they're going to regret. Yeah, it. they're just regular right libertarian. Um, libertarian. And so yeah, that, I think that's that's probably the strategy that seems to be working so far. Who's the number one? Or the future, and I hope that's what I want to know. Who's lasts. the number one cat? I think what what really threatens China uh, about Taiwan is that it's it's very very similar to them, and yet much more prosperous. They're going to succeed where China doesn't. And that's uh, authoritarian states really don't like that because it really undermines all, um, all states are authoritarian. in the eyes of their people, right? All Taiwan states to China is like West Germany, the East Germany, right? So that's, I think that's why China has a big problem with Taiwan. All right. Thank you. Um, Demon Mama. Yeah. Um, there are these sort of questions are unbelievably complicated. Um, but I think that at the end of the day, um, what I would hope for is I would hope for a world in which we recognize that the uh, mid 19 like hundreds saber rattling and and uh, and politicking is simply not effective, that we live in a global world. We are all in connect, uh, interconnected. And that's even more so true now that the Internet exists. Um, and people are what matter, not necessarily, um, you know, the flag of the state or the nation. Um, and I think we should that in putting people first, we should recognize that um, that ceding undue power to any individual state can put the entire world at risk. If you have an empire on your planet um, that is pursuing expansion, that is pursuing war, that is going to stand in opposition to the well-being of everyone else, including its own people. So I would urge people to recognize that we must move away from this type of model of world, and we must recognize that only by reducing the sort of monopolies of power in the world will we ever make any progress. Okay. Um... And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, um, uh, Luna Thick, um, for donating forty dollars to the channel. So uh, helping us hit our goal. Thank you so much. That's really, really unbelievably Aww, kind of you. Tofu Goblin, good um, luck. Uh, they say arigato uh, prime. They'll help your teeth in the long I am um, for that uh, type of language. And then um, later on in the uh, chat, he says Ooh, Dori Toshimasa. Uh, thank you so much. That was really, 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 really kind of you. Thank you. Um, Thanks so much. That really helps um, this channel grow. All right, What's Senpai Chow. One of the worst things to that we can do when talking about issues relating to Yay. China Welcome and just generally the region of you. East Asia is projecting our own theories, our own foreign policy against them. Mm, because can, we can talk about that after Goofy for Jesus. The history between us is incredibly different as well as how they would be acting. I'll so, save that for us to talk afterwards. With that in mind, all of the topics that like, or all the things that we've been talking about for this topic in particular is all predicated on, okay, China invading Taiwan. But within my own opening statement, I believe that is incredibly unlikely to occur. It hasn't happened. It should have easily... if. If China really did, were interested in doing so, their opportunity would have been better right off the bat when the Guomindang, when the nationalists Nira were escaping really and like already Nira weak, Tamada. but it didn't and hasn't happened yet. And I don't think it's going to be happening anytime in the future for reasons such as the economic interdependence that's growing between China and Taiwan, as well as the security that is provided by the United States to Taiwan. And Taiwan doesn't need to be recognized as a state by the United States. It doesn't need to be recognized as a state within the United Nations. So long as it's independent, so long as it has its own government, so long as it has its own growing economy, its own prosperous population, yeah, it's winning. very informed on this point. And it's interesting the move as hell. that I think a lot of people like don't really recognize is that it's up to China to make changes, to, to come to the table with compromise if it ever wants to reunify. Yes. No, they don't Taiwan. realize that, Simp. They don't realize that. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, all right. So uh, we'll move on to our final topic. Uh, and once again, thank you to all who've been supporting this channel. Um, 
by to you. I can't keep uh, this content coming. You keep this channel alive. So thank you, every single one of you, for being so kind as to support us. All right. Um, that cool. So uh, we'll move on to our, our last topic. But uh, I'll give you guys a choice as to uh, which one you want to do. Um, this always seems to be nerve-wracking for all of you, but <laughs> I don't think it should be. Um, all right, so uh, I will quickly read both of the last two, um, and then you guys decide which one you want. Um, uh, topic three, the CDC has a difficult time fulfilling its mandate during uh, this pandemic. While trying to give the public the best medical information the available, one. it has been undermined by a president who refuses to take this crisis seriously. The Trump administration has gone as far as weakening CDC directives or countermanding them altogether. Should the CDC or any governmental agency slash employee actively and publicly oppose the president in the name of public safety? That's topic three. Bonus topic. Uh, Trump has attempted to make the Hunter Biden corruption scandal a major issue in the presidential election. But should citizens uh, be uh, concerned about the uh, scandals surrounding a politician's family or should they be concerned with the politician's policies and record? All right. Um, so that's topic three in the bonus topic. Tell me which one you want. Dario, which one you want? Topic three of the bonus one. Um, the second one. Okay, bonus topic, got it. Um, counterpoints, which one do you want? Uh, topic three or the bonus topic? Bonus. Bonus? bonus? Okay. All right, all right, well, all right, we know, all right, we have two for the bonus, gotcha. Shadows. Um, honestly, I'm very ambivalent. I can't choose, but just to be a contrarian, I'll choose topic three. Okay, <laughs> two for two, got it, all right. Uh, thank you for the follow. Unsun. Uh thanks. Thanks so much. All right. Um next uh C T V. Um you know, I watched this whole fucking documentary for topic three, so don't think you're gonna get out of it that easy. Okay, topic three. <laughs> uh, uh, <pull laughs> ahead. Um Senpai Chow. Damn. Topic three. Four for topic three. Um three. All right, all right, I right. uh last year's name, everyone gets a vote, no matter how useless. <laughs> last year's name, what do you think? Uh, I'd rather do the CDC thing. Okay. All right. So uh, overwhelming support. Uh, Dialogue right. trees begin. That's that's democracy for you. Um, it democracy leaves you at work. With a bitter taste in your mouth. Um, okay. <laughs> this is why this is why we don't want democracy. Yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> Bad idea. Um, so, uh, topic three. I'll read uh, once again for the audience. The CDC has has had a difficult time fulfilling its mandate during this pandemic. Uh, while trying to give the public the best medical information available, it has been undermined by a president who refuses to take the crisis seriously. The Trump administration has gone as far as weakening CDC directives or countermanding them altogether. Should the CDC or any government agency slash employee actively and publicly oppose the president in the name of public safety? I'm going to uh, put yes. this uh, in chat, too, so you can read it. All right. Um, we'll start with, um, uh, I guess, uh, uh, counterpoints. Are you there? Yeah, I'm still here, but I'm uh, just having a little bit of back pain. I'm an old man. It's yeah. late for me. It's past my it's past my bedtime. <laughs> okay. Well, then I'll, I'll hold off maybe. No, no, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm ready to go. I can. Okay. Counterpoint. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so basically, in reference to this, we live in a free society. Government officials, especially when they think something's going wrong, when the public health and safety is at risk, when there's lives at risk, they should definitely uh, countermand the authority of the president. That's why we don't live in authoritarian dictatorship. So uh, fuck Trump on this one. Go bitter employees. Okay, Dario. Yeah, I mean, if you're, <laughs> this is another one where I think most reasonable people should agree. Like, if you're a freedom-loving American, if you're like even somebody who just hates Trump for whatever reason, like everybody should be able to come together. That me too. If Sam, you I hope are that's somebody the case. in a science field working on any kind be. of government, even if he you loses. should always have the ability to go around like what the public officials tells you like what the state tells you and you should be able to say like yeah, what yeah. you think is the best Absolutely, Gina. option uh, like especially when dealing with public health i think i, I would Freedom be surprised if, if, I, if we found any disagreement on uh, at least the the merits and then we can i guess talk about the details okay um who's next uh that would be uh, G or, or shadows please um, me? Oh, okay. Um, so when it comes to this, like, you know, in the question you mentioned the president, you also mentioned the Trump administration. And I think it is very important that we um, separate the two. I think, of course, obviously any scientist um, or anyone who really believes in the Terrible. science should be going against Trump because this man talks out of his ass. 90% of this time uh, he opens his mouth. You're actually not hearing his mouth. You're hearing him talking out of his ass because he's a fucking dumbass. Um, 
and and you know he just directly goes against cat even tax. the most basic cat science tax. like cat we tax. all have seen the gif where it's like it affects virtually nobody it affects virtually nobody and then it's like two hundred ten thousand people have died of the coronavirus in the u.s because like this is the issue here but when it comes to the administration i would not oppose it uh just for the safety and security of their job um but also because I don't think the uh, administration itself is trying to undermine yeah, cr- the CDC as but hard as he's Trump trying. has just through his dumbass rhetoric. If I talk rude, I mean, I think this also point. can get into the bigger issue of how all these executive branch organizations, maybe. the Not CDC, always. the FDA, the EPA can act like a fourth branch of government. But uh, I mean, I don't know if <sighs> anyone no, simp, wants I can't to get do into that. that this I'll time. put that to the side for now and just say this can be expanded to the broader issue of certain executive agency, um, executive branch agencies. But, um, yeah. GSU Gambit. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> this is an interesting one. I don't necessarily know exactly where I fall, but um, so I think it's okay to have a public critique of those above you. Um, when you're working in government, I understand that it's a bit different. But me as a person from the private sector, I'm perfectly fine with critiquing those above us, especially when it's anti-scientific or a-scientific. Um, so I think that those individuals should use their voice uh, to say how they view this situation. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, CTV. Uh, I think that this particular pandemic showed us or it showed me uh, after having watched a damn two hour documentary about it, right. That the, the initial failings of the CDC with regard to getting testing out uh, was crucial. Right. And then after that, uh, the office of the president had no fucking clue how to really do anything with regard to this. Cause let's face it. The fucking guy's not a virologist or a scientist. Right. Most of the people that wanted him there had specifically it. to do with his background in business, right, in the economy. So, uh, the office of the Plandemic. president, uh, I don't feel like should have been the office that people should have been looking to. I really feel like that these, that if we would have had specifically uh, as like a example out there in the ethos, if each state had their own CDC. For, for example, and then there was they a do. failing inside they do. of one state, at least you would they have, do have their own. others to be able to help get those testings uh, out ahead of time, right? And then the Defense Production Act, which is already in place, all the states would just have to do is just petition the federal government for the enactment of it, right? And then that way the federal government is doing far less, and the states are doing far more as far as taking care of their constituents, and then that's yeah, how you would the best effectively combat uh, this particular problem. So, uh, of course, when it comes to employees, uh, freedom of speech. So that's where I'm at with that. Okay. Um, disagree with you hard on this, uh, CTV, but CTV, thank you for your opinion. Um, uh, we're going to go to, uh, 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 senpai. So yes, I favor government agencies and employees to actively and publicly oppose the president or any official that is higher than them in the name of public safety. The preamble of the U.S. Constitution states, we the people, and promote general welfare. This is not a matter of law, but a matter of principle. I highly recommend everyone to watch the documentary Totally Under Control, which I think is the documentary that CTV alluded to, which portrays the White House's mismanagement of the COVID-19 outbreak. It condenses it. It's probably information that we all know just because every week or two weeks more information came out. But when condensed into a two-hour documentary, it really shows how fucked up the Trump administration actually, how they dealt with the COVID-19 outbreak, getting politics involved, getting the election involved, uh, looking out for the economy when hey, scientists, the CDC, and there, other institutions or people were saying, no, this is something that we can't compromise on. This The science suggests otherwise. And then we look at other countries that have taken a different route. It's insane. Okay. But yeah, Thank you. watch that documentary. It's awesome. Um, if you could DM me um, the name of that documentary, uh, uh, Senpai, I would love to uh, take a look at that. 
really would like to hear that. All right, uh, Demon Mama. Um, yeah, uh, I think uh, I can think of of, uh, of very few circumstances in recent history where it would be more justifiable um, for CDC officials to contradict the president, um, the president's administration, and all of his um, numerous lackeys. Um, either through leaks or just through public statements. Um, unfortunately, we all know that this is, um, given the fact that Donald Trump has, um, you know, punitively, uh, dismissed people from his administration, closed down entire wings of, of, uh, of, um, our institutions in the name of sort of, um, assuaging his ego or promoting the way that he looks to the public i, I can't think of very of, of basically any other circumstance where it would be more important to do so we have lost so many american lives through this this uh pandemic and uh a lot of that does rest on donald trump's uh shoulders so i wish that more people would step out and uh, speak up against him publicly unfortunately i recognize the fears that a lot of those people face um in dealing with donald trump and his um mob-like administration Okay, so I'm going to speak out against your pronunciation of the word assuage, uh, because assuage. holy crap, assuage. I don't know what that was. Uh, <laughs> is that a Canadian thing? I don't know. I'm not Canadian. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, that's why I don't know where you got it from. It I don't know. Just... <laughs> Wash the shit out of it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, Goofy for Jesus. I have like tons. But, uh, I've been covering Benjamin. this all year. All right, uh, last year's name. Okay, so. The, the, the specific things that the CDC is complaining about, according to the article that the Prime sent me, uh, is things like they would have, they would make uh, recommendations for policies and the uh, White House would override them. They would say, like, we want these restrictions for religious gatherings or we want these restrictions for the cruise ship industry or something. Isn't and, that close to what I said? And Oswash? the White House would say, uh, no, we're not doing that. Um, and the Swag. CDC yeah, was complaining that right. this was, you know, they didn't like their decisions being overridden by political decisions, political decisions, swaggy. their words. So, um, everybody's always on me about the thing my pronunciation is, of stuff. The CDC does not rule the country, right? They are a, a federal agency, but they're not Swag. in charge. Um, and they, they can't be, I mean, Swag. if you want to live in a democracy shiggity, shiggity, uh, where you elect your leaders, then the people who are elected, who have the democratic mandate, are the ones who are going to have the final say on any swaggy. And uh, an agency full of experts who are not directly democratically accountable cannot have uh, unchecked power. They can have um, uh, a lot of influence. They can give advice. Ruh -ruh um, they can come up with policies. True. But ultimately, the people who are democratically accountable have to be able to override that. Um, that's how it has to work. So. What's the alternative? That the CDC has like supreme power and cannot be overridden. I mean, that's that's not democracy. That's technocracy. Um, that uh, if you find that that um, uh, impedes your ability to do your work as an expert, which oh, is entirely sick. possible, I fully understand that. Then I would strongly recommend that you um, either move to a more authoritarian country. Uh, where the leaders are, are sympathetic to what you want to do, or you go work for the private sector where you don't have to answer to politics, but a democratic um, government, which is what you work for, ultimately has to answer to the people. And that means stupid. every single decision has to, um, yeah. uh, the final word is going to come down to what the elected representatives say, which, and their decision is going to come down to, are my voters going to like this or not? Not whether it's a good idea, not whether you're an expert. People are, are 200,000 like people are dying. Um, this is so silly. And that's that's democracy. This Take is so silly. It. Okay. Um, I'll start, uh, we'll open this to the floor. I'll start with Dario. We had his hand up and then we'll go to Shadows. Yeah, I just wanted to address like very specifically what you said the last username. And I and like this Good. is something that I sympathize with quite a lot uh, in terms of like the, the uh, this is like one of the very basic issues with <laughs> democracy or like at least American democracy as it exists. Oh yeah, it literally but, like, is all COVID. Solutions to this so literally like, all COVID. do exist at least in, in a theoretical sense, but probably also like in a practice. No, it literally like, is. Shit, so I don't know much. But like it in like in, in, at least in a theoretical sense, at least I, I believe that in, even in like uh, anarchist literature, um, people talk about like having, like having man like when you are elected to do something to do a task, um, if you then get presented other tasks, you could do them, 
but you can still be like immediately revoked your <laughs> position if your Thanks performance for the follow, isn't Happy adequate to, have you. to handling that task, right? So, so if we uh, if we draw this perspective into like the United States, we can say, well, yes, Donald Trump was elected four years ago, three years ago, however long you want to say. But a lot of things have happened. And since then, like actually, like most Americans don't agree with the way that Donald Trump is handling the crisis, even like a good portion oh, yeah, yeah. of Republicans. So, 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 if, so if let me clarify. Like a democratic... I, oh. I, I'm not okay, saying that the White House was right about these decisions. Oh, and I'm not, I'm not saying that being elected every four years is a particularly good way of holding people accountable, but it's still a lot more accountable than the you know the management of the cdc right yeah sure yeah, yeah sure but like I, i'm not i'm not accusing you of, of, of saying like the handling was good at all like i understand your perspective i agree with it right we, I, I think we both agree with that i was just addressing like how you could uh solve these things within like a democratic system if you were to like amend some parts of like how the us does democracy right i don't think this is necessarily an inherent flaw in true democracy no themselves can. it's just a, a flaw in like how we handle democracies right now as a society Hello. i think um or, or like at least a Hello, principle of democracy Ted maybe not like the, the word itself um, i mean perhaps um so it's i mean i wasn't to me you know i was just addressing the last the year's American name always falls down in works. favor of trump at the end of the night uh, and the idea that you know the cdc was Champagne? seemed to Champagne? think that they have they should have like halt, like unchecked oh. authority at least in, and in I, this situation. Yeah, and I and I actually I actually agree. But I mean, with in, that in point, any right? democracy, yeah. no one's going to have that authority, right? Sure, sure. Like, like, I, like I would, I would be the first one to say, like, a, like, a, like an organization or like a private or public or whatever, like any kind of organization shouldn't just have like an unlimited mandate to do whatever Every time they want if LU they, always they, if they Trump see so the fit. Like somebody who whatever is he says, always in the accountable Trump. should be always. within that process. And I agree with that. But if that publicly uh, elected official is doing things that aren't in accordance with what the public wants, then there should be like repercussions or ways to amend that, especially when the situation is as grave as it is. That was the point sure. I was trying to make. Yeah. Also, so I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, to just to just comment on what last username is saying, um, I really think there's just like a severe mischaracterization going on here. Like the idea that like the CDC being willing to say N no, Donald Trump is not telling you the truth about science, and it's actually killing Americans. That that is somehow like. Um, them taking autocratic control. No, it's quite the opposite. In fact, I would argue, I would be willing to bet that if it was any other nation, you would side on the side of whistleblowers, people who would say, hey, they're not telling you the truth. They're contradicting us completely. He may be elected to the president, but he's not the dictator. He doesn't get to lie to the American people and kill 250,000 of them. I don't uh, think I'm mischaracterizing I don't, what I don't, they uh, I, 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 I just think last year's name said that. Sorry. So, um... I, I'm actually glad you made that point, Demon Mama, because, you know, I think for a lot of countries that would be true. However, if it was a Western country, I would be a lot more hesitant to do that because I think most, at least not if they're Eastern European, because there are a lot of Eastern European countries who have some problems when it comes to authoritarianism, what? to say the least. Um, but, you know, I, I, I would be a lot more hesitant to say that because they're democratic. And I think there's a more democratic way to run these institutions like the CDC and the FDA. And that is to rather than have it, um, rather than to have the executive branch control it, um, it should be appointed. These people should be appointed by a bipartisan committee in Congress in the same way that, you know, senators appoint uh, people to the district court, the court of appeals and the Supreme Court, there should be different committees within the um, House of Representatives that, um, you know, appoint that deal with these different administrations like the CDC, the FDA, the EPA, and, and so on and so forth. Because uh, I, I really do think that the this part of the executive branch, it has become its own fourth um, branch of government with how much power it has over certain things. Well, um, so if Congress- Shadow, I say Shadows, your, uh, um, your camera is like glitching a little bit. Come up, leave the room and come back in, uh, Shadows. Uh, go ahead, last year's thing. 
I mean, I mean, once Congress appointed them, who would they who would they have to answer to? Like who who would have authority over them? Well, it would also be Congress. I mean, yeah, right, yeah. Like I, I mean, the the. The whole thing is that in our system, like we don't have many uh, direct democratic um, setups, and I think there are flaws with that in certain circumstances. But I don't think there's some anything intrinsically wrong with like the idea of appointed officials. Like it, it makes sense, in fact, because after all, right? Like there's going to be some things that the average voter cannot possibly be expected to be informed on. Um, every person cannot possibly be an expert um on you know disease hence why we say okay there's going to be a um you know a, what house or senate committee on infectious disease and they're going to you know well in this case it's the executive branch controls all this shit which is a huge problem but nonetheless uh, there's nothing inherently wrong with um having representatives because you need you need a way to um sort of break down complicated information that that the everyday voter can't possibly be expected to know everything about every single subject. So the 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 point here I I think it's a mistake to like attack just the idea of representatives, but instead how we choose our representatives and how um and and how those representatives are um like able to express their power. And I think as it stands right now what we've seen is that um the CDC which has been um largely um, controlled by Donald Trump and his admin is still contradicting him even though he's the one who picked them. And to me, that would be an unbelievable indicator that, oh, this isn't a partisan issue. There are Americans dying of a virus and this should be taken seriously. This doesn't have anything to do with auto aut autocracy. It has to do with saving American lives from a disease, which is a scientific fact. Uh, okay, God. But... Oh, yeah, I, I just, I, I wanted to try and reframe the point that I think last year's name was making because people obviously maybe Oh Gina the topic order, right now is I think I um yeah, I so think so, so I think yeah I, I think the I think the point that he was trying to make uh correct me if I'm wrong last year's name is that um if if uh, you it's, um, uh if you whether go CDC agents of what the should contradict Trump in, in public government want you can go to like a private company and if you want elected officials or or like uh or like even unelected bodies to do whatever they want you can go to like more or um, totalitarian countries or whatever and that's that's where you but can they find don't it do but, that. but right now in the US you have like a a democracy of some kind right uh, and this is sort of the result of that democracy and what I would then propose is just like amendments to that democratic structure that I think would address these issues, perhaps, right? And and I think one thing that goes a long way could be like a, a revocable mandate of some kind, right? So so like, yeah, you're elected, right? You're elected to do certain things, but if the public, um, through like like a, a I mean, that's kind in of a, a big sense, like issue, a, right? Like the question, the issue it seems that like we're talking about here is what whether this this specific agency should be answerable to the the central executive of the country and and i think they should right and i, I like i'm and saying I think however they that should. central executive is elected and whether yeah and I, and i i i think they should be answerable to that elected official but i also think that that elected official should be more accountable to the general public in a way think that, that i don't think they are right the now. kind of political uh you know overriding of decisions if if the federal government was more vulnerable to, it could be like booted out by unpopular uh well, unpopularity at any point they would i'm, I'm be a little like confused more here because i feel like there's some like I, i'm okay i'm just a little confused here because um part of what i would i would say that part of one of the things that gives us some advantages over um like hyper authoritarian or autocratic structures is the fact that we um allow all people regardless of whether they're in the um government or in a in the private sector um the freedom of speech they are able to speak their mind um and I don't see how, like, the CDC is not beholden directly to the president. Sure, they're appointed by that, but the president. Yeah, they are. No, they're no, they're, no. That's not that's not true. He's the commander in chief. Well, what do you mean by beholden? Wait, wait, wait. I mean, it depends. The they're not. There's nothing about being appointed to the position of the CDC that you, says that you cannot contradict the president. Literally, there's nothing what do you mean? there. I mean, you can. They can I do that. That's what I mean, we're arguing. Whether there is, there, there, there. 
there is nothing that does that. Now, if it was the military, that is true. Like, for example, if you were to disobey, if you're a military, um, if you're a member of the United States military and you disobey the commander in chief, you can be court martialed because you disobeyed a superior on the chain of command. But we don't have. You're wrong. What? You're wrong. Um, okay. The CDC How are they wrong? Is a federal, the CDC is a federal entity and it is encompassed inside the branch of the executive branch, right? So they are answerable to the president. Not yeah, in the same the way that the military is the, the boss of the CDC. Like, not in so the same. Yes, but not in the same way that the um, not in the same way that the military is. Where we, oh. where we um, wave and and keep in mind. More so, I really. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on a second. Wait a second. You gotta fucking let me finish. I know you guys are like nipping at the bid to try and find every possible flaw you can. Just fucking listen for a minute. Listen, the CDC is an organization that is not. It's a non-military organization. Keep in mind that even military members are still afforded their constitutional rights. However, there are certain things that are in violation of the contract that they've made to the military when they become a part of the military. For example, you can't disrespect the president. Oh, there's all kinds of special rules that are slightly different that are less than the average citizen. Members of the CDC are not members of the military. They are members of the public, even if they are working for the government. Therefore, they still have their constitutional right to free speech. They still have the right to w blow the whistle on something that they think is wrong. Therefore, I, I just don't understand um, pl making equations to the idea that like, um, like an autocratic nation um, you could like somehow have the CD. I, I don't even understand it because the whole the whole point is is that in our nation we allow people who aren't like in the members of the military, for example, to preserve their free speech for exactly this reason because we don't okay. want that we don't want the president to be an autocrat who can dictate to all other branches of government what 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 is appropriate and what isn't appropriate. Now he has some First implicit. All, I wasn't talking about speech. I was talking about uh, the things that I was reading about in this article where, where things were implement. They wanted to implement like policies, restrictions, and those were overridden. And they were they seemed to be saying that. That this was uh, that they shouldn't have been overridden. These decisions shouldn't have been overridden. By, by sure, politics. but wait. But what we're talking um, about the question, and I, I understand where you're coming from with that. But the question that we're talking about is, given that those were overridden, should members of the CDC be free to contradict Donald Trump in public? And I would argue, absolutely yes. It's well within their rights, and they should be able to make a case to the American public, just like anybody else does. And in fact, that would probably have saved lives. There'd probably be Americans well, I mean, who are dead now alive. Sure, but I, 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 I think. If, if oppose means about. just speak out against, that's one thing. I mean, if it comes to actually doing things, then obviously yeah. not. I mean, you can't have an agency that's literally, you know, implementing policies in, in contravention of orders from from the president. I mean, the, like, could again, you, it's a matter of the speech, question that we're I mean, talking about. Yeah. It, well, sure, sure. It's okay. Wait, let me let me move this forward. Let me should move. we? So, so it seems like we have. It seems like uh, it doesn't matter what the question is, right? Like we can move forward. Like I, like okay. we can say it seems like we have some agreement in terms of like speech speaking out. So could we then address the other question in terms of like should they have like some sort of power to overrule the president in that case? What do you think about that, Demon Mama? Oh, um, yeah, I think that that that, that would not like that would be a, a a reasonable thing. Like for example, I mean, what I don't know power? what I don't know what an exact. Whoa. Hold on. Oh my God, you gotta let me. Let her, Let her finish. Let her finish. Um, the, the what I'm saying is is that like a um any like specialized organization, especially something like this, where we're talking about the CDC, which is genuinely in, they're supposed to be able to prevent pandemics from killing everyone in the country. Um, there should be uh, per, uh parameters for hey, if the president is deliberately ignoring information that that these appointed these appointed officials um have sought out in the name of the public good and it's being overdone possibly for per political reasons there should absolutely be a way that that could that the president's say could be overrided otherwise you're arguing for an autocratic state where a the president can override any 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 other organization in the government can i can i jump in please yeah so for but that i i feel like that sword cuts both ways so for instance if you were to extend the same privilege to the the military or law enforcement or homeland security or anything like that then they would say oh the you know we've been warning about potential terrorist attacks for months now and as a matter of fact americans were killed in xyz uh thing and they're they're uh he's ignoring our mandate he's not implementing our security protocol so we're just going to go ahead and override what the president says 
So, Except so those that, are different organizations. What I'm talking well, about is a an organization. I think the principles more, are the same. Yeah. I don't think they are. Um, I don't think they are at all. Life, first, liberty, proof. Wait, first of happiness. all, first of all, the military already does do that all the time. Seeing as how the, the what? The, yeah, the mil. I mean, are you kidding me? Like the, the 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 military is headed by the president, so obviously they're able to contradict other forms of of, of the government. This sort of shit already happens. Like, I mean, um, I'm talking about the president specifically. Oh, yeah. so if we're talking specifically, I, about, well, I mean, obviously you can't have the mil in a govern in a in a country where the president is the head of the military. It's kind of hard to build a system whereby the military can disobey the president however i i he's the head of the cdc too though wait but he's yeah is he not i not in the same way it's not what? he's not the head of the no, chain he, of he, command he's even, no he's he not has more authority over the cdc than no he has he has authority over their positions he the but he doesn't have the he doesn't have the ability to issue orders to individuals because they're still members of the public unlike when you're in the military right, right. can i, no, yeah, can I just point uh, out i want to point out I, oh my God. This, in this argument this is, act, not this is actually this, to tell his own just, employees what to do can okay. i i'll just point out okay all right all counterpoints finish your point and then uh we'll go to dario Okay, the, the flaw in this argument is the same thing that I brought up last week, basically being that, yes, there, so there's 200,000 Americans that have died as a result of the disease. There's also utilitarian calculus from the shutdowns that we don't understand. So alcoholism, suicide, economic de depression, disease, like, you know, drug addiction, all that kind of stuff that basically negatively impacts the health of uh, Americans. So on one hand, they, there's a utilitarian or, well, on, on any hand, there's utilitarian calculus that we just don't understand where the shutdowns can negatively affect the health of Americans, whereas the, the CDC can be myopically focused on the disease itself. And they're saying, I'm a, viro I'm a virologist. My job is to protect the American people from a virus. I want the minimum amount of people, uh, you know, dying from this disease. Therefore, lockdowns for the next six months. Yeah, but this is like a nice. This is a nice like, or hurt more like people. this is a nice imaginary circumstance. But the circumstance that we have, real. it's a very imagined circumstance. You're imagining a situation in so which you're imagining. You're literally playing into Trump's talking point of oh, the 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 cure can't be as bad as the disease itself. When in reality, what we've shown is that true, is point. except. What we know to be very true now is that not only was there an abundance of evidence that showed that shutdowns would have been effective, but now we're having extended shutdowns because we never did it in the first place. So at the end of the day, you can live in a fantasy land where some other virus happened, where it would be worse if we just stayed inside and everybody would be real sad by that and not as sad by the fact that we've now been an on and off um shutdowns for an entire year we're going to be doing that for at least another year and there's 200,000 plus dead americans and we're on our third spike with numbers going out of control but i prefer to but exist in reality of what, so i prefer to exist in reality I, so the cdc wait 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 everyone everyone everyone, 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 everyone stop please there have been people who've been waiting so, uh, so uh dario senpai chow shadows yeah sure um all I have to do this is talk is another to one these of fuckers those where out. I feel like people are talking past each other so much and it's actually unbearable to have this conversation because I because I, sure. I think this is an important conversation that we can have in terms of like what should the government do and Dario what always the, the holier the than thou be right and I and I think when we when I or That's like way, other though. people ask a question of like what do no, nobody you likes me. think you know that. should be done or like what should be done the, the only woman on the panel well of course this is like what me. they do right now or like this is what they can do right now right this isn't an answer to that question so when i asked a question do you think an unelected or like for all intents and purposes like an unelected organization like the cdc do you think they should be, have the power to overrule elected officials? I don't care about like what they can or like what they have or like how much they can speak out. I'm talking about like actions, right? So in the specific circumstance of like them recommending shutting down churches or or like uh, drugstores or whatever, like like them recommending doing this and the president not doing that, should they have an avenue to overrule that? And if so, what should that avenue be? And how can that not be abused in the future? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay, that's... Okay, right. uh, Demon, hold on to that, write it down. Um, other people might want to address you too. I just want to move it on, make sure everyone can uh, say something before, because we're running out of time. So Senpai Chow and then Shadows and then Gambit. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to do something really similar to what I did for the first topic to counterpoise again is that I think it is up to you. You have the burden of proof to show us the data, to show us the foundation that if we did 
there would have been this number of deaths due to whatever reasons that you said and say that because this number is more than the COVID deaths right now, then we should not have gone to lockdown. I would like to see that. Uh, but I, I don't care. Like, I don't want to talk about the actual policies and whether they were a good idea. <laughs> Maybe the White House was completely wrong. Uh, Maybe the CDC was completely right. But we're talking about fantasy land. It, like, let's go to fantasy. How should the system be structured? With the wizards uh, and, and the unicorns. That, sure. What's, what's the kind of structure that would actually work that would deal with situations like this? If you don't like the idea Holy that, uh, you know, people in the White House can be can make really shit. bad decisions and override the decisions of these experts fucking idiots. in Listen, agencies. At the end of the well, day, how, my, how my allegation from before Because I don't see a way around that without giving holds. an, 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 an Last completely user unacceptable will amount of side power Trump. to people who have no, like bureaucrats who have no accountability. I mean, if you want to give the CDC the power to like lock down and not even the president can override that, I mean, that's that makes the CDC like way more powerful than like, than the Supreme Court. Well, yeah, uh, it would be cool if you guys had let me have a chance to actually answer the actual question with like some potential solutions. But I mean, instead, it, it's it's. Well, I mean, so you had the mic for like ten minutes. Yeah. I mean, how much? Yeah. Wait, are you? you for real right uh, now? Yes, okay. we are. All, All right. It's, it's Holy yeah. shit! Yeah. Demon Mama, Demon Mama. Well, every you time. Demon Mama, I, I, you have I, a chance. I'm, to I'm sorry. Every, so okay, but every for, panel, every single panel. Okay, counterpoints made a claim. And I don't think it's substantive enough Every until single the data panel. is provided, especially when it's going I to haven't be, talked for most of this we're going to be thing. going through this utilitarian route where there's this oh, uh, don't worry, this, I haven't this, forgotten trolley, this trolley problem. But it's this trolley problem where we, we have the numbers for one path. And we don't have the time, numbers for another. Every it's panel. a question mark. It could be less, it could be more, but just because it's a possibility, oh, he can't. does that mean that Women be that yakking. path could have been better or something else, etc.? So, yeah, no one yes, has. this but, is necessary. But if I talk Proof off, it's been 10 minutes, you've been talking Whenever we're going to be making it's the same claims, trope. whenever we're going to be I call out every arguments. panel I'm on. Now, to right. address your concerns last year's name, I, I think it's really necessary from like what Shut Shadow said up, before. Larry. In talking about the relationship between the bureaucracy it's every and single the time. executive, I don't think a lot of people know that the bureaucracy, the CDC, is accountable to the people via Congress because Congress can issue subpoenas. They could have testimonies from people, et cetera. They're the oversight. Uh, do you the all House know I do this every single panel I'm on? Over every multiple single departments, one. over multiple, Usually multiple organizations tell me how, much that is, how annoying that I am for how much I talk. The bureaucracy. And then we also have the president. That Fucking can, idiots. well, unfortunately for this case, issue firings, can they get hired, et cetera, et cetera. So there's accountability whenever Fucking a fragile ass bureaucrat baby man. is doing something wrong, whenever, say, like Fauci is going to fuck up with uh, his his recommendations or whatnot, et cetera, et cetera, then Still yes, haven't gotten to they, actually they are give going an to answer. get fired. They are going to get reprimanded and they are going to get replaced because yeah, I'll just Uris McCall, their that fuck would up work. equals the problem for the people. It literally and happens every time, not an exaggeration, not even a little then bit. to votes for it's elected me, officials. Demon Papa. Yeah. The reason why we don't have elected officials for these bureaucracies is because the bureaucracy is huge. There's that's way too much red tape. I want to know way how long Sam Pai Chow just talked without getting so interrupted or told that he talks so too much. That we're actually not going to get things done. We're already not getting things done. Yes, there right have been now. studies and then, on that. Like, the suggestion well of more democracy. I love democracy when it comes to representatives, but when it comes to the bureaucracy, when it comes to the experts are autocratic. actually bipartisan. No, it's that's not autocratic. Bureaucracy and technology. Well, you're saying it's big and autocratic. complicated. Therefore, we shouldn't have any control over it. I mean, that's very. No, we definitely do. Uh, no, 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 no. I, I already, uh, already explained to you. Wait, wait, wait. Did I not explain to you that we do have control over it? That the executive and well, the okay, legislative so branch actually does I, I have control like, over it. Did this, oh, did this fly over your head? Guys, that, guys, 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 guys. So, so uh, counterpoints. Um, you were uh, mentioned. I haven't talked yet. And then shadows uh, is right now to you. Okay. okay, cool. Yeah, so so that's done, true. They you, are. You've so done wrong. this a couple of times now, and I don't I don't have a problem with it because I think whenever you think something, um, you should be able to back it up with uh, some kind of evidence. But it doesn't necessarily have to be evidence. It can also be a logic structure. So basically, I don't have a model of you know the the virology or the pattern or the total amount of deaths it's because not, we've never been in this scenario it's not any time it happens we've never every had panel, a pandemic Larry. disease it happens every fucking panel Larry. we've never had some reason i don't think you're a woman plague 
fly across, you know, basically like airplanes in the modern era uh, while we had a globalist economy. A model for this worldview does not exist. Yeah, I should and do that. And just to further th this kind of thing uh, or further this kind of concept, you know, there, there's basically like you, you, if you were the executive, there are multiple paths that you can go down time. right now with yeah, do uh, you know, shutdowns, research. intermittent shutdowns, no shutdown, all that kind of stuff. So that there's different models that you can follow. There's shit. also different there's limitations to your power in a democratic system. Donald Trump is not an autocrat. He could have recommended certain shutdowns, but basically he couldn't he, nece he couldn't necessarily enforce them. Of course, he does have large power to enforce these ideas, but he doesn't have the ability to shut down the entire country or the economy. Well, I'm sure plenty Twitch of Republican chat. governors basically told him to fuck off when he who's was considering if he even me. considered some shutdowns. So th there's there's a political well, calculus, it, there's a logistical calculus, there's a disease calculus, and none of this has been modeled before. Yeah, That's join, the entire thing. Chat. We're all relatively smart join people inside chat. this it's room. Much but the, the, oh my God, like if you haven't seen that all the adults that lead our country are basically like chat, children great. at this point, I, I don't know what to do for you. Like uh, a, a poor one last point, a, Aww, a poor true, plan violently cool executed cool is better than a perfect own. plan that's never executed. Okay, so I'm okay, but no, 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 oh, I'm no. Yes. Okay, so um, I think Senpai Chow, I mean, already pointed out and it helped me illustrate a little yeah, bit, would have the data. you know, my problem that I have with these bureaucracies in the sense that they're accountable oh, okay. to the I mean, these aren't executive DGG branch, modes. not the legislative they're branch. My own. Usually this I has been some, fine, but... but when you end oh, up right, with an authoritarian, well, okay. he's very prefer. temperamental and Happy has an ego anyway. and doesn't want people going against what he's saying on Twitter when he's sick of the shit, really means you know, that turns into kind of a problem, which is why he can fire anyone who he wants. Um, and this is why I, I mean, a lot of Republicans have already pointed to this idea before. And it's kind of funny how there are a lot of things that have happened in the Trump administration that have um, sort of pissed people off on the left, which could have been solved by Republican True, ideas. Like how so many people on the left were so Larry's pissed about the idea out. of patriotic education. It's like, like, dude, Republicans for the past two decades have been supporting getting rid of the DOE. Um, but I'm kind of pissed that and Prime let... Uh, counterpoints go before me because you literally just stole everything I was about to say. The reason why I raised my hand in the first place is because I was triggered as fuck by what Demon Mom was saying. The idea of this, oh, if we just shut, shut what down a surprise, for right? two months, like, you know, we wouldn't end up with these massive spikes. I, I, I genuinely am curious, like, how long you think the country would have had to completely shut down for there to no longer be any spikes. This is uncharted territory. It's very clear. Like, we can see what's going on in Europe. They literally in instituted a nationwide mask mandate where you would have fines. They're still ending up with 20,000 cases like a day. Like, this is insane. This idea that like, oh, if we just shut down for like three months and if we did as a country, which by the way, is unconstitutional. Shutting down the entire country, a uh, federal level mask mandate, unconstitutional against the 10th amendment. But the idea that it, you doing this would like prevent spikes, is just fucking ridiculous. Okay. Well, okay. So I want to go France and Italy are spiking oh. right now. To, yes. Uh, we're going to go to uh, Dario, um, then Senpai Chow, um, and then we'll go to uh, Gambit, and then um, uh, Demon Mama yeah, will be able cool. to sponsor nah, Don't worry so, about um, it. It's all good. Uh, go ahead, uh, Dario. It's all good. Uh, yeah, sure. So, so okay. Don't so worry about first it. First off, I just wanted to, like, ask some clarifying questions. And uh, maybe maybe <laughs> I'll, I'll preface, like, with an answer first. So, so, so like, I just want to clarify, like, like I, I think most people because it's like a tautological statement right like the 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 uh, the, the cure can't be worse than the than the disease right <laughs> like that's a tautological statement that is obviously You're back. true Welcome right back. everybody should agree with that what we might may or may not disagree with is whether or not like trump's proposed like cure or like lack of like cure is is good in this case and like in, in terms of ad addressing this disease and that is where I think there is maybe, hopefully, like some some agreement and and maybe some disagreement. I, I guess in some cases or whatever. Um, like like in, in terms of like what should the U.S. have done or whatever, if we want to talk more broadly. I mean, you, you can point to Europe all you want, but the, the matters of the fact are like the U.S. is very has been very bad, very very bad by like any like Western country standard in terms of dealing with the disease. True. If you want to look at like comparative, oh, they're just, like, they're just system, dumb. like ways they can't, of dealing they can't with it. it. And I agree, right? It is it's unprecedented right, territory. That is why you should look to other countries who have done better than the U.S. in terms of like how you could address this in Keep a better molding. way. 
like look to Denmark, the country where I'm living in right now, right? Like Keep Denmark's handling compared to Sweden's handling is worlds apart. Where Sweden had like much more of like a US uh like or like a u.s ideal yep. way of like dealing with it or like the, the way that the u.s is trying to deal with it right and denmark had more of like a total shutdown denmark is doing way better and yes of course there's spikes of course there's spikes there'll always be some spikes no matter how much you do question is believe in how science. big are those spikes compared to each other about. right like when we use words, about, we can very easily make oh you came over here oh same. that's fine but it is you not should come the to the same. true right? chat if you look at the numbers it is very much the one on my website same. and like the way that the, the website Danish government chat. is handling it i'm happy you're here though Wolf Glenn. happy to have you like the way that the yeah US they're dumb government is they're being dumb like just saying europe isn't doing that much better is i don't know that that that's a bit dishonest i think it's pretty dishonest how the rest of the <laughs> the rest of the countries of the world look Ciao. at the United States and and think that it's only Ciao. Washington matters. Hi, right? Sorry, we're running out of time, so I want to make the first sure. Time we... I spoke this whole damn topic. Yeah, I know, but John, you went in, put your hand up. I mean, I've been now. saying that's the first time I spoke this whole fucking time. Okay, I know, but I'm just trying to hit the uh, finish uh, the list. So, Senpai Chow. Okay, so so the first rule when it comes to using logical arguments. When you're just going to logic your way to things, which, okay, I do this too, is to prove that your premises in the first place are true. So we can say, okay, premise one, there's a possibility that if we did a lockdown, something, there, there are more, it's okay, we can make that claim. But uh, to say that there is going to be more without actually proving some sort of evidence or even some sort of a correlation True, between some fish. examples to whatever you're claiming is fallacious. Uh, so, Gambit. Like, we, we, oh, we sorry, can't just do this. Uh, yeah. uh, I, this, is, this is so silly. Um, the idea that we could set up an experiment where we shut down the entire country and count the number of deaths that are happening, compare it to the 200K we have now, is utterly ridiculous. I can't even believe it's been spoken Except it loud, isn't. But, Except um, it isn't. Yeah, so back to everything you last year said earlier, it was spot on. Like, we have to have elected officials that are accountable. Those people make the decisions, right or wrong, and those are the, that's why we vote and we elect people that will make decisions that we like. Oh, we're gonna have so much to okay. talk about. Um, after so this. we'll go to uh, uh, um, all right, Shadow. I'll let you respond to both Demon Mama. Uh, we're gonna get Demon Mama. Let her respond to everything. No shadow. Damn, like okay, 15. so I, I want to respond to Dario because he pointed out that there are issues with what the U.S. are doing. Yes, there is an issue with what the U.S. did. The U.S. waited too... The U.S., and more specifically, Donald Trump, waited too long to say the states have authority. He should have said it on March 1st, the day after the first person to die for coronavirus died. That is when he should have said the states have authority. He should have prepared to provide things like ventilators and PPE a lot earlier. And if he did that announcement on March 1st, guess what? He would have prepared a lot earlier. And we would be seeing a much better situation than what we are in now. But the thing is, we are a federalist country and we give states power. So the states were going to have authority either way, whether you like it or not. You're not going to have some sort of top-down control to deal with this. And then also, when it comes to Europe, you know, their European countries are dealing with this. This is why a lot of right-wingers will point to the idea that the data on masking is mixed. Because if you look at Scandinavian countries, which it isn't. geographically speaking, that it isn't part of, you know, they they don't mask. But they still oh, don't. I will. Don't worry. It'll just well, be after this, it'll not. Be after this panel. Don't worry about it. Uh, Scandinavia's uh, Norway, Sweden, and Finland. Um, but if you look at these Scandinavian countries, you know, they uh, some of them don't mask, but they social distance and they are able to prevent cases. Like if you look at Norway and obviously Sweden is a lot different because what they did is they had it blow through the entire country. And this is why they get like one or two cases a day because they kind of essentially went down this herd immunity what path. What numbers that are Donald... you looking at, dude? What are the numbers you're looking at? Like you're just objectively you mean for, wrong. You mean for Sweden? Yeah, this is just. The, I didn't expect. Wait, to Sweden. Wait, Sweden was the one that opened up their economy, and look at what it's going through. Their economy is still in shambles. It, they're still it's, being affected the cases economically. Are rising. Despite it being like it's open. insane. Yeah. They have like what? a thousand, one thousand five hundred cases a day. Like, what are you talking about? You're just uh, you're just talking out of your ass. Like, I don't know. Uh, listen, it, it's listen, very science easy denialism to is a collect. Hell of a drug. It's very easy. 
to collect the data that I'm actually demanding from people. Because all you have to do so you just is Google just it. look. You can look at other countries who did lockdowns, any form of lockdown, and actually see if there was a spike in Senpai suicide Chow, can you, deaths. Can you tell if me? there was a spike yeah. in do, alcohol, do you have a calculus like that, for all of the money that all? Of... Oh, okay, free. Demon Mama, go. Demon Mama, go. Jesus Christ. I know you guys are just like like freaking the fuck out, and and I know it's just oh God. This has been so funny. So all of this is uh ends up going um down the path of science nihilism, which is the path that you all gotta fucking go to when you wanna wanna try and save face for Donald Trump or whatever the fuck you're trying to do. Here's the thing: the fact of the matter is, we have an overwhelming amount of data available to us. This is like it's it's unfathomable how much data this. We have an overwhelming medical consensus. Every single doctor in the world knows we're never gonna reach herd immunity without killing our entire fucking population. We knew this when the virus started. In fact, it's funny. I happen to live in one of the states that actually took it seriously, and we still didn't take it seriously enough because we took it more seriously than everywhere else, which is why our numbers are kicking everyone's ass in the entire country. But we didn't take it as seriously as um, some other nations that actually uh, don't have a problem with mass science denialism. So it's really funny because um, at the end of the day, we know masks work. We know social distancing works. We know that uh, shutdowns work. And we also know that stuff like stimuluses will be less expensive expensive in the long run. You all are just dead wrong. That's the fact. And you're sitting here coping for hours and hours on these streams, just publishing, fucking spitting out science denialism without even, even referencing any data. It's just your own personal feelings. And it's fucking annoying. So there's my piece. I, I don't know, like 900 people had a problem with my statement because I don't know what the fuck the problem is. But all of you try to jump on it. I can't remember any of the stupid bullshit that you said. But all I'm just going to say is, we all knew this. Rude. Every single right. medical professional in the world knew this way back when. And there's a bunch of dead people because of people like you. Okay. Wow. Hey, hey, Demon Mama, I've, I've had a good time. That, that felt rude. <laughs> good. Okay. Who are you talking to? I mean... You and Counterpoints Me? and Shadows there, and Critically I mean, Thinking Veteran. Okay. Hold up, hold but up. What you Kai, said has before, nothing to do with we, what I was Before we I close this out, yeah, I, I know. have to. I have but to what you said didn't okay. make any sense, so. Okay, hold, hold, all right. So, oh, so this kind of goes to both me. Senpai and say. Demon Mama. We have no fucking idea the models that are projected out from this a decade from now. You have no fucking so idea. Do you. What, ho, okay, motherfucker, hold on. You got to talk for fucking five minutes. Let me fucking respond. You have no idea what the economic impacts are. You have no idea what 30 million people being out of work and then 15 million people going back to work is. My you have no money. idea what the fucking Wee. nutritional aspects of this. You have no idea what the stress levels of aspects of this. There are so many things that are not calculated Do you know right who now. does? <laughs> doctors. Oh, 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 oh no, they doctors don't. know everything. Doctors they know logistics. No, but they, economy, they have an idea and you're saying it's just, we don't know, so let's live in a fantasy land. Don't know what you're talking about right of now. Your own you critique. don't know what you're, you're looking at a <laughs> single facet of a very complicated problem. This Line needs so to go up. Hearted. More people dying. Doctors don't know shit. Me know shit. Dude, doctors are not doctors experts economists. On all aspects of society. They can't okay. tell you doctors everything that's going on. Can, a, can an economy Wait, exist without right. people? Dude, this Good is question. Why I hate liberals and progressives because you're not as smart as you. Mauled harder. Mauled harder, baby boy. I I have a full oh, head of hair. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright. So, okay. I'm literally Sorry, Kyle, you went to you listen to Demon Mama and all this. This is shit. actually insufferable. Okay. As somebody as somebody who actually has I, mean, like, I love cursory, being insufferable. Okay, okay, cool. As somebody uh, who has a cursory understanding of economics, like we can talk about the economic aspects of like doing Dario has to agree with me. And whether or not they're better or worse. Is or you can look at like Dario? how countries what, what's what? what's the long term effects of stimulus? D uh, does modern, which kind modern of stimulus? monetary theory actually work? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait what do you disagree with? with? Wait, it come affect on. Anything and inflation won't affect the economy Whoopsies. at all? Uh, we can, okay, we can address You're each one of your questions. Consensus. What? No, I think I modeled... said there's a universal consensus, and the doctors at the yeah. CDC know that, that I... stimulus is just uh, going to help okay. out everybody. Let me know when you're done. <laughs> Dario, I'm being an asshole. I'm sorry. True! <laughs> True. True. If you have, uh, I, I, I have, I have some understanding of e economics. If you want, you can just type down like all of your questions, and I can go by them one by one. So just to address the first one, in terms of like how to build long oh, this is so much fun. Growth, like the way that you this do is what that I was waiting for trade between people, right? That that's how growth works within capitalism, right? If you, you have literally molded within a country, amazing, you will have less growth, right? So like more dead people tends to 
uh, lead to like less economic growth. It's just like a very simple. And I always say hold on, locking always. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, all things equal, obviously. Obviously, right, right. All so, other so aren't equal. So well, well, yeah, but they're like in they're terms always of, like, after the ace man. Of, you know it. Of course, I'll, I'll get. That's to why you watch so me. So in terms of like how to actually handle that's why you all like, watch the coronavirus me. in an economic manner. It would seem that the way that, like, one of the ways at least that you can deal with, at least from like a scientific perspective, at least, would be to take the strongest uh, precautions right away, very quickly, so that you prevent like a constant resurgence of the disease over a big amount of time. Because right now, what's happening is that even if there is no lockdown, people are afraid to go outside people are afraid to go to work it has long-term economic impacts because there is so much uncertainty because the disease keeps uh creeping back up again think about the millionaires the so a better way to deal with that is very quickly lock things down or like take drastic measures short term so that you can as quickly as possible open this is the everything marketplace up of ideas again so that it you're can here get running you can buy your ideas growing back so you can cover for the, but the premium marketplace is on my right? website this is, this is one of the abilities so the that a federal government or like a big state has is that it can it can cover for businesses short term because they promise long-term economic growth Okay. I mean, uh, it, it isn't really that complicated. True. So, Thanks for right, the follow, um, Lord Voldron. Let's Happy to have do you. our closing statements on this. Yes. Um, I want you to know that, like, you know, this management of uh, everyone's time is not for uh, my benefit because I would keep you here all night um, talking about these things. Spoon. It's great content for me, uh, but it's for your thanks, benefit because I know well, you guys uh, want to get follow. out of here, do, you know, live you. your own lives. Um, so that's why I have to manage people like this. So uh, I don't mean it to be rude to anyone else. Just want to make sure everyone has Spitty a chance spoo. to speak. Um, uh, so that uh, we can uh, do this uh, very efficiently. All right. Um, so uh, we'll start with uh, CTV. <laughs> Sorry, Wendelby. Well, uh, I think what I said at the beginning is probably the same thing I'll say here at the end. Uh, of course it is. The CDC dropped the ball initially, and uh, that Trump good and Trump good slowed down uh, a lot of any other type of help right oh. it, it came from say the private market or other public health entities or etc so i think that we, we get it trump good this from the federal you level like trump to the individual states so that we actually have redundancies in place across our several states right uh and i think that's the smart of course thing they will. for state governments to do because it means their daddy here. trump won't be in trouble uh, q a and a game review for where everything derailed and a discussion uh, of the panel to like this basic understanding of well you know what i'm not even gonna we'll just leave that one alone because i think i said what i needed to there so let me go to the bathroom i'm ctv uh thanks for having me uh gsu gambit be right back cool yeah so i want to let senpai and demon mama know that i i do think there are ways that this could have been controlled better but I don't think there's a way we can look back into the past and say, let's come up with quantitative or qualitative data that says this is going to be better. Um, like with a total shutdown, it's like, who are the essential workers? How do people that don't have money available pay for food or get food? Like there's a plethora of things that we have to worry about in those situations. And one could be, yeah, the government cuts everybody a check, right? Which I would agree with always. But whether that would happen or whether we would just have a shutdown without that, like right now we've only had $1,200 since March, right? Most people. So what is a complete shutdown look if that happened as well as only getting $1,200, right? So there's a lot of nuance to it. And to just say, hey, go throw out qualitative data when we don't know what other policies would have been enacted to me is is a bit silly but um yeah i back to the original topic i think that everyone should have the freedom of speech i think those people in the cdc should definitely use their voice and they should be heard and that should uh inform how we vote in this next election uh shadows okay so i think i made my stance on the cdc and trump and the trump administration very clear so i'm going to use this to address the last stuff I was saying. Um, obviously, my mind was going too fast and I was trying to steamroll. 
which is why I said something that is factually incorrect. Yes, I do realize I was incorrect about cases. What I meant to say was deaths. Yes, I know. Uh, very big, dumb, dumb. I'm movie. back, I'm back, I'm back. But if you look at the, and I'm going to post the link of this in chat, the worldometers when it comes to cases and deaths, when you look at the linear graphs for total cases and total deaths, you notice that total deaths moves a lot slower than total cases. It's really interesting because, you know, the spike for total deaths uh, it seems to align very closely with total cases. It's almost like the first time around when we didn't protect the elderly and the vulnerable, they all got sick and died. And now the new spike is from young people who are going to be fine, which is the issue that a lot of people point to. You can look at Japan, which is a country that has handled this way better. They've opened up schools. They've made it imperative. What? And guess what? They're still doing great. What, what, and we can talk about the reasons Literal why they're doing a lot nihilism. better. They have universal masking. I believe that, you know, the aggregate benefit of masking is 100% there. When I was talking about what conservatives mentioned this, I was just saying it's conservatives okay, mentioned this because I've heard Shapiro and other people talk about this on Twitter. I was just pointing out that out. You know, I believe the aggregate benefit of masking is undeniable and we should ob obviously i think the science is on the side of masking i disagree when these people say this but when you look at deaths over um cases as a fraction you can see that you know percentage wise swings at 9.36 we're at 2.57 uh, they've kept their economy open and you know there's chances are that deaths will get worse Unfortunately, I think we should do everything we can to protect the sick and vulnerable, but I do not think we can just live in fear of this virus because like Counter CounterPoints has pointed out three trillion times already, this is uncharted territory. We cannot be sure of what we're doing. And just because we can't be sure does not mean we should cower in fear of the virus. We should try and tread forward as carefully and precariously as possible. Okay, um, so we'll go to... Uh, um counterpoints next but to i gotta push back a little bit gets the shadow shadow um young people still can't get hurt we have a mod on this channel who got covid uh, and still has severe damage uh to his lungs um he used to be able to do be active he used to be able to do sports do all those things but now he can he had trouble Are you talking about growl upstairs. huh no what growl hmm? I don't know who you're talking about. Um, I'm not sorry, I'm thinking of breakfast. Never mind. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, he has trouble walking up the stairs now. Um, and then people, the young people have died. So just saying young people will be fine uh, means uh, nothing. And then certainly um, those young people uh, have older people in their lives and they can spread Watch it this. to them. So protecting the older people requires protecting the younger people. I got to put it out there. I just, I just can't Thank let that you. stand. Percentage wise, the number of young people who die is very then, small. But yes, then, young people do die. Because then uh, they can still uh, spread that to people who are older. So even then, it still fails. So I, I, I can't let that stand. Uh, Counterpoints. Okay. Uh, talking about the kind of like technocratic original question, um, should doctors or should, uh, you know, public officials be able to criticize the administration that they're serving uh, publicly? Yes, absolutely. Especially when they think that that is going to be an issue of public health or they think that they're going to potentially save lives by warning the public, of course. Should those people be able to overrule the administration in their actions? Also, no, yes. I think that should be left up to, uh, you know, kind of like the democratic mandate that yeah, uh, Dario no, and last year's name we're talking about. Um, so the, uh, you know, fuck doctors are not economists or logisticians. These subjects are incredibly complex. If they were simple, we would all agree on the fucking solution. Pretending that we you do. have perfect models for how everyone the world does except for you is so fucking dumb that I can't even wrap my head around it. Not every assertion is going to have evidence before you make the assertion. We have to test these assertions within reality. And if the, if like Watch a this. lot of statistical analyses are post hoc, meaning that they happen after the fact. So if we have perfect models right now for how the world is going to play out, then what's even the point of post hoc statistical analyses? Do we just understand the world completely? Are we fucking geniuses? Are we able to combine uh, logistics, economics, food security, uh, the economy, virology, uh, death, secondary? No, blah, we can't combine blah, all of these subjects blah, into a unified blah, understanding blah, of the fucking world. And blah, the fact that it's blah. been repeatedly asserted and scoffed at by both Senpai and Demon Mama is fucking mind blowing to me. Because I can tell you're both intelligent people, but the fact that you think that you have a fucking slam dunk here I do. is dumb as fuck, and it actually fucking bugs me. All Sick. right, 
That being said, speaking with all of y'all was super nice. And I have a YouTube channel called Counterpoints. Go ahead and subscribe. Um, uh, senpai Chow. Okay, it's really easy. We don't actually have to uh, be conducting our own tests in order to see what are the effects of opening go. up or locking up, et cetera, et cetera. We could just look at other countries and do a comparison gambit. We already have so much data from over 190 countries with different policies, and we can make some comparisons. And the results are so they're, they're so different. Just watch. They have a better economy. They they do have. We Don't have do the it. evidence. Uh, you're and balding. To suggest that like we're He's in, losing his shit. Uh, we're in unknown territories is to deny <laughs> rationalism because we know what has been true when it comes to virology. We know how the economy works when it comes to labor and people getting sick and people not being able to go out and interact and getting food, et cetera, et cetera. Being in uncharted waters, being in unknown territory does not mean that we should push forward with confidence and just take things as they go. We have to think about these consequences and of yeah, course sucks. test them out. And I think the results have been really clear in that the United States, the Trump administration, ignoring CDC recommendations, ignoring CDC guidelines have made us a lot worse both economically and medically. And of like, of course, okay, this is all with the benefit of hindsight. I can't confidently no, say man. the things that I'm saying six months ago as to now. So this, a lot of this is post hoc. But despite a lot of the evidence emerging, say like, still, everybody watch that documentary. It's awesome. I loved it. This, despite all it's this, there's still We're people talk which it. like, it just boggles my mind. Still, like, thinking that things could get better, that what we actually did was the best choice, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Or, or, like, of course, we could go down, down this, like, this free will yeah, route. So like, oh, well, mad. this was the only choice, so deal with it. No, we have to disagree. We have to say that this was not the best choice. We have to say that we could have done better because lives could have been saved. Did anyone say this was the best choice or that was just a red herring to sound good? I don't remember anyone saying that, but okay, cool. No, I'm just yeah. saying that this was. Yeah, yeah that, bird, that. that bird was flying. Totally red. <laughs> totally red. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Cool uh, story, bro. <laughs> last, last season name. Um, got last season. All right. Um, so I heard it. <laughs> I heard someone say that we we know how the economy works, uh, which is. You, you might want to tell economists that because they, all the best economists still seem to have uh, to argue about that quite a bit. Um, but I really wanted to avoid the discussion of whether the policy, whether this decision or that decision was good, whether the orange man fucked things up or not, because uh, I've had that discussion before. Oh, we did. And I wanted Undeniably. to instead talk about what I think this particular story was getting at, a sort of deeper issue of how, um, what were the structural problems with the way government works that allowed the... Oh, uh, the, the panel's almost over, Coco, but we're going to do more stuff after, so make sure you stick did. around. Um, which is something that's, it, it seems kind of hard to talk about. So uh, okay. it we seems got a lot like to the talk CDC about, so. sort of was implying, and some people here explicitly said, that as experts, they should have at least some kind of unchecked power to implement things. Some no one things said unchecked. The could do that no the one said unchecked could not Never. override. He's just blabbering. Um, He's running out the The problem clock. is, what happens if the Don't next worry. orange man is we'll the head up. of the CDC? I mean, y you can shift power around if you like, but you can't get rid of it. Blab if you machine, give genuinely. every three-letter agency some sort of uh, you know ultimate uh, auth political authority, then the people who uh, seek power um, instead of always seeking the president, we'll start seeking these other positions. I don't know what he's saying. It's power. nonsense. Um, and uh, then you'll have all these many more opportunities for uh, Orange Man to to pop up and and screw things up. So and oh, so Congress can can uh, have oversight and and intervene and override. Okay, fine. So they can Congress can already do that to the president. They can impeach him. Um, but it's not easy, as we've seen. Um, <laughs> And it's probably not the thing, kind of thing you want to rely on to override bad decisions in an emergency situ situation. I didn't say they should be above uh, the president. I said they should have an and avenue. If it was easy, then it wouldn't be any better because instead of these experts having have to have uh, the president uh, override their decisions with stupid politics, then you'd have these committees of Congress people overriding the decisions with stupid politics. I have no fucking. I don't think anybody knows what he's more, talking about. You know, so you 
you know, you're just shifting the problem around. Um, and yeah, he's running down the clock. It's a very this is called running problem. down the clock. It's a debate uh, tactic. And it seems to me like wh wherever you put the power, it's either going to be, um, uh, and, and you're going to be giving it to some autocrat who could potentially be tyrannical, or you're giving it to a democratically elected politician who's going to pander to voters, which is also going to lead to stupid decisions decision sometimes. My my solution would be to just get rid of that power entirely, but that's a whole other discussion. So there. So um, I 100% agree with you last year's name. Um, we shouldn't uh, give unlimited power to three letter agencies. That should only be reserved for four letter agencies. So the USDA, US Department of Agriculture, all the employees should be given licenses to kill. 100% agree, I'm glad we're on the same page. All right, uh, now, Dario. <laughs> Sure. I wanted to address four points that were brought up. I'll take a look um, at this. I'll just do them one by one. So I'll first do the, I'll, off, uh, Wendell, I'll look, look at that after. It's brought up by shadows. Uh, so if you look at deaths, uh, Denmark or Sweden and compare them, pretty comparable countries in terms of like population times, uh, even even if density isn't okay. directly comparable. I'll take a look at deaths afterwards. are as follows. So Denmark has to this day about 700. Sweden has about 6,000. The population sizes are 6 million and 10 million. So Sweden has less than two times the population, but nine times the deaths. Okay, that was the first one. Uh, the second one is the uh, question Oops. about modern monetary theory. Um, you don't even need like modern monetary theory like to, to make up for the losses of COVID or like any of that sort. It's, it's just like a basic question of like investment and like how investments make uh, growth happen, right? So if you invest in the American people short term by giving them money to survive, by giving companies money to be able to sustain themselves through the growth of capitalism, right? Through the growth of the, um, of the GDP, uh, you can outgrow those short-term losses in just like in a, in, a, in a basic investment sense, right? Like when you do investments, generally you put down money short-term because you believe that money will come back to you long-term, just basic economics. In terms of like the, the questions about like uncharted territory, it depends on what you mean when you say like COVID is uncharted territory, like pandemics or, or like plagues or of this kind, like like and the measures that you can take those aren't uncharted territory these are things that have like measures that have been in place for hundreds of years even in yep. the us like like ways to deal with this like was studied under was it bush who wrote like a manifesto about this right like different countries have taken different means like yes the disease itself and the effects of the disease are uncharted the like how yeah it's the outro yeah, like the bad effects of the disease uh, in terms of like how bad they are, those are uncharted. But like how to deal with like a plague of, of this kind or like a disease of this kind, like the measures you can take, to, those aren't like uncharted territory. It's very basic things. It's like wash your hands, wear a mask, stay inside. Like it's, it's not rocket science. Um, and just, just quickly, the, the last point was just like, in terms of people who keep just saying states rights or like, you don't have perfect information, no shit, but we still have to deal with these sure. things. And when you say states rights, or like states should be able to deal with this. You're not answering the question. You're telling me somebody else is going to figure this out. I don't want to hold like the responsibility. That's not how this works. That's not an answer to the question. And the questions Literally need to be answered answer today. To what? Okay. It's not. It, 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 yes, it's it like is. When... No, it's, it's called it's governors, not, not the president. No, it's, 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 when it's when communists, it's when, communists, it's when you discuss with look. fucking dumb fuck communists, and, and, and you ask them an economic question, and they go, oh, uh, once we have communism, somebody else will figure this out. It's not an answer to the question. It's just saying somebody else will really answer the question. Okay. okay. You're okay. Just okay. The fuck uh, uh, in order to protect Trump, you're fucking so idle. We are going to demon mama. Demon mama. Thank you very much. Very happy to um, get this uh, opportunity to say my last word here. Uh, honestly, Dario, huge props. I think you really um, sealed most of the factual parts of what I was going to say. So I'm just going to focus on this. What I've heard from the uh, the conservative, the right side of this panel for this entire time is a hell load of, of science denial, a bunch of downplaying of American deaths and the suffering. Um, a, pure denial of mathematics, such as the fact that we knew 
And we've known since the very beginning yeah. how quickly this disease spreads. So this is what we've heard the entire time. And what it reminds me of, there was this take that went around on Twitter where it was like, the markets didn't fail us. We failed the markets. And what it sounds like is the right is going, we failed Trump. Trump didn't fail us. In reality, we knew all this. We know how fast the disease spreads. We know how deadly it is. We knew exactly how many people it was going to kill and approximately how long they were going to be knocked out. And we all, and every single medical professional in the world, and yes, I do mean every single one until you start reaching into crackpots who are telling you you need to inject bleach and bullshit like that, who are complete like homeopathic doctors, which I think we can rule them out. Um, there is absolute consensus on what needed to be done to stop this disease and to stop the absolutely unfathomable economic impact we are now going to have from hundreds of thousands of Americans being dead and businesses being destroyed. So you all are just in denial. That's the simple fact, much like the president in denial. And you'll be left in the dust of history, just so you know. Okay, thanks. Oh, wait, I um, should plug myself, shouldn't I? Well, I was going to give you all outros. Oh, um, okay, okay, okay. Finally. Um, so, um, uh, CTV, thank you for being here. Acrylic is a better brand. Oh, and before I even continue on that, hold on, I'll go back to CTV. Uh, guys, uh, the stream is not ending. The stream is not ending. Oh, God, the stream is not ending. Um, this panel is ending. Same. We're going to have a separate panel, a walk-on panel, that will appear right after this. So the stream is not ending. Please don't go anywhere. Thank you very much. All right, CTV, Acrylic is a better brand. Thank you for coming That's in. That's what really I'm here for, Tono no Aji. Uh, stopping by. I'm the mean again. one. Um, tell the people uh, all about yourself and where they can find you. Yes, we did. Kenjikon. Um, if you want to argue with me on Twitter, uh, original underscore CTV, if you want to argue with me on my, I wouldn't recommend uh, it. Twitch channel. No, not another panel. Thing. We have other stuff to do. If you want to argue with me on Discord, there's a way for you to find that. If you want to argue with me, you're wrong. Know that from the start. Right? That's where the fight begins. So if nice. you want to argue, hey, I like arguing. So. Uh, it is thanks for having arms. me again, Brian. Yeah. Appreciate the invite. Uh, sometimes the, I think Dario, the talking past people, you've hit that a couple of times tonight. I think that's that's accurate. Uh, as for everything else, uh, you know, I got to come up with like a little catchphrase. True unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. Actually, no, I, I do too. <laughs> Everyone should have like a, a badass catchphrase. Um, yeah. Oh, we're not doing bore at it, unfortunately. It's complicated. Um, thank you, but I'll explain it. Uh, GSU Gambit. GSU Gambit, thank you for coming in. Um, every, my stream should be very familiar with GSU Gambit. Um, he's a really nice guy, um, really interesting guy, really knowledgeable guy. He comes in into my chat, and then I yell at him because I think he's wrong in everything. Um, so GSU Gambit. No bore at, unfortunately. It. It's a I problem. Uh, yeah, so cool. Uh, I appreciate uh, the invite. I appreciate being here. Uh, a lot of the time I am attacking. Uh, I'm on the left. I'm maybe, an NBA maybe, supporter, maybe. blah, 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 all of that jazz. But um, yeah, I enjoy uh, attacking points that are quite ridiculous. And uh, unfortunately, Probably, make some of our left wing friends call me a Trump supporter a scientific and all types of nonsense. But just like CTV, uh, I have a Twitch channel, uh, GSU Gambit. I have a Discord. Uh, if anyone would like to engage in debate, uh, you know where to find me. I love that email. Uh, yes, yeah, that's it. Okay. Uh, Dario, Dario, uh, it's always a pleasure talking with you. I love the way you argue. I love the way uh, you come at things from a very uh, logical perspective. Um, I don't agree with your conclusions all the time, but oh, I always that. appreciate that how you've arrived dank at them. Demon. Because you make it very clear, and uh, you're always extremely calm while you're doing it. True. Um, so uh, you're a rare bird here on uh, Twitch, um, and I thank you for taking time out of your day. And I know it's ungodly late for you, um, but thank you for, for coming on to my channel and sharing uh, a bit of your time with my community. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you for being here, Dario. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, just, just quickly, uh, if you've watched me for a while on Twitch, um, I'm actually trying to restructure a bit of what I want to do with my content and what I want to do is exactly what you outlined prime. I want to, I want to spend more time just like outlining how you can build into ideas rather than just like give people the conclusions. And I want to do that through like a, a more structured video format. So nice. I'll probably be nice. cutting down on streams. I'll still be doing like panels and talking to people, but I want to focus more on, uh, on YouTube and like making videos about like how to just address topics and what tools you can use to sort of 
get a get a view of like the world for yourself. Um, yeah, if you wanna if you wanna follow that, I'm gonna be doing that very soon. Uh, I think it's another YouTube. cat. I think he has two cats. Uh, feel free to put, and this is to all of you. Feel if free, I remember correctly, feel free to put any links that you want in the oh, chat. Oh yeah, that's right. I gotta everyone. do that. Yes, please uh, click on uh, Jaro's link to get to his YouTube channel, and also um, uh, I have his uh, Twitch channel up above, so you can still check that out as well. All right, next, uh, Senpai Chow. Senpai Chow, always enjoy having you here. Um, uh, you are very passionate. Uh, you also come at things that actually have a very unique stance. Um, Senpai Chow, uh, I don't see enough of you. Uh, you come on here every so often. You're like wandering to my walk on panels and once in a blue moon, but I always enjoy it every single time that you do. Um, so please, you know, show up more because you're definitely welcome here always. Thank you for being here, Senpai Chow. My approach to politics shouldn't be unique. It, it, it should, there should be a lot more of it. I mean, like, this is not me trying to be a stand for academia. I, I think it's really important when we're going to be reviewing history or looking at theory or approaching philosophy and whatnot or looking to the science, not just like the medical science, but political science as well. Where we're going to be talking about, say, like human behavior. How do people her. come with their opinions and how do they behave towards each other, to countries, etc. It's all so important and it, it makes politics a lot more clear. So yeah, I'm Senpai Chow. I stream on Twitch. I play video games and cover politics with a focus on philosophy, theory, and science. Okay. Uh, next, um, last username. Last username. I've always made it clear how much I appreciate you and nothing about that has changed. I appreciate you. I appreciate uh, the type of man you are. I appreciate your hair, because um, now it's nice and fluffy, as I'm used to it. Uh, <laughs> last year's name, thank you for always being so kind to come on my channel and share your very valuable perspective, one that I disagree with, but one that I'm always happy to hear every single time. Thank you once again, last year's name. Tell the world about yourself. Yeah, thank you. Always, uh, always fun. Um... Yeah, I stream on Twitch Don't you occasionally. Worry. Remember, stick around. There's more after uh, the panel. Last Remember, username is my channel. A lot more. Check it out, and I'll talk about uh, talk about anarchy. I'll talk about um, other stuff. Being Canadian, uh, and, uh, a little bit. <laughs> it's not that important to me, but yeah, occasionally. Um, and I'll do panels like this. So uh, good talk, everyone, and uh, see you around. All right, um, you're. Uh, uh, nationality is extremely important to me and I won't let the world forget it. Um, uh, but, <laughs> okay, so uh, <laughs> counterpoints. Yeah, so uh, my name's Connor or counterpoints. Um, I am on Twitter at counterpoints, C-O-N-O-R-P-O-I-N-T-S, uh, if you want to argue with me there. Um, I also have a YouTube channel. I think I shared it in the Discord chat um, and basically we're, we're smaller, but we're growing pretty fast. Um, I still had a great time. I do not uh, suck Donald Trump's dick. Uh, I do not give a fuck about Donald Trump. Fuck that guy. Uh, even though I consider myself on the right, it's mostly because of guns and limited control on abortion. Um, and basically, uh, Demon Mama, as much as you came at me a little bit, uh, I, I think you're super fun to talk to and argue with. Senpai Chow. Likewise. Uh, same. Uh, and we can we can argue another time, you know and then you everybody else on the panel, you were a blast. So uh, thank you kindly. I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Yes, um, please, uh, and throw your again. You have any other links you want the channel to know? Uh, please throw them in chat. Okay, uh, shadows, shadows. Uh, thank you for coming in. Uh, thank you for being my time. Uh, so kind as to uh, share your time with us. Um, and no, thank you for despite being wrong on everything, uh, <laughs> uh, being a neoliberal. Uh, thank you for being brave enough to step here. You got a lot of content to do after channel. this still. You got um, a lot of fun left with uh, Demon Mama I appreciate today. you nonetheless, my friend. I, I absolutely do appreciate you. I thank you really uh, uh, for being able to come in because not everyone can do that. Um, because you know, Knowing that you're coming into a space where people may not agree with you. But you do it and you do it bravely. Mm -hmm. And that's why I like and uh, not only did I throw myself what into a debate with Dylan Burns on Middle Eastern policy, but Thanks I also walked into on a channel where I know people anyway? would use neolib as a pejorative. So I think it's fair to say I have some pretty big balls. Um, but anyways, um, uh, yeah, of course, I am Shadows Shadow of Liberty. Um, I am Twitch.tv's favorite secular Zionist neolib. True, um, true Lilith. You know, uh, I this was interesting a lot of brain cells i feel like died today but you know what i'm living this is good 
Um, I like to talk about public policy and economics, and I also like to run it down bot lane on Sumner's Rift. So if you are an elite player and you want to watch me just spam Ash and Caitlin, feel free to give me a follow Oof. in 2021. I plan to be doing some piano streams. So if you, if, if uh, as Barry B. Jensen said, if you like jazz, then maybe come over and give me a follow because I do be, I do be planning on playing some jazz. Um, but yeah, it was good to be here today. Oh, nice. I didn't know you uh, played an uh, instrument. That's really, that's yeah, really I've cool. been playing since I was five, actually. Oh, all right. Oh, nice, man. Thank you. Uh, I mean, that's cool that you've uh, had that kind of dedication. All right. Well, another interesting thing about him. Everyone, please check out Shadows of Liberty. He's a really, he's a really cool guy. Um, Demon Mama Live. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, Demon Mama, there's a, a few people um, who have noticed that, like, can get, whether they want to or not, um, can get the entire uh, uh, chat panel to like bend um, to their <laughs> will uh, when it comes to like directing the conversation. And uh, you apparently cannot help yourself. Um, <laughs> uh, it's a skill. Not everyone can do it, actually. It's true. Uh, but true. you do it well. Um, and I think you, uh, uh, I, I like the way you uh, handle yourself. I like the points that you make. Um, even if I mean, I, I totally agree with you, um, but okay. I love the passion yes, that you bring to it and uh, the fact that you come at it from um, a very uh, evidence-based perspective. So thank you, Demon Mama. Really appreciate you. Demon Mama, tell the world about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. My name is Demon Mama, the demon of Twitch debate, as I have been called from time to time. Um, you can follow me at my brand spanking new website, demonmama.com forward slash live, or on any of my socials, which I just dropped in the chat. But the website is the easiest way because you can find a link to all the other ones. We're going to be doing a Q&A and a little bit of a game review after this. So if that suits your interest, come by, hang out with us. Uh, also... I also do a lot of debates, so if you have something you disagreed with me on and you want to argue with me, come on by and I'll uh, teach you a couple lessons. But, just kidding. Uh, it's been wonderful talking with you all. Um, love uh, being on the show, Prime. Thanks so much for having me on, and uh, it was a good show. Thanks, everyone. Okay.